comedians. We get some. We do a ratio cruise. We it's a cheap. Do it up right. You get yeah, the Deftones the on that boat. The I'll go. Okay. Work on that. Well, we'll, well call their we'll call their people immediately. <laughs> Is their numbers still the same? <laughs> Chino. <laughs> All right, well, I think I think uh, most of these things are quite achievable. Mm -hmm. Oh, and if we do that, I want that 16th floor. I want the room with the piano. There are different levels. Oh, the Riz show? Because it is my... Well, that's the thing I think you wish. guys will like, is when you're the... I found out that when you're the entertainment, you get the, like... Hey! Good morning, buddy. Hello! It's hot in here. No. no. It's getting hot oh, in here. Oh, man. You a sweatshirt on. You look bundled up. Kind of wonderful in here now. What? The, uh, disrobe. What is... Wow. What does it I have say? my energy up shirt on. Oh, okay. All I see was RGY. I thought I was going to say orgy something. You just I never got my know. Orgy energy up shirt. All right. Energy up for the orgy. Yeah. This is what I always say. I hope you all had nice weekends. Learns back. Had the uh, the big show go on Thursday. It was so good. Couldn't Playing have gone the better. Celebration Day sound check party. Yeah, it was great. Um, we had about an hour and a half set, and we didn't tell the Celebration Day guys that we were going to do this, but. We played Stairway to Heaven because the Celebration Day guys, they did like cuts of different Led Zeppelin songs. They didn't play full songs. They just played like the interwoven in and out of different songs. Did they songs. play before or after you guys? Before. Okay. So you didn't, so they didn't play Stairway? No. Oh, okay. And so I was waiting. I was like, if they play it, I'm not going to play it. Well, they never did. And that's fine. And so we, as we got done with our classic rock cover set, uh, mm -hmm. the last song we decided to play was Stairway to Heaven. And Jimmy Griffin from the soundboard ran to the stage and he's like, I want to play. And he like jumped up there and played with us. And Very cool. cool. That's he's where that so picture good. came from? Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, I see no pictures. Okay. You're not, yeah, I know you need to get on the gram, dude. Yeah. I gram. She had great photos, did. man. It made oh me my miss God. out. And Keith Brake, who is one of the best concert photographers in town, that dude, he just made me look like a million bucks. And so, yeah. I, shout out to cool. Keith Brake. Yeah. He's excellent. I don't gram. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah, it was fun. My mom, oh man, look at this video of my mom. I wish you... If you were on the gram, you would be seeing some stuff. My mom, I, I, some listener took this of my mom dancing, which is kind of creepy, but also the most adorable thing I've ever <laughs> oh, yeah, seen. There she is. She's getting Killing it. down. Jill is down. I saw it. Did Jerry so, go? Awesome. Jerry went to, yeah, that, the men are unfazed behind my mom. Oh, dance. there's uh, Tim. <laughs> Tim. It's Jerry sitting watching an old football game on his phone. <laughs> And Tim, it's not even a current game. He, <laughs> he, he rewatched the Super Bowl during our concert. Tim's got the thousand yard stare. Yeah, he's like, how much longer do I have to do? Tim that? looks like he just got back from World War One. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, like, dude, we've been together for so long. He has okay. been through the war. I mean, it's he's, he's over it. <laughs> no, listen, he's monitoring, making sure that his lady's safe. Yeah, that's he's ready to spring into action. He's, yeah, he's scanning. Yeah. He's scanning. scanning. Right, scanning. <laughs> Scanning his yeah, watch. you think those Secret Service guys <laughs> show any emotion at all? No. They he, just stand there. They're on yeah, on watch. They yeah. enjoy the job. Right. On patrol. Yeah. Making sure the perimeter is secure. Well, what's funny is people recognized him, too. So every, we had a bunch of Riz Show listeners come out and uh, shout out to all those people. And they wanted. there was a man who I'd never met who really was excited, couldn't get enough of Tim, wanted a photo with him. So. Oh. Can't get enough of Tim, Can't huh? Enough. Mm -hmm. Tim's Can't the best. Tim. <laughs> ah, Tim's the best. Well, we got a bunch of, Friday got a bunch of emails, and uh, people were sending me videos because nobody had heard from you. Yeah. I know. And we were like, how'd it go last night? Right, we don't know. And we got a ton of stuff, cool videos and all kinds of praise from listeners, so you must have crushed it, buddy. Thanks. I had a good time. Uh, Moon at the RV show over the weekend, huh? Yeah. Great. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, we went down and we saw the uh, the RV that we're, we're taking down to Disney World in a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah man, it's coming up. What do you got? Fun. What's uh, the size? It is. Uh, is it a Thor? Right. Thirty-seven. No, it's an Omni. Omni. Omni Super C. That up right now. Yo, this thing is. Pff, yeah. Ridiculous. How many beds? Uh, let's say one, two, probably three, eight, 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 four, five, six. I think it. Yeah, I think it comfortably sleeps eight. Wow. Yeah, nice. How many I mean, does it uncomfortably sleep? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, now, will there be top shelf beds? We did a be... tour. We did a tour actually, band and crew. I think there was thirteen <clears> of us <throat> in something that was about half the size of what we're taking, and it was awful. Will it there be so nasty. deucing allowed in the? <laughs> no deucing. No deucing allowed. This is a no deuce zone. It's going yeah, to be serious question because listen, because these RVs are nice. This RV is so nice. Their rental program at Byerly is ridiculous, and this thing. I think maybe deuceable, like you can deuce in it. Like they have, as long as they have what they call a grinder. A grinder, yeah, yeah. But we have a family rule: no deucing on the bus. <laughs> yeah, Damn. Gotta go. Who named that? 
The what? grinder. It's a grinder. It's a. It's literally a grinder. I get that it's literally a grinder, but can we call <laughs> it something else? It's the visual. <laughs> Why is there a no deuce rule if you can deuce on the bus? I get that you don't want the stink, but like, here's the you, thing. Then you got to p- pull off and stop somewhere and get. There's, there's not a lot of water in it mm. to conserve water, so you know. Like, <laughs> uh, I'm at, uh, I hate to go here. Here we are. Here I don't are. think this makes Let's sense. Here we are, Moon, especially with the new technology we have. I get it with like, you know, six or seven gross twenty something dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But with I the, mean, with, you have a nice family with like kids. SV34. Sure, but we're what is it? Omni what? Uh, I don't know. Um, That's all right. It's a super C. I'm super on Byerly RV. Yeah, I just don't go, understand. Go to Byerly's no rental. Oh, I'm in there. Wow. Dude. A dizzle? Uh, this thing is, here it is right here. Does it look the, like that 90s cup? Yeah, Thor, I'm looking right at it right The Thor oh, Motor Coach nice. Omni Motorhome Super C. Oh. Holy smokes, wow. dude. This thing is so cool. It's got bunk beds over here on the sides. That's sweet. Nice uh, uh, kitchenette. That's the So the kid, Yeah, the kids have already picked where they're, where they're bunking, and uh, we're stoked, man. Got the campsites all done. Uh, um, it's a house. Yesterday, the one that they had at the... 194. Yeah, they had a deal on the one that they had at the show, and it was, I think, in the 180s. It's a two-bedroom, one-bath bungalow are in the South City. Are the kids sitting. excited, or are they like, whatever, Dad? Oh, no, no, no. They're they're excited. And, they, you know, they're they're somewhat spoiled. They've seen the world... It's an adventure. ...from, from touring and all that kind of That's stuff, true. so it's hard to impress them. Disney World like made them excited. The whole RV adventure made them twice as excited. So they right. they, they are pumped. They are super. In fact, super they have to ride on the roof. <laughs> yeah. Three times excited. Yeah. My uh, my wife and daughter are going to Disney in uh, May. Mm-hmm. My daughter's cheer team got a bid to go cheer at Disney. Sweet. So oh. hmm. We ain't going. Me and the boy. Hell no. <laughs> Guys' weekend. Oh yeah. Right on. We're too oh. cool for whimsy. It's a Buffalo Wild nah, Wings. Me and the boy don't do whimsy. It doesn't seem like it's going to be something for us. <laughs> Dude. What do, you, what do you mean, Disney? Disney? It's for everybody. Literally everyone. Nah. I would do Disney maybe not on a cheer weekend. Mm. What, what, as if there's going to be like a influx of people? Like other days there's not people down there? I don't know. It just seems like a whole thing. Always. It's, it's, Disney is a whole thing, and I think yeah. that's what you're signing up for. When given a choice whole thing. whether to go to Disney or not go to Disney, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to choose not to. Have you been? I mean, I'm with you. I've been to Disney when I was nine. I'm, I, don't got I am also with you. Yeah. I, uh, on a whim, went to Disneyland. I uh, was playing a House of Blues, didn't realize it was that close, and walked the kids down there. Had a freaking blast. And that was Disneyland. Disney World is like 30 times went bigger. Went to Disneyland, Disneyland with the kids. Better. Yeah, what'd you think about that? It's fine. It was going on and it, uh, to an amusement park. That's B plus Disney, I think. I'm with you as an adult. But if my kids were your kids' age, I would go. We're doing four parks in four days. My daughter's super excited. Yeah. I think, honestly, I think your son would like it. He just won't admit it. Yeah. And yeah. If, you took, like, if you took your boy to the Star Wars thing... He would think that was cool. I'm sure. He's a video. I, I, I've sat in the basement and talked to them. Come on. He's a video game kid. Yeah. And he's into all that stuff. I've talked to him. Like, I think he would. I think secretly, if you took him, like, to some of the stuff at Disney, some of the, like, stuff that's for older kids and, like, movie-based and all that stuff, or Universal. I feel like that. I want to go on my terms. What's yeah, why mean? don't you just do it where you don't get your money's <laughs> worth? You go to the Star Wars thing, have fun in the noon to sun, leave early, yeah. and go do something else. You guys could make your own lightsabers. Like, yeah, dude. It's two hundred and fifty dollars yeah. per lightsaber, and you guys could get matching ones and then cross I them go over. Go to Michael's and we get the material to do it ourselves. <laughs> Father and son can cross sabers. Yeah, <laughs> oh, a rite of passage so in some cultures. It's true. Mandalorian. Ah, sure. it's gonna be a girls' trip. This is the way. Let them go. Have a good time, ladies. Place the tip me and, of your uh, saber. Me and the boy are going to hang back. Yeah. I'll mean, have a look, better dude, time if you're not there, the probably. Tip of my saber, son. This is the way. <laughs> look at this. I- I'm going to be on Tatooine. I mean, that's cool. No, dude. you're not. You're going to be in Orlando. Nope. No, I won't. Do you see that sky? It's clearly Tatooine. Tatooine, Florida. Wow. Tatooine or Orlando. Look at the li- I can already see the yeah. lines. The lines? Line this is a construction though. photo. There's yeah, no lines. There's already, already people queued up. <laughs> Riz is not a big line. There's already like somebody in line to get the place under construction. Yeah, we got it mathed out pretty well. My friend was a stormtrooper. Oh, so that's it was cool. a wild job. It was cool. Yeah, yeah look at this dude. Stormtrooper yeah, and Spider Man. He had played a few characters, but did you uh did you go through I I hooked you up with a yes, we did. Disney consultant. And we went through the that exact Disney consultant. Nice. Julie? Yeah. We went through uh 
Went through a pro because we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing now. We said, tell tell us what to do. Learn, that's the thing. You can't just go to Disney. Oh, I know. You need that. to get a consultant. Yeah, my best friend, she took her kids last year and was telling me all about the consulting. So we have a dear friend who lives up the street who is a Disney consultant. Yep, she helped us. She does the whole thing. She yeah, I guess dinner the, reservations. Plans the whole thing out for you. Yeah, yep. so that makes you your life easier. We got the dinner, dinner, dinner reservations. Everything's, it's all handled. It's all, whoop, whoop, here's a nice little package. Here's right. the bow. Go. Enjoy. I'm not ready to have fun. I'm glad you can Now, it. that should be your thesis <laughs> statement for your life. Yo, look at this. Scott Rizzuto, if we ever make a documentary, Scott Rizzuto, I'm not ready to have fun. Not ready to have fun yet. You're having a hard time even looking at the photos. I can tell because you're jealous. Awesome. You're I'm jealous. Ready. You want to be there. You want Scott Rizzuto right here okay, wearing, I'm, wearing I'm, Mickey ears. Let me be honest. In front of the Millennium Falcon. Okay. When the girl's there doing her cheer thing, that's probably going to be the priority. Not going to all the theme parks. Whatever, man. We're going to the Dominican the next week, the lady and I, so. Cool. That's fun. That's good. Have fun. Less lines. You going to the same place? We're, we're going in a couple weeks as well. Dominican? Yeah. No, I don't know where we're going. My buddy's getting married down there. Oh, fancy. Oh, yeah. Hopefully yeah, like it doesn't destination end. Destination wedding. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't end like the last time you went to a destination <laughs> wedding. Yeah, this is fine. These two people actually like each other. <laughs> um, everybody else have a good weekend? Uh, Rafe and Dayton? Yeah. I had great shows in Dayton. I went down there with Greg. We had a couple of sold-out shows. Met some, There's some Riz folks in Dayton. Long time met them. They were super cool. Uh, Air Force folks that have been, I guess there's a base near Dayton. Mm. Born in St. Louis, but been in the Air Force for 20 years. Nice. And they came out, brought some pals with them. And uh, it was fun shows, man. It was good. Nice. Scott? Heck yeah. Yeah, I played, right. uh, did guitar all weekend over at church. And then sun, or Saturday night, we went out to St. Charles to um, uh, a restaurant. Then we went to the rec hall. Have you guys been there yet? No. What's, a, what's a rec hall? It's it's just one of those, basically, you take the backyard games and you put them inside a building. And you play them there. And it costs a little bit of money. But they have, it's... That seems to be the new <clears throat> the new thing to do. Yeah. Like, and, you got that at the Armory... Uh, Westport Social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like those, but the nice thing is with this one, since it costs a couple of bucks, uh, less of a line, so you can actually get in there and play the games you want, and mm -hmm. it's really fun. And they have, uh, I don't know, it was a good time. Bags, yeah, washers, all the bags, thing. washers. That's a very popular. Westport Social. It's in the place. So. They have uh, football, bowling. There's the, the Armory, alley, the Alley and Nine, Man, Washington. Yeah. It's either that or pickleball, dude. They got that chicken and pickle place we keep going to, and. It's gonna sink us because we we just keep we just keep going. And and you didn't explain why you're not allowing the kids to crap inside the RV. Oh well, uh, uh, so uh, they're not gonna need to. A, we're gonna be at a campground. We got the full on campsite. They got everything they need there. Um, if it's an emergency, we'll hot bag it. You're gonna have them hot juice bag? in a bag. <clears throat> yeah, instead <man>. of <laughs> hey, hot bag it. You yeah. have the technology. <laughs> What good is that going to do? Well, it smells nah, better that way. I just don't way. want it. I don't know. I don't want it on my home. <clears throat> I don't want it. I don't want it in the, in the black water. It doesn't make any sense. You can't. Where are you going to put gonna it? You're not going to know. Hey, you just let me handle this, man. Do RVs have like the tackle boxes like a boat does where you can put the fish? Where you can put the hot trout? <laughs> like some <laughs> brown trout? Yeah. There's a hot trout? Yeah, the hot trout. Yeah, there's a hot bag bay. <laughs> <laughs> no, the hot bag the line hot bag bay. You just <laughs> twist it, it, it bag. and forget it. Byerly RV. Now, if it, you crap on a schnooks bag and you throw it out the window. Yeah, Disgusting. We, we even right. had a bus with a grinder on it. And, uh, <laughs> and we, You're ruining <laughs> grinder. The, the fact that Bellasino sandwiches are called grinders is ruining <laughs> I know. Right now, dude. That's we, and also I Scott's to. favorite yeah. app. We yep. toured on a the bus. We toured, in the world. we toured on a couple buses with a grinder, and it was for emergency use only. And and I tell you what, man, and a you couple guys did. Here, here's here's one of the reasons that you don't tell people you have a grinder on your bus because other people come there, and if you're they having a party, it. so and so comes there, and now I can't see her any differently. All I think of is the smell she made in our bus during this one party when she came on and said, "Hey, I need to use bathroom." Taylor Swift's fine. Yeah. What what she, is the point of having a Taylor. toilet? On the bus, if you're not going to just uh, blow it up. Blow it up. Because sometimes the smell is Because he's just, rather his kids it's, crap in an outhouse at a, uh, in a KOA. <laughs> <laughs> I, love that. I love that you built it into the jingle. <laughs> Buy early RV, hot bagging with your family. <laughs>
Yeah, that's going to be great. Nothing, yeah, nothing brings, a, brings the family closer than uh, you reaching your hand to the bathroom going, here, crap in this Deerberg's bag. <laughs> Daddy I'll doesn't want to stop. That's not how it works. That's how it worked on tour. Our family doesn't use plastic bags. You crap in this reusable <laughs> Aldi's right. bag. Yeah. They're eco-friendly. It's oh, a little deep man. worse. It's yeah. eco-friendly. No, these kids, they're all of an age. Where, they're of uh, an age. Where, they're okay. all of an age where that's not going to be. Uh, that's not going to be an issue. It's, all, it's, it's, it's going to be. Yeah, good. they're of an age. They're cooking up turd pies in the oven. Mm. Plus, you know what? We're actually kind of planning. We were talking about. Remember, uh, like, is it? Are you a A to B sort of guy, or do you actually plan for the for the snack stops? You know, and like we're planning for the snack stops. Good. We're excited to check out some of the. Some of the truck stops Maybe on the way down. Bucky's. Heck yeah. Yeah. Stop at a Bucky's on the way. We're, we're planning it all. That's good. Are you going to park halfway? Th like, you're, you're driving the whole time. Mal's not driving, right? No, I'm driving the whole time. So, are you planning on uh, parking somewhere overnight? Yeah, we got a campsite on the way down. Good. And, and one on the way back. Nice. Go on, it's an adventure. Yeah, we're stoked. You'll, you'll yeah. have a good time. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, my boy and I will have an adventure too at the house. Yeah. With the girls away. Right. Yeah, we'll do it different styles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I went to Paul Mano's for dinner on uh, Friday night. Oh, I love that. Oh, thanks for the invite. You weren't invited. Uh, yeah, great dinner there. What'd you What'd you have? I had a chicken parm. Oh, oh, um, because you heard about the uh, chicken pizza. Yeah, yeah. that really was from uh, was in my in my head. I got chicken parm. Cool. Che Cheetah. Cheetah. And then uh, yesterday was gorgeous. Yes. Gorgeous day. Uh, sure was, man. My, uh, my neighbor was like, hey, you know, we're going to do a little fire pit. You, you guys want to come up for dinner? I said, yeah. I said, I got a couple sirloins already uh, already cooking up over here and making some mashed potatoes. Sirloin. Right on. I'll bring these things up. We'll feast. Mm. We'll feast. It's supposed to be great today, too. 77 is the high. I know. Yesterday was like, it got cool. You know, when the sun went down, yeah, you know, nice. a little sweatshirt on. Mm -hmm. Had that uh, smokeless... It felt like very, it was very California yesterday. Yes, it they was. got those uh, that smokeless California. fire pit. You ever seen those? Uh, we talked about it, and I was looking into it. I didn't. I don't want to spend any money right now, but uh, yeah, it looks Dude, looks kind of cool. Really it like cool. recirculates yeah. the smoke yeah. or something. And we got one, the metal one, right, mm -hmm. with the holes on the outside. Yeah. Dude, it's cool. It is cool. If you hate smelling like bonfire, it's for you. Yeah, yeah. This you don't smell like a bonfire. Mm -hmm. So I went up there. The kids, uh, you know, made. Uh, you know, hot dogs on a stick, you know, while I yeah. finesse these sirloins for four hours. Uh, no, I got one of these sous vide. You know what that is? No. Sous vide. Yeah, S-O-U-V-I-D-E-S. -E when I make a big piece of meat, I'll do it. Sounds like a like a French uh, cold medicine. So, yeah, I, I forget what, it's, what it means, like, in French. It's like a water bath. Oh. A uh, grinder. So, <laughs> like a... Um... <laughs> A marinade? No, like you, you like a vacuum seal the steaks. Look at this thing. Oh, like sous vide. A, yeah, S O U S. <coughs> Basically, uh, it's a slicer dicer food and cooking it in a water bath at a precise temperature. Right, Tenderizing so, it, right? No, no, it, it cooks it. No, the, so it's the even. Perfect temperature. Uh, okay, so you put it in a bag. So I vacuum seal it. You vacuum seal it, and then you put it in boiling water, basically? And it's not boiling water. It's they. I put it to 129, 129 degrees, and this thing makes Ooh. the water that temperature mm -hmm. always so it's a water oven so yes uh so it cooks it perfect so i put the things in the in the, in the bag put them in the sous vide for two and a half hours you take them out and you just sear them hey this is the same thing as a two minutes per side same thing as an oven right but now you're putting plastic around things yo that make you nervous no okay you know, the plastic breaks down right yeah yeah it's fine okay, i got yeah. the nano particles in me it's fine uh <laughs> And you, and you sear it for two minutes. It's perfect. Anyway, slice it up nice, put it in a tray, make these really sweet mashed potatoes. Wow, look at that. What do you mean sweet mashed potatoes? Does it look perfect? No, I mean like sweet, sweet isn't, no, sweet isn't awesome. Does it look perfect like this? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's. That's why you do that. That's crazy. It's looking. foolproof. Slice it up nice. For your neighbors. For all of us. Wow. They got three kids, you know, we got the, our two kids, you know, the, the wife, the husband, get up there in an ice tray. They come to your house and No, we went up there. Okay. We walked all the stuff up there. One of the kids, I think uh, 10 years old, see him at the, uh, the table getting food. Why did he take just a ton of your meat? Take some mashed potatoes. All right, boy, have some steak. Yeah. Put some steak in his plate, and he reaches for the ketchup. I go, no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I've I've spent three hours cooking this thing. 
You're not putting ketchup on kids, this. <laughs> kids five years old. You go, what, 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 what the heck are you doing? He's 10. He's 10. Hey! I went, ow! Put it down! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. Just let people eat how they want no. to eat. You want to eat your hot dog that you put on a stick? Yes. Fine. You can put ketchup on that. <laughs> I thought you were an anti-ketchup on a hot dog guy, too. It's, you hate I, ketchup. I, I, no, I like ketchup on fries. Uh, no, you want to put ketchup on your hot dog, that's fine. It's wrong, but it's fine. <laughs> but my steak, in front of me, and his dad runs over. He goes, hey, ho, ho. Yeah, you don't put ketchup on that. Wow. I said, thank you, buddy. Oh, man. <laughs> don't embarrass our family. So, so. You, so you don't even need special plastic? You can just put this in a Ziploc? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've got one of those vacuum seal, like vacuum sealers. Okay. Do you want to talk about chicken breast? Yeah, yes. that's what the, yeah. I'm watching Dude. a video. about that. I'm watching a video of them doing it now. So you just clip it on the side here. Yeah, because you know what? Chicken it. breast uh, it gets uh, you know, dry. Like you put it in the oven or you put it on a pan, it's dry. Yeah, this way it doesn't lose any of the moisture. Never. There's an easy way to not dry it out. I mean, it's called a thermometer where you just check the internal temperature all the time. And you get to the right one, it's never dry. It's always perfect. Fine. You do it your way. All right. So you take this out and then you sear it? You could, yeah, if you want. Yeah, look at Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. I'm telling you, they're pretty cheap, too. Hmm. 50 bucks. Really? Don't yuck my yum. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. you know what a bad weekend? Who? I know if you uh, saw the story out of the Grove over the weekend. Uh, headline, man shoots a group mistakenly trying to get into his car near the Grove. Severely injuring, too. Now, oh. I saw the story. I thought a moon because he got into a car that he thought was an Uber once. Dude, I got into... And this is the danger of that. Yeah, I walked out of the pageant. I, uh, I, I ordered an Uber. And it was like a red Civic, or, or uh, it was a red uh, Camry, red Camry. And it started with a V or whatever the heck it was. And I was like, oh, and literally, I mean, it pulled up in front of me. Red Camry, license plate started with a V. I opened the door, I sat down, a guy goes, the hell are you doing? And I was like, <laughs> I, I thought he was fooling with me. No, you actually legit got into somebody's car. And, and he yelled at me, and I, was, uh, and I was like, I was like, Jim, <laughs> or, you know, whatever his name was. And he's like, no. And I was like, <laughs> no. I still thought he was joking with me. And I was like, are, are, are you are you an Uber? And he's like, no, man, get out well, of my you're car. Lucky this didn't wow. happen. Because yeah. that's nice. what happened in the Grove. That's terrifying. Uh, 25-year-old guy was shot, 22-year-old woman severely injured Sunday morning uh, when a group they were with tried to get into the wrong car near the Grove. The man who fired shots was sitting in his car around 2.50 a.m., the 4,500 block of Swan Avenue, when the group mistakenly <laughs> tried to get into his car, believing it was their own car. Yep. Yeah, it was one of those things that happened so fast, and it was so uh, weird and just kind of out of body that I didn't realize how freaking dangerous and not cool yeah. that was until a few seconds afterwards. Okay, so it's 2.50 in the morning. If you're the guy sitting in the car, now you got a group of people trying to get into your car. Try to see it from both sides here. Mm -hmm. Now a group of people trying to get into your car. He opens fire. The people mistakenly get into the wrong car. Now they're running for cover. It was just a whole... Just bad timing in all parts. Uh, the occupant fired shots out of his car at the group and then drove off, dragging one one, police said. The man in the group suffered gunshot wounds. Um, I don't... Did this guy stop? That's the whole thing. I don't know. Did they catch this guy? Did he take off? That I can't find. And I'm sure that's out there somewhere. Scott, look that up. Okay. I got this from, from Fox 2, maybe KMOV or KSDK has it. Uh, both victims taken to the hospital where they remain in critical condition, but uh, stable condition on Sunday. Uh, the shooting took place near the intersection of Manchester and South Taylor Avenues. Whoa, I've been there before. You okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I immediately thought of you getting in the wrong Uber. Yeah, again, I, I didn't, like, the seriousness of it didn't really hit me until... Minutes afterwards, like, oh my gosh! Nice man. I was like I was legit yeah. in the back seat. I think I'm here strapped in already. Oh my goodness, man! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It reminds me of that night. I'm trying to find this real quick, but that night, I was uh, leaving the grocery store, and I switch vehicles every week with Mountaintop there. So I always drive something different. And I was in a white truck. Oh, that you did the same thing. Opened a white thing. truck, and there's a guy just was in the back seat. He goes, whoa! Yeah. yeah. 
yelled to, and I was <clears throat> like, oh, all right, wrong view. Well, it sounds like this guy went, whoa, and then it's all <clears throat> fire. Yeah. Yep. He was scared. Yeah, you and that guy kissed, so it's like, it yeah. can go either way. It yeah, can go whoa, either way. get over here. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, whoa, he went, whoa, my lucky day. <laughs> I'm, I love red I was on tour in, in, in Vegas, and I was sleeping in the van once. There wasn't enough room in the hotel room, so I was, I was sleeping in the van, and people tried to break in while I was in the van. Mm. Man, thank goodness they didn't go farther. I had it all locked up, but, man, I was like, oh, God, here we go. And I peeked out, and sure enough, there was like five of them. I thought, well, I'm dead. Yeah, but they were really up to no good. Yeah, yeah, they were trying to get in. They were checking the trailer. They were checking the, the van. Yeah, they were up to no good. I, this is uh, just a... Uh... An accident, it seems. But I want to know if the guy who opened fire stopped for the police and at least gave a statement. Not that I'm reading. It says um, the man fired shots out of his car and fled from the scene. Well, <clears throat> but there's no more if he stopped down the road right. or... Yeah. Nothing. Well, if that, then he's an a-hole. I mean, don't well, they, they have make and model or... I, mean, I guess I know they the got him because how do they know he's a 35-year-old male? Oh, so they must oh have got the him. shooter? Oh, they must yeah. have got him then. Or a description. It's approximate. Oh. Approximately 35. Oh, okay. I don't know. He might have said, hey, guys, I'm 35. <laughs> and then drove And drove 35 off. 35-year-old white man. And drove off. Uh, you no. don't hop in a 35-year-old, 6-foot-1, 240-pound white man's car for no reason. <laughs> like, why did you describe yourself in such detail? Wearing gray sweatpants. <laughs> what? Get out of here. I'm heading home to 1101 Crestview Avenue. <laughs> okay, man, you're giving us some really detailed information. I think that you should probably just pull over and talk to the cops. They'll never catch me. <laughs> yeah, and, and a bunch of people are like, hey, downtown 3, I'm not surprised. Right. Right. It just it's a sounds like a unfortunate incident. Yes, it's oh. good to know. Yeah. It's good to know this could happen. So it could happen. And, and the reason I bring it up because, yeah, I forgot that happened to you too, Scott. Yeah. You try to get into somebody's car. Uh, I want to give credit to an emailer. Uh, I think a guy named D sent this to us. Um, I had no idea that we are in such proximity of a haunted place. What? Whoa. Go on. Like, in fact, this haunted place that uh, Rafe and I stayed at. Oh. Not too long ago. No, I was going to make a joke about that one. No, this is from a website, Newsbreak. I didn't know this, but rumors of the fifth floor hauntings of the Drury Inn and Suites in Creevecourt. Is oh. it real or a marketing ploy? <sighs> Wow. Fifth floor, huh? Fifth. Where did I stay? Fifth floor. The fifth floor. <gasps> what room? They knew you were friendly. You were go you're ghost friendly. I you're don't an ally. remember which floor, but I was on the fifth floor. Thirteen. Why is it haunted? Did somebody die there? And that's like who's well, haunted? I, I, I don't know. I read the whole article here. Uh, it says um, curiosity about the paranormal can sometimes lead to rumors and legends. Is that what's going on? The Drury Inn and Suites in Creevecourt, Missouri? Someone started a spooky tale about the fifth floor being haunted, and it keeps circulating. The Drury Inn and Suites at 11980 Olive Boulevard isn't far from St. Louis. You can read about strange things being reported on the fifth floor. But those things aren't described by way of examples. If apparitions have been, on, have been seen on the fifth floor, uh, in the fifth floor hall by witnesses, why isn't there more discussion about those experiences? Right. The Missouri Haunted Houses website indicates, I didn't know there was a haunted Yeah, trusted website. news source there. Yeah. Uh, indicates the fifth floor at this venue is especially haunted. It discusses things like footsteps, voices, and an elevator dinging. Whoa. Whoa. You know, I got to point out that... Uh, a lot of that sounds like a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> this is the... Uh... I stayed in Dayton. Apparently, my floor was also haunted this weekend. Did you hear elevator dinging? I heard a lot of footsteps, voices, and elevators dinging. This Ice is, falling out of a machine. This is the place that Hubbard sends people during, um, you know, snowstorms Snow and all storms, that. Yeah. And I will say between the years of uh, 2018 and 2022... <clears throat> Jeff Burton stayed over there, I uh, Quite a bit. He always stayed on the fifth floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if Jeff is haunting the Drury Inn across the street. I could see Jeff haunting the Drury Inn. Well, I'm, saying you pick you know? I'm saying between the Maybe. years of 2018 when we when we came over to this studio and 2022. We, started, we stayed over we there stayed quite there a bit. We stayed there a few times. He wasn't haunting it, but somebody may have gotten the wrong impression. As far as feeling someone yeah. is standing near... Are you saying it's just Jeff being a creepster I'm just over saying there, Jeff or is just Jeff being wanting Jeff. it? Yeah, no, Jeff's having you, a good time. You know him. He's probably w w waking up at one, going, "I need ice," and going down and, and getting walking ice. all. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah, I might as well just go get some ice. He was always up at weird times. 
Uh, as far as feeling someone is standing near you when there isn't, sometimes imagination can take you places your mind uh, take you places in your mind out of fear. Um, I believe it, guys. <laughs> you do. I do. I'm glad. I do. Uh, in 2021, a reviewer wrote, "Hi, hi. Hey. I'm up. Uh, I am up. The time is 1:38 a.m. Central. I'm here in room 865." Mysterious children were knocking on my door. When I ran out to confront the knocking, nobody was around. Mm. Oh. Wow. Definitely a ghost. Now I can't sleep due to something or someone rubbing on my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's the eighth floor. So I woke up, came to my computer to see if this place had any reporting of hauntings, and this page pops up. <sighs> uh. Hey, I was walking with my daughter yesterday in our neighborhood, and I found out, I didn't know this, that uh, somebody was murdered in one of these houses. Oh, no. Was there yellow tape everywhere outside it? No, apparently it happened. In your couple, neighborhood? Yeah, apparently it happened a couple, uh, a couple years ago. My daughter, like my kids knew. Yeah. I mm. think they have to disclose that or something. And they're like, oh, Although yeah. they don't. They're, I don't know, but, but she's uh, like. She's we've like, gone over this before. I she's don't like, think everybody knows that in this they neighborhood. They do if you ask. It's probably like a murder map. Are you asking? I think they have to tell you if you ask. Yeah, but are you going to ask? Has anybody been murdered here? Oh, yeah. That's my first question. Really? Buying a home. No. <clears throat> Has anyone been murdered here? Is this over any sort of ceremonial burial ground? Because <clears throat> if so, I want it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it has a school district. <laughs> Don't care about that. <laughs> Don't care about that. <laughs> Yeah, apparently everybody knew, except for me. Huh. I don't know. Crime of passion or something weird? Don't know. Oh, you didn't look it up? No. That's the first thing I did. She, she couldn't remember. She's like, yeah, yeah, it happened. Uh... I mean, you can look up the address and be like, who got murdered at 805 Meadow Lark Lane or whatever? I guess you're right. I'll look it up now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. They're saying it's haunted across the street. So next time we stay there, are we are we due for another snow? This Sounds like he was haunted by a <clears throat> girls' volleyball team. Girls' junior high volleyball team. <laughs> the kids were, I mean, I've had kids knock on my door at a hotel. And run away? Actually, dude, that happened that night at the Drury. Really? Do you remember that? I came in and told you that. That there were some kids, like, knocking on my door. You did say that. I mm. just forgot until now. I'm not kidding either. Because I came in and I was like, ah, whatever. Well, and I made on. sure there was no kid staying in this hotel. You Especially did? Yeah, you I, did. I asked. I go, are there any kids staying in this hotel? Because I will not stay here. There are. <laughs> yeah. And I said, sure. We can assure you. We, sir, we can assure you there are no kids staying here. I said, oh. give me your finest room. I just feel like that's par for the course in hotels. That's what we did. <clears throat> We'd find knock a Knock and run? Knock and run. Yeah, go hide around the corner or whatever. Huh. I, uh... You put in the address? I didn't know the address. I just put in a couple keywords, and uh, sure enough, that house popped Somebody up. Somebody was so. murdered there? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm just saying it popped up in the search. Whoa. Uh, like pretty, like a pretty, famous murder? Pretty immediately. Well, I mean, I think all murders are famous. Well, I mean, there's more, some more notorious than others. Um, let me find it. Uh, oh. I'll, I'll try to find some details. All right, so, do you believe in ghosts? Do I want this? Please, I don't, I'm yes. I'm not sure I want this. Yeah. Okay, you believe in ghosts? Uh -huh. Do you believe in ghosts? Um, not in the way that y'all think I do. Like, I, I believe in, uh, the, you know, the biblical principalities and, and heirs. So, yeah, I believe in the supernatural, but not... Not, not like, you know, white I'm, sheep, I am not know, chain rattling. Yeah, yeah, I do not Is that what you believe in? Yeah, Gina Davis all the way, dude. <laughs> Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> Upstairs in my family's all right. house. So, there was a new survey taken, uh, and it was, it was a new survey on things people believe in. And unfortunately, they didn't pull like a share. Like, uh, you ask people, do you believe in life after love? Mm. That, that was a missed opportunity. They should have. But, spoiler alert people believe in a lot of things they can't necessarily see. Okay, so do you believe in aliens? Moon? Uh, I will, sure, I believe in the possibility, but no, I don't think they're around here. Yes. Aliens? Yeah, statistically, it's got to be true. Yeah. Yeah, I believe in, I mean, God's very creative. I think there are other... I don't know if there's greys. Other beings, you know, <coughs> not of this earth. I don't know if they're here or not, but I do think there are other things. Yeah, yeah. same. Most people say they believe in aliens. Uh, do you believe in ghosts? Moon, yes. And, I mean... I, I, yeah, okay. 
Sure. I mean, I, if you have to classify it as a yes or no, it's I suppose. The spirit I, realm, yeah. Yeah. I'm, Ghosts. I'm the yes. yep. Spirit realm. Ghosts. Spirit world. 100% did. I think, I think people reach out from beyond. I don't know if there's like someone in a sheet with holes cut in it scurrying around the fifth floor of the jury and knocking on doors and hee hee and by the ice machine, but I do believe that uh, there's there's other realms that that spirits and folks can reach out from. I do believe that, yeah. So yeah. yes, ghosts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not that, not the ghosts, but I, I do believe in angels and demons. And I don't know. I don't know. I find that less likely, but yeah. Well, then I don't believe in ghosts. No. I don't know if I believe in ghosts or not. I haven't had any... You don't think your dad haunts you a little bit? Like, I think about my dad, and I'm like, oh, he's around, my grandma's. I always feel like they're around me. You never get that? I question that sometimes. It makes me I'd feel like to more think, soothed. I'd like to think, yes, but I, I haven't been shown any, any evidence of it. I yeah. don't know. You don't go to a medium? You know, my no. grandma died when I was 11, and I remember, you know, people were like, ah, she's watching you. And I said, that's not what I want. Okay. A <laughs> uh, young boy. Not a sure. 12. Uh, <laughs> hey, everybody's had that thought. Oh, all I thought a, yeah. And, not just boys. and once I thought that, once I went, wait a second, are you going to tell me that all these folks are watching me in here? Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that out of my mind. I don't, I, I refuse. Did you ever watch Pen 15 on Hulu? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no. It's, there's a hysterical scene where she's thinking about her dead grandpa and she's like coming of age and she thinks he's watching. It's, it's a struggle. Yeah. What a colossally boring eternity. If I'm to think that the people that I love have passed on to a better place or a different place, and, and they're going to sit there it. and watch, watch no. this? You're, you're Wrong. It's reality TV. <laughs> yeah, it's reality. No. It's what? not that they're here with it. I feel like they can go anywhere. Like, my, you know, that's one of the most beautiful things. When my dad died, I said, oh, now he's everywhere. So, yeah, yeah he could be at the Grand Canyon. He could be hanging with me right now. He could be up in the satellites, you know. That's that's how I. I hope it. he is. I hope he is too. He is. I hope my dad's everywhere. I don't know. I think that, I, man, I do think that if you pay attention, you'll see little signs here and there. I think you're not looking for it. I think if you looked for it, you'd find it. I think not all the time, but I have stuff that'll it. remind me. Uh, but I don't try to. Yeah, I don't try to do confirmation bias. I just kind of like, I take it as it comes. And, you know, I, every once in a while I'll see something that I'm like, man, that's a pretty big coincidence for me to just ignore it. I think you pay attention to omens around you and, like, uh, you know, you have as much magic in your life as you want. Right, I'd be sitting on a park bench and thinking about my dad and a butterfly will come land on my shoulder. Maybe, yeah. Sitting <sighs> on a park bench. <laughs> okay, you believe in the devil. The devil? And by the way, 61% of people believe in ghosts. 57 believe, uh, 57 believe in in aliens. Do you believe in the devil? Yes. 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 I I believe in all of them. I believe that anybody that's spiritual, Allah, is there, Jesus, the devil, it's all real. Is there a yes. devil? Is there a, a it guy? It all coexists. Yep. Is there a devil? Yep. And he looks like John Lovitz. In it. Yes. <laughs> I like a Harvey Keitel <laughs> devil. Actually, that's my devil. Or Dave Grohl devil. <laughs> Rafe, the devil. In this in the sense of like pitchfork. Do you and believe if I ask you, do you believe in the devil? No. Do you believe in God? We'll mm. get to that. Oh. Okay. Devil? Yeah. Some people think I'm the devil. Mm. I I'm saying in the <laughs> the sense that we understand the devil. As like a goblin. Who well, yeah, tries. like a, a modern depiction. Yeah, no, yes, I don't believe in that. No, I believe that there's a yin and a yang, and there's a positive and a negative. If that counts, then yes, I believe in the, the devil. The question was, do you believe in the devil? I'm going to say no. Okay. Why do you say no? What's your reasoning? I, don't, I just don't think there's a guy down there. I believe in evil. I know there's evil. Yeah, there is evil. What causes evil? Do I think it's the devil? I, I don't think so. All right. Seventy percent of people believe in the devil. Do you believe in miracles? Yeah. yeah. Witnessed a few of them last year. I believe in miracles. Great song. You sexy Where thing. Where are you from? Mm. <laughs> you sexy you thing. You sexy thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, a good riff. Yeah, great song. <laughs> Miracle Scott, yes, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, I've seen too many of them. 
to not think they yes. exist. You've seen, okay, what was the last miracle you saw? Well, the big one, I think, is me getting a career in radio. Yeah. Because I had never had previous experience. <laughs> and laid, it kind of came out of, uh, <laughs> I it was a gift from God, I will say. <laughs> it was a gift from God, and um, he kind of gave me a heads up it was going to happen, and it did. And I was Look like, at you. All yeah. right. Right on. Working with me. God gave you the heads up? Yeah. Tight. Yeah. A radio. There's a whole plan. Out. It's pretty wild. <laughs> He's walking down the street in a radio <laughs> final building. What uh, happened to the miracle? Make fun of it, but no, it was legit. Remember the miracle last year, that lady that was dead in Missouri? Oh, the in one Missouri? out in mid-Missouri? Yeah, what's up with her now? Wait, huh? say that again? What? I don't even remember. Was she like petrified? about the lady that regrew a toe? Or whatever, yeah. Well, we had a miracle toe so lady true. last year. We I remember that. We had a miracle toe lady. Not this time last year, in fact. The miracle toe of central Missouri. She regrew it. She yeah, but she won't it. show it to anybody. Yeah. She regrew it in her mind. It's a mind miracle. I think... Miracles are real if you, especially if you scale back what you define as a miracle. You know? Because what do you say, life itself? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Parking space right up front. Yep. It's a miracle. It was the nun who hadn't decomposed. The nun who hadn't years. decomposed oh, right. and, and the woman who regrew, regrew the toe. Yes. And people mm -hmm. were going to the nun and touching her and she looked alive still. Right. Or, like not, or not as dead yeah, as not she as should dead. look. Right. She was dead. But she wasn't decomposing. Right, yeah. four years later. And haven't you guys known people that have had incurable diseases? They're going to die, and then you pray for them all this, and all of a sudden, psh, they're cleared up, and they survive. Do you know any of them? Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a miracle. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a miracle guy. I'm with you. I'm with you with the miracles. He's seen the Kurt Russell Movie. Do you believe in miracles? I do. Remember when? Remember when America beat the Soviets in hockey? Wow. That in the semifinals. Al dude. Michael said it. It was forty years ago. How long ago? Forty-four years ago. Yeah. He said this is a cold miracle. Forty-four years ago last <laughs> week. I believe. Do you believe in miracles? Yes. Yes. That can prove. Oh, miracle there. on ice. That's right. Mm -hmm. Got Yes. Eighty-three percent of people believe in miracles. Um, Eighty-five percent of us believe in God. Okay. It is strange. To believe in God? No, that the, the, the numbers are different. 15% more for God, though. Right. Like, God's crushing true? it. <laughs> Sorry, devil. But, I mean, I mean, it's kind of, you know, hand in hand, if you will. Yeah. Is what it, if you believe in miracles? No, God and devil. Like, you know, it's Life, how convenient death. to believe in one but not the other. Well, can there be one without the other? Not in my view. Right. Well, some people think that, you know, God is a loving father that you never have to fear and that he wouldn't wouldn't send you there. That God is love and would never send you to a place like that. So there's a lot of people that have differentiating views on that. Now, yeah, two things came so in. I could see that 15% waiver. Two things came in below 50% as far as the survey goes. Mm -hmm. um, people who believe in reincarnation, 48% of people said they believe in reincarnation, that they were once another person. Mm, you've do you lived think, before. Do you think? I do sometimes think that. I feel like we get multiple lifetimes. Mm. I, my, you know, I call myself agnostic, but my spirituality patterns would make no sense to anybody else, but it makes sense in here. And, um, yeah, I feel like you, you meet people in each lifetime, and they can be different to you in each lifetime. And so it's kind of like a, it's almost like Buddhism, I guess, is the closest thing to that, the reincarnation. Mm. Um, yeah. And as I've told on, on the show before, I'm nuts. Um, like, I feel like my cat, Clover, is my grandma. I'm a gene. Okay. 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 And it gives me great joy. And now when I went to her house, her cat gave me a Werther's original. Wow. Yeah. And then I was like, dude, I'm starting to believe it, too. Yeah. Proof. Reincarnation? Strange. No. Reincarnation. Sure. Same thing with God with me, dude. It's like, here's the thing. I'm also agnostic. I, I think, like, hardline atheists are... Anyone that's a hard line either way and pretends to know, I think they're full of crap. Because I don't think you can know. I think it's okay to admit you don't know, and uh, which means everything's on the table. Right. Keep your eyes. Doesn't mean open. I'm not saying anyone's wrong. I'm the I'm same not way. Anyone's right. I think every. Yeah, exactly. That's I'm the way I am. You, I don't know. So that's there may the be I a am. devil. I think there's. There has to be some sort of. I believe in like universal love and entity. There's something out there. We're all connected. We may have past lives. I feel like I, I meet people sometimes. I'm like, man, I feel like I've known you my whole life. 
And then there's time, you know, there's times that I have feeling I see omens and I'm like, man, that reminds me of my grandma. That's crazy that that just happened to me today. I'm so the it's same hard way. not to believe in something. I'm, 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 you know, hedging my bets here. Whatever's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be a good That's a good person. way to win. Well, yeah, yeah, once yeah. you find out. Actually, I, guys, <clears throat> Thursday night at backstage at the patch, I actually got baptized by my friend, my friend Richard, who's the bassist in my band. I, we were having this really deep conversation about death before we went on the stage. And he threw water at you and went, gotcha. And then he goes, hey, and he threw water. He, he blessed me and he goes, now you're baptized. Because that's something that I... You know, I don't know if that's how that works, but no, okay. apparently everybody can baptize everybody, allegedly. I, well, again, I don't know. I was happy to have the water flicked on me because I... I've never been baptized. I don't know. I listen. I'll dunk you. <laughs> we'll go out in the river. Unlike have Scott, Moon who and King Scott dunk you twice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unlike Scott, who made fun of my sous vide machine. <laughs> I apologize. You baptized that meat? No, I'm saying like, hey, <laughs> sure did. You did. You did. If you want to believe in uh, cooking your meats in a water bath, fine. <laughs> if you don't, that's fine too. True yeah. that. It's all good. No, it's all good. As long as we're nice I to each other. Let's make fun of the plastic part, not yeah. the water part. Hey, as long as we're all nice to each other. That's fine. <laughs> now, our buddy Ken's checking in the email. He says, I need to be introduced to this toe lady. I only have five and a half toes left due to diabetes, and this bitch is growing back toes. Hook me up. <laughs> I need some new toes. Here's a deep one. Here's the last deep question. Okay. Last one. I love this. This is too heavy for some people. I love All it. Right. People were asked in the survey, if there is a God, is he a male or female? Ooh. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, let's get into it. Well, all the... Yeah. Um, I don't know. To me, I feel like the reason that I feel like God is could be a woman, um, if it had a gender, I don't know if it has a gender. Yeah, see, my, me, it's something else. It's not yeah. male or female. Same. I feel that way. But if to me, like a woman, right, like carries, like creates, like men too, but not, you don't hold the baby in your bellies for... Like women are incredible. Like the reproductive world of men and women are so vastly different and women are just incredible that they, you know, that, so yeah, I, to me, there's more nurturing, there's more love, there's development, or there's coexisting, it's because, beautiful. Man, the UFC. The UFC? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Top <Yeah>. rope. <clears throat> Okay. Dude, uh, only guy God would invent the UFC. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, most... To think that... What do most people think? Most people think it's a dude. Yeah. 50% that's, say that's dude. That's because that's what's been presented. 50% yeah. say dude. Yeah. So it's not a full majority. 14% say female. And 28 were like, eh, something else. Mm. Yeah. Something you can't... It's, it's neither. What a wildly narcissistic thing for us to think. That the all-powerful, all-being, omnipotent being would have a nutsack. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about a uterus? Same. I, Rory Same. Scovel, you should watch Rory Scovel's new special. I watched it yesterday, and I don't want to rip off his material, but he made an excellent point about this where he said, like, he goes, the people that say, you know, but he's like, we think God's a man because of all the stuff that's been presented to us in culture. He also has chiseled abs and <laughs> long, perfect, white, flowing hair, like, uh, you know. And then he was like, but and then people will say, He's like, the people that say that God's not a man, God's a woman, he's like, what a wildly, you were so close to getting it right and then just veered right back into traffic. <laughs> <laughs> because he's like, why would you ever think that? That's also dumb to think that. And he's like, I saw a woman with a bumper sticker and it said, "God on the first day, God created man and then he had a better idea. And he goes, he did? He did? <laughs> He did, you dumbass. You know, and it's like you literally said in the thing, like you called him male. And it's just like I think when people get hung up on trying to like, if there is some all-powerful, omnipotent being, I I highly doubt there's a invisible man in the sky with a white beard and a and a and a calculator keeping track of all the times he saw you, Joe, as a child. I just don't think. I think that's a ridiculous thing to think. Well, the Simpson told me it's Simpson said it's a guy with a white beard yeah. hanging out in a cloud. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna go with that. It's a big calculator. It's a big, yeah, dude. He uses an abacus. That's a Texas Instruments. <laughs> right, I had to get a Texas Instruments to keep track of me. Isn't an abacus the with the yeah, slide? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the slide things. There's another one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This guy's Talk on a roll. Yourselves.
Dude, deep convos on a Monday I know, morning. I like You're it. bringing I, the heat. I'm today. sorry. I'm sorry. Well, the ghost thing ne- across the street. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I also do think it's funny. I, and I will say this I have an atheist friend, like a militant atheist, like corner you at a party, which sucks. <laughs> <laughs> To tell you God's not real, but does also believe in ghosts. And I'm like, you can't have it both ways, brother. Yeah. Like, because uh, you know who the OG ghost was? <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> you think when he rolled the stone away, he didn't? the first thing he didn't do was be like, boo! <laughs> I would. He scared the hell out of him. That'd be hilarious. And when he went to heaven, he's like, gotcha! <laughs> yeah. Believe what you want. Also, if you believe God is a dude, <laughs> what you want. let's believe talk about you this. Want. If you believe God's a guy, do you think God's well endowed? Like God's is there any hog? question? You think God's got a big hog? The biggest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you think Jesus had a big That's one? why all the guys with big hogs on earth were made in God's honor, right? I mean, then that's God's how they image? feel. In God's, God's image, image yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's how that ego started. Yeah, that's why every time I go to going to church for a wedding or funeral or whatever, I see Jesus up there on the cross in a little loincloth. You can't just have like a tip hanging out, something, hook Jesus oh. up. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, dude, this is my Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior is packing heat. World's old enough, I'm sure it's been done. Hey, listen, if you go into... into any, <laughs> I just want to see it. I want to see somewhere. If you go into any St. Peter's, you can see it, okay? <laughs> oh, all Peter. right, well, St. Peter's. St. Peter's holy holy church of the well endowed. Holy church. Anyway. Anyway. I can't uh, wait to see the emails I'm about to get. Today is uh, is uh, National Carnival Day. Wow. A very important day. National Carnival Day. I love, I love a good carnival, man. Love it. The traveling carnival goes way back in history, and today is today. Today they still pop up, bringing loads of fun and thrills and carnies, mm-hmm. pillaging and plundering from town to town. Mm. Didn't you love a good carnival? When you, I mean, if you were a kid and you were driving by the highway and you saw one, you're just like, oh, yeah. "Is there any possible way we can stop there?" It even got better after I saw Big as a kid. Remember how they go where the carnival was at? Yeah, is that where Zoltar is? Yes. Or Zoltan? And it just seemed so <laughs> magical with that. It was like, this is pretty Carnival's special. Great, man. I'm going to find something like that the here. boardwalk. Yeah. I is there it. a favorite carnival? The Lost Boys Carnival. Is there a favorite carnival like you used to go to as a kid? Uh, I figured in Southern Illinois. Yeah. We used to have um, Columbia Days, and they still do every summer. And uh, Columbia Days was the like last hurrah before school got back into session. So it was like the ending. Columbia camp. Days. Columbia Days, and so at the Legion Park there, they would take over and have all the rides. And it's awesome. I mean, I love. There's not like candlelight and carnival light are my two favorite lights. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when you're walking around and that you just Warm. bright lights, and it's just that whole essence and the, and the faint smell. smell of funnel cake. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and oil. Stamp funnel down, cake and stamp and, down grass. Funnel cake, stamped down grass, and, and kettle corn. Yeah. Those were state fairs are kind of the big version of the carnival. Yeah. But I love, yeah, the smell of all that, and it's just a, it's a good time. I'm a carnival. You fan. know any carnies? Oh, yeah, dude. <clears throat> really? I had a couple of fo- couple friends, like a couple people from my hometown went carny for a while. They're interesting folks. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like working on the road as a merch guy. We always felt like we were carnival workers because you're just... In one town and out, and it's the weirdest people on the planet. I had a couple. It's great. Yeah, I got a couple friends that are like trained kids. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know that culture, mm-hmm. but it's like uh, almost volunteer. It's a lot of times it is like privileged kids who decide to be homeless for a while, but it's just like trained kids that they'll literally like hide and hop trains and kind of like live like hobos, like the boxcar children. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Yeah, like a group of my buddy Adrian sweet. was telling me all kinds of crazy, <clears throat> like the easiest cars to sneak on and where to hide and all this stuff you wouldn't get caught by the Pinkertons or whatever. It's just a way to like go from town to town and there was like a group of, I mean, they weren't kids. They weren't like children. They were adults, but I mean, they were like a young, and a lot of times they would go busk or go work as carnies for a while Mm. to make a little bit of money and ride the train to the next town when Mm. they were done. So it was like, it's kind of an interesting No, I I, I, I think it's... It's kind of cool, like okay, you 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 set up in a town on like a you know Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, you get to town, you start setting the rides up. Yeah. You know, last kid leaves, you know, Sunday night, and you start packing, you know, breaking down. Monday, you hit the road up to off to another town. Right. 
mm-hmm. and just repeat. Tour life. If you work them, it's a good way to learn your special purpose. What's and that? From the jerk, Steve Martin. He learned That's his true. special purpose. Yeah. Operate in the tilt a whirl. My favorite mm-hmm. carny was Joe Dirt. I when I see, hear "Who do you love?" Oh, I just think of him is... taking his shirt off and his mullet blowing in the wind. The slow motion and the pointing. David Spade looked good, dude. What's your favorite uh, carnival food? Oh, funnel cake, dude. Funnel cake. Or sometimes I'll have like a like a different types of uh, corn. You know, like a like a street like corn, a, like a seasoned corn. Yeah, street corn. Something yeah. like that. Like yeah. any of that. Any corn, if I. I can get have corn, corn in a strange, in a strange uh, situation. I like it. I don't know if you have. Fu- I think if you have funnel Delicious. cake outside of a of a fairgrounds, it's not the same. No, nah. funnel cake though, and I don't know if it's my body changing or if the funnel cakes are changing. I don't know what's going on, but man, I always want one. I get one, and I'm hurting by bite four. Funnel cake. I, my stomach is. It's just, just sugar just, grease. Yeah. It oh is my lot. gosh. It's, it's so like upsetting. dirty oil. Batter. It's Dude, dirty oil. It's batter. It's and then it's, you know, we'll mask everything with powdered sugar. <laughs> Silver Dollar said they have like an God Oreo one, and it is this. Oh God, it's so good. It's so good, and I and I have to I have to steer clear, but I buy one every single time, and I start going. And it's got like some like uh, syrup stuff on the top, and golly, it's so good. There's always one of those little uh, huts that's like fried what with a question mark, mm-hmm. and it'll be like uh, fried Twinkies and fried Oreos and all that. I'm, I, I'm a sucker for that. Yep, fried bananas. I'm going there to try something. Fried Oreos. Oh, yeah. I You're frying it. Let's do it. First time I tried a deep fried Twinkie. <laughs> yeah. Life changer. It really was. Yeah. Hells to the yeah. I like and, a corn And dog. I was an adult when I had it for the first time. Really? Corn yeah. dog is quintessential. Yeah, yeah corn, dogs some, are corn dogs awesome. are better at a carnival. They are. Yeah. So is funnel cake. <clears throat> yeah. I still, uh, I'll get down with the lemon shake up. Oh, yeah, me too. What is that? Well, that's the quintessential carnival drink, brother. It's Come lemonade on. that they shake, and it's really sweet. It has, like, pulp like or something in it. I don't think I've ever had that. So they take it. <laughs> they take it, and they Sometimes they do it. two at a time. Yeah, two at a time. And, <laughs> and they, they shake they, them up. They shake it. Are, is there, like, cut lemons in there? There's, like, yeah. things in there for sure. There's, like, there's, <laughs> things. There's, there's floaty things. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's sugar, like, the rim. The old... Yes. It's, it's, it's a good. Water. It's a lot. Mixed in with the lemons. I would have liked to go to that Lost Boys carnival he talked about earlier, though. Yeah. That was the ultimate. A Keep night carnival Sutherland. like that. Ugh. The saxophone guy. Oh, yeah. Greased up saxophone guy with a ponytail. Yeah. Did you know that? <laughs> I found it out this weekend that the late, the girl that played Star in Lost Boys is the richest actress in Hollywood. Isn't she the girlfriend of Bill Paxton in Twister, too? Oh, oh yeah. She, no, she, she married that she guy. She married the guy oh, who owns yeah. the Atlanta Hawks. She oh, married, yeah. like, a billionaire, but she's on paper, she is worth more than any other actress in the oh, world. Wow. Uh, Jamie Gertz. Yeah. Jamie Gertz. Yeah. Still beautiful, too. She's, Jamie Gertz? She's a beautiful uh, yeah, woman. Shame. She is, a, I think, a co-owner of the Atlanta Hawks. We got cows. Dang. That's what she says in Twitter. Yeah, she <laughs> married a billionaire, and, like, he's like, here's a, here's a basketball team. Thanks. <laughs> here's a basketball <laughs> team. Yeah, Jamie Gertz. Jamie Gertz. Yeah, billionaire business executive Tony Ressler. Uh, what? Who was she in Seinfeld? She was uh, one of his more famous girlfriends. She was a man hands, right? She was. No. Uh, Terry Thatcher was man hands. T- or no, no, Terry, Terry Thatcher was Terry the Hatcher real was, and they're spectacular. Yeah. I think she well, was Jamie the toilet Gertz, paper I can't square. Spare square. Can't spare a square. That's who she was. I can't spare a square. And now she's a billionaire. Good for her. Man. And she could spare a square. She's, yeah, she, she, gets, she was Jane in the stall. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Jamie Gertz says uh, every month she makes about twenty million. A month. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, good for her. Yep, not bad. Anyway, anyway, that's enough of that. Happy National Carnival Day. Let's Thank take you. a break. But first, uh, Team Rose, remember the day is brought to you by uh, Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill, St. Louis, home for Blues hockey from St. Louis. Jessica Quest is hey, out. Jessica. Yeah, oh, Jesse Quest. Teamers, member of the day, Jessica is a longtime listener to the show, always starts the mornings off with the Riz Gang. She appreciates how the show always feels like hang with old friends and all the laughs the crew brings to her morning commute. Loves the first hour of the show. We're just, you know, bantering back and forth, and apparently some people think we're being blasphemous, which can't have a discussion about something, huh? Uh, you can't are, just talk about stuff. People are sensitive, stuff. dude. I guess so. Well, you all survived it. You'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, again, she loves the back and forth the first hour. Really grateful for Learn's female perspective on uh, various topics that are discussed. Riz Show provides Jessica both laughs and tears every day. Oh, She's good. Ex- <laughs> tears. The tears. The laughter and the tears. <laughs> uh, she is ecstatic to become a Team Riz member. 
Jessica Quest from St. Louis is our Team Riz Remember the Day. Get super sweet Team Riz Remember the Day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up, 1057thepoint.com slash Team Riz. Ah, people are so funny. Just get butt hurt for, I'm going to get up today. I'm just going to be butt hurt. That's it. That's the society we live in. Hey, That's we it. had a thoughtful conversation, I thought. Till the end. Thoughtful. I kind of threw it under the bus. That's what it was fine, mean. though. Also, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. It's our opinions. No, it's not, it's, it's not even that. It's just, it just, you know, five buddies just chomping up. This is what yeah. we're, in, we're, in a, we're in a diner booth. This is actually what we're supposed to do. We're chopping it up. This is literally a conversation Rafe and I have had every week since working together. This is so. what the lady upstairs wants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh! This is what the rock hard, well hung Lord wants. Listen. <laughs> 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 Oh, why does my chest hurt so bad? I know. <laughs> All right, crop on celebrities after the break. It's 706. <laughs> it is uh, Monday traffic and weather. It's the Riz Show, presented by the Fast Lane. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. Right hand shoulder blocked due to a stalled vehicle 270 northbound just before Doherty Ferry Road. Your point forecast breezy and near record high of 78 today. Right now it's 47 at the point studio. All right, learn what he got. Which famous guy that you love is still using a BlackBerry in the year 2024? Uh, would you quit going to strip clubs for $500,000 and get a new wardrobe? More expensive than the original, we're going to talk about the Joker sequel and another effing list. Uh, I'm going to ruin everything for you. It's the cringiest list of top ten. We're going to go every one on this list and see if you think that this movie is cringe in the year 2024. So it was once... It was once acceptable, great. and now it's cringe. Yes. Oh, God. So just sit down. <laughs> all right. It's uh, it's that. It's your crappy birthdays. It's the porno birthday. All that and more next in your crab on somebody. Stay there. It's Donnie Fandango backstage at Point Fest. For one, I just almost fell out of my chair. It is. And for two. <laughs> Well, that would have made a really great yeah. way to start Good the interviews intro. of the day. Yeah. All right. So let's settle this first and foremost. You and me here right now. Zero nine thirty six. Yes. All right. I heard it in a couple of different ways. It confused the hell out of me, man. It confuses me. Okay, well then, good. Then no, I don't and, feel as bad yeah, no, that it's not just it's me. The, the I put the the colon in there to be read as a time. You know what I mean? Yeah. No one says it's nine, three, six o'clock ever. Right, ever. It's, no. never hap it's never happened. And it never should happen. And it won't. Over at Anton's Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Energy Experts, they do it all. Repairs, installation, energy audits. And right now, through February 29th, it's only a few more days. So you're going to want to call Anton's is spreading the love with a combined AC and furnace tune-up for only 129 bucks. That's right, only 129 bucks will show your system some love with a full system tune-up. Call them today, visit them online, AntonsHVAC.com. While you're on there, especially if you got some uh, some uh, some buddies that are good at bags, they are doing a, an Anton's Heroes or, uh, uh, program benefit. They're doing this incredible event, Dadden and Baggin. They they uh, they combined to do this huge. Fundraising event March 2nd at Task in Fenton. Um, show your support for veterans and first responders. It all goes uh, to helping, uh, you know, veterans and first responders with indoor comfort replacement. It's an indoor doubles event. You can sign up. There's a 50% payoff, 50% uh, payout, five games guaranteed. It all happens March 2nd, and the proceeds go to such a great cause. Again, it's March 2nd at Task in Fenton. You can sign up on the website and get in on that deal. AntonsHVAC.com. That's A-N-T-O-N-S-H-V-A-C.com. All right, 25.7 The Point, everything alternative. We are backstage. Big summer show happening. And uh, look, it's my friends, Josh and Tyler from 21 Pilots. Well, hey. What's up, friends. dudes? What's yeah. up? I wonder at, like, at how many more times that I interview you guys that we just turn the tables and you interview me. You know what I mean? I mean, because this is literally like four or five times that we have spoken to each other. I just don't want you getting tired of me. Actually, would you rather <laughs> okay. get attacked by 100 chicken-sized horses or one horse-sized chicken? Oh, man, I think all the little horse-sized horse -sized chickens. Wait. All the little horses. Horses, It'd be like chicken size tiny chicken little size horses. Right. There's something very creepy about that. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I guess the big uh, boy, the, they're both. That's 
neither one are particularly good, but I would go with the, go the tiny the ones. Yeah, yeah, you could probably sure. just kick them in the face and stuff. <laughs> just step on them all. That's what I've thought. You, you would have that advantage a little bit, I guess. You were able to do I've that. I've thought about this a lot, actually. Well, guys, it's great to see you again. You, I don't believe that you have really, in essence, been off the road in a couple of years. Is, is that true? Has there been any long spells at home? We had three days the, oh. uh, the other day, so... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, it was a day of travel, then a day That's off, true. then another day of travel, yeah, which I guess so. counts as three days. No, we. Uh, this is what we've always dreamed of. Sure. You know, when we were we first started. Dream men's health. Another Monday. Another Monday for victory. I want you to be victorious in your life in all the ways. So financially, mentally, physically, all of that, guys. You need to go to victorymenshealth.com and book your blood test. Get that micronutrient testing like so many of the dudes in my life have. And me included. I got mine a couple weeks ago, so I should be getting my results here um, this week. Tell me what's going on with my vitamin levels and uh, just anything else that might be happening. And if you're somebody who has been wanting to lose some weight, which, you know, you're beautiful no matter what weight you're at. But if you got goals, I'm here for it. And Victory Men's Health can help you with that. Peptide therapy, sexual health issues, even something as... Um, Fast as an IV vitamin infusion. This is great. So like if you have a big weekend coming up or maybe like a long week at work and you're like, I need to just replenish my hydration and the vitamins in my body. Those IV vitamin infusions are super cool to do. It takes about an hour. You watch TV. They got wall to wall screens of Victory Men's Health with the games and every Al Pacino movie you'd possibly want to watch. Um, and the people there are going to take great care of you. There's Couple locations, O'Fallon, Missouri, O'Fallon, Illinois, town and country in the brand spanking new Sunset Hills location, victorymenshealth.com. Hey, it's Blue October at Point Fest. Hello, hello. Yeah. All right. Oh, we, sorry, I had to do that. No, that's all right. You do whatever you need. We're back. The next 10 minutes are all about you. Hey, Jeff's wife. I just want to say hi, Jeff's wife. <laughs> hi, Jeff's daughter. I love y'all. So, okay, first and foremost, um, we were talking to, uh, to Will just a second ago. To you Will, were, you my were boy. Inter introduce me to Will. Yeah. I think one of the things that has become so apparent to me over time in meeting bands and talking to bands is that word chemistry. Yeah. and how absolutely positively crucial that that is. And you can probably even like someone personally, but maybe not have that same musical connection. And it's gotta be, it's gotta be all of that. It's right? gotta be all that. Ever. Yeah, you, you, you vibe with somebody, you can vibe with anybody, you know what I'm saying? But when you get musically, like the other night, take for instance, we played a show last night, and just backstage after the show, I was listening to some some cool Miles Davis jazz, right? Mm -hmm. And then I went to Bill Evans jazz, and he sat down with me, and for 30 minutes, we just started discussing how piano and, and jazz and, and the, the art of rock and roll make us feel. And just by talking to us at the end of the conversation, we were going, woo, woo, I love what we do. Yeah. You know, and then when we're on stage, you can play chords and this guy will go off. It's, it's a chemistry thing. It's a bonding thing, but the true lesson for a new person in a band is whether you can live with them in the bus. Right on. But but, but you don't know that. Some people don't shower, dog. Uh. Some people don't shower. Some people don't change their socks. Uh, okay, but then what do you do when you like a guy that you're auditioning with or what have you, but then you start to do shows and you're like, uh -oh. you, s you sit down with them and say, we need to have a real big talk. I love you. And you would tell me if I have a booger on my nose, right? And he'd say, yeah. And I'd say, you got a big booger on your nose. And it's called, you need to take a shower. And, and that's, and that's and a legitimate that's... conversation that you have had before. Not with this guy. No, well, well right, because he's right. here. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not, not this guy. Now, he smells good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about the, the single here. Uh, yeah. I hope you're happy is doing incredibly well nationally. Thank We're you. having a great run with it. Thank and I got to be very honest with you. And please don't be mad at me when I say no. this. The very first time that I heard that song, I thought, this is not at all what I would think Blue October to be. And when I came back to it the second and third time, I was like, ooh, this is another direction and I like it a lot. And exactly. it just grows every time. Exactly. So is that, I mean, what, was it a purposeful, like sort of uh, right I just, I've just, we all grew up on so many different styles of music. And like I said, we discussed jazz, opera, uh, hip hop, urban rock. JewelryNinjabling.com, the exclusive jeweler of the Riz Show. You know, we got something uh, important and you want to look good when, when, it, when it's happening. So I wanted to look good today. So what did I do? I wore my Morris Royce oh, watch. Oh, look at you. That's right. I feel good. I look good. Thank you, Morris Royce. Thank you for your expertise. They picked this out for me. 
they picked this out because I don't know anything about watches, but I know that I want to look nice and I I, I want to tell time. Yeah, that's a, that's a good brand, too, and they got a lot of great watches up there. In fact, they gave me a watch, too, but, okay, so here's what I did. I went to get a couple links taken out, Yeah. Uh, and I overdid it. I got to get a link put back in. <laughs> ah. I don't know if my wrists thickened up. Yeah, I man. Don't know. Maybe you just had, you know, a, a binging sort I don't of know. A weekend. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, th this this uh, goes right to my thighs. No, my fat goes right to my wrists. <laughs> uh, more source jewelry uh, for the engagement rings. Uh, spring is here or it's about to be here. Engagement season. Uh, do the right thing. And I understand doing your due diligence and wanting to shop around. But but do us a favor. Go to Mortuary first, and then go other places. Yeah, they're the best. This is they an experience best. unlike any other. And once you once you see the difference, changes everything. Oh, changes everything for life. This is where be a we will go. Family jeweler for life. Exactly, exactly. Mortuary Jewelry, NinjaBling.com, the exclusive jeweler of the Riz Show, where you get the jewels and not the shaft. Oh, let's do it now. Let's okay. do it now. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. Okay, so so wait, and and Columbus. I don't think you have a clue how bad this no, I don't. this gun hurts. Would you like an example? Would you like to try? Would Would you put your butt on the line and? Uh, you guys can shoot me. To, to yeah, yeah. Have Scott. How about you shoot Clownvis first? I'll take. Can one, I take one? one shot in the can tush. I take one of his shots and give him four? Was what? That no. Oh, that's happened. I'd like to. I mean, just as a, as a gesture. I mean, of, that's a pretty. Goodwill that's a pretty show. amazing. I do believe in a Bob Saget ghost. Yes. I think he is here in the studio all the time. Me too. All right, welcome back to The Riz Show, presented by The Fast Lane. Phone number 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. The Mick Ultra Studio Cams, 1057thepoint.com slash Riz, the socials. At R-I-Z-Z Show, your emails, Riz Show, 1057thepoint.com. Instant feedback through the 1057 The Point mobile app. Crab on Celebrities here in a moment. We've got uh, Sex Tom Fun Facts, Sex Toy of the Week. We'll play three and five, give away some fabulous prizes, including... Tickets for the sold-out Riz Show Live happening Saturday, courtesy of Yingling and Hat Launch. Yeah, it's a Riz Show Live week, guys. Gosh. We're almost there, a couple days away. So much stuff to do still. I got to, I mean, all of us do today. We have so much to get done. Yeah. We have things to do. Show. I know you're feeling a little under the weather. I am, but I'm rallying. You're rallying? Uh, a calm has, uh, I feel like I've, a calm has enveloped me. Good. Oh, good. Nice. Whereas I was very stressed for the past three or four weeks. Yep. Uh, and I feel like a calm has washed over me. Yeah. Where it's, you know what, guys? You just got to let it go. What's, whatever's going to be is going to be. Yep. Yeah, I that like happens this. to me as well, man. Every time I build a show or put a show together, you, you know, I, it's, it's prep and it's stress and stress. And then you hit a level of prep that you go, all right. It's going to happen. It's we'll happening. Be, we'll be fine. It's happening one way or another. We'll be fine. One way or another, people are going to pile on the pageant on Saturday. <laughs> We're all going to be there. You know, hopefully have a good time. Hey, I encourage. So doors are at seven, correct? If I'm not yeah. mistaken, doors are yes, at seven. Doors are at seven. I encourage everyone to get there at doors because the John Hughes experience will be playing as the doors are open. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Don't be late. Don't be late. You're going to want to see the whole the whole thing. Oh yeah. It's going to be a whole thing. I'm excited, man. I I feel good. I locked myself in my hotel room in Dayton. <laughs> On Saturday and got stuff done. Stuff okay. for the show. Stuff Good. that needed to get done. And I'm excited about it. Um, Locked down some, some some treats for the audience. Ooh, and we weren't sure we were going to get to go right. over. And okay. I'm feeling... G -double feeling good. good. Yep. As uh, I was leaving the uh, the station on Friday, I ran into Tim McKernan, our buddy from TMA, across the hallway. And uh, he goes, uh, oh, big uh, Richard Live coming up uh, next Saturday. I go, yeah. He goes, ah, it's, it's just your show, just, you know, on the stage. I go, no, it's no, not. No, it no, is not. not. That's not how it goes. You I'm like, we don't set him. up. Maybe that's how TMA does yeah. things. I think that's how they do it. Like, if they do a live show, it's just them basically, you know, their show. Yeah, TMA Live, they've done that before, like a hot shots. Right. We're not setting up a card table and you know, a couple stools. Yeah. I mean, this is mm -mm. costume changes. Costume changes, guys. Wow. I know. That's what you're most stressed about, right? Costume changes, set changes. <laughs> You guys will look good, though. I gotta like this not look like act. crap. This is like a three <laughs> act. Yeah, please. And each one has a dozen elements. Yeah, this is a three act thing. You know all we're doing right now? We're just upsetting. I'm stressing me out. No, I'm stressing myself saying, out. All we're doing is upsetting everyone that didn't get tickets. Well, good. Next Ooh. time, go if on. there is a next time, because I don't know. We're getting two thousand people know really this. excited. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know after this. Anyway. Um, 
this is, and I want your guys' opinion on this. Uh, as you know, now, you know, Rafe, you're now officially a radio person. You're a radio guy. You're in the industry. It's been almost a year, right? Yeah. I think your probationary period is over. So I've heard. I think you're now an, an official radio guy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right? Is it what is it? Ten months? What's the rule? I mean, I was here doing shows all of last year. Yeah, I think you're an official radio guy. But April is so my, you could weigh in. April's on my born on date. You, you could have weigh to, in on this. You have to get beat in though. Yes, yeah, so we'll do, <laughs> we'll right. do get that at Richard Live. Hey, Don't worry. I'm gonna get. <laughs> you heard it here first, Richard Live. I'm gonna be beat in live on stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything goes. They're gonna. Yes, enough. Um... <laughs> Oh. Now you're ready. Now you're ready. Now you're ready. Uh, now you're crying. Yeah, so, now guy out in San Diego. Guy out, morning, show, morning show guy out in San Diego. Okay, so he was uh, interviewing or was scheduled to interview a local volleyball player. I guess they have a big volleyball team out there in San Diego, the San Diego Mojo. So, he was set to interview a woman named Ronica Stone, who's a very popular player out there. They get, I guess the volleyball season starts out there in San Diego. She's a mojo star. Her name is Veronica Stone. Veronica Stone. Veronica. Oh. Not like Veronica Stone from. Veronica Morningstone. Or what was it? Veronica Corningstone. Corningstone, of course. So she walks, uh, she, she comes there on time to the radio station on time. Morning show guy greets her. She brings along her boyfriend. And her boyfriend is Jordan Love, who's the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Hmm. So he is there as support for his girlfriend, uh -huh. who was the subject of the interview. Now, you know the starting quarterback, rookie, I mean, he had a great rookie season last year, right? Huge. Jordan yeah. Love? Not a rookie, but yeah. Uh, well, first, first, year first, starter. first year starter. Yeah, he did great. He did great. She, The girlfriend is there to be interviewed. The boyfriend is out in the hallway. Yeah. Who is the starting quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Now, morning show guys like, do I like call? Like, do I like, hey, boyfriend? Well, yeah. Who was also that. very famous, probably more famous, not probably, way more famous <laughs> than local volleyball player. Do I call in boyfriend? What do you do? There's a, uh, are you asking? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I think there's a way to tactfully involve him and still make her the focus. Yeah. Because he said his initial instinct was to figure out how to get him on mm -hmm. without being disrespectful to her. Sure. Yeah. Right. Because it doesn't hurt to ask, and most likely Love's going to say, oh, no, it's cool, man. I'm going to stay out here. And then oh, like, okay, I She's ask. a professional athlete. You wouldn't ask at all? No, hell no. I wouldn't ask. I, would, if it, I wouldn't ask, like, hey, do you want to come on? I would just... Involve him. Involve him. Oh. Oh, okay. Really? I think so. Yeah, come on in. I, I don't know if I do that. Okay, so you're so you're interviewing Travis Kelsey. Mm hmm And Taylor Swift is in the next room. Right. She's just watching. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be respectful of that. It's his time. You, you serious? Yeah, I am serious. I've, I've had that before. I've had the, the interview where somebody else who's maybe more prominent to relationship... Like, they're also around, and it's just like, you want to be respectful of the person that you're there to interview. Even if they are dating a celebrity or somebody who's well-known, they're not there. This is a sports interview. Obviously, these are two pro yeah, athletes, a, so maybe a, that's a little different. Yeah, there's some morning show lifestyle chat. Yeah, no, I, I would just leave it singular. If she happened to be in the room, and, like, if she were vocal or she had a reaction that could be heard on mic, I would kind of follow her lead with that and go, okay, she she's wanting to be heard, maybe... Maybe there is something I can ask her, but no, I would leave it singularly to the person I'm there okay. to interview. Okay. You, would you somehow like? I mean, I would lightly make it fun. I wouldn't be a. I wouldn't make it disrespectful. I wouldn't make it not about you. Yeah, yeah, of it course. Like, I hey, would, like you guys are a power couple, two athletes. Like, I how would, do you make this work? This I would make it about cool. them and her. Not, I would. Tactfully. I wouldn't make anything about him. I wouldn't. I wouldn't ask. So how was it with the Packers? I, I wouldn't ask any football <laughs> questions. I'd, I'd be <laughs> like, hey, man, like. How is it like you know in the off season supporting her? Is this is this cool? You know, I would, just, I would just ask them about them, two athletes in a relationship where they're supporting each other in these. Uh, I would make it known endeavors. that he was in the hallway, hundred percent. 
even if he wasn't going to come on the air, I would make it known that your hey, your boyfriend Jordan Love, starting quarterback for the Packers, mm -hmm. is out in the hallway. Yeah, but you wouldn't invite him in. Well, let's see how she reacts to that. Mm. You can acknowledge it, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't be like, oh, no, let's get him in here because that's taken. I think it. I think it matters away. on what you're doing. <clears throat> the guy's not reporting for that. Volleyball Weekly. If it, if it was, if it was, if it was Volleyball Weekly or you know, like a Sports Illustrated cover story or something like. And then it's just zoomed in. It's because it's that there's the zoom. But he's just like a morning guy going, "Hey, yeah, morning I'm, show guy." I'm never invited him on. Never asked him in. But uh, you know, just took a selfie with him. Mm. I don't know. I don't know how I'd handle that. Yeah. I mean, you you make it casual. You make it fun, yeah. and you don't take anything from her. Yeah, we'll see the. You know, we'll see where the interview goes. Maybe it'll lean in that direction. Where we're gonna have him on. I don't know. I mean, Scott. it's part. It's part of the story. I bet. And, what, was he interviewing her about a very particular play that she made? He was interviewing her about the start of the volleyball season. So he, so he's, he's yeah, getting he's, he's getting talks a, about he's, the highlights, but he's then basically he gets into personal. Yeah, things. he's it's basically fine. getting a bio of an athlete. I bet that's the same. Like Tina and you have, have you guys ever done interviews where, like, on a podcast where sure. it's you or her as the focal point, but you're happen you happen to be there and like, what was that interaction like? Uh, yeah, that has happened. I'm trying to think of how it went down. I th I would say I include her if she's with me usually. I find a way to. Um, uh, I can't remember how it went the other way. You think Some she could keep her mouth shut if you're standing behind you? No. <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> no, she would. She would give the floor. Yeah, and there's been times that I've, like, earlier in her career, because, I mean, we're not... Depending on who you're talking to, we're kind of, you know, I don't think one is like crazily ahead in their career than the other. I'm a little, I've been doing a little longer than her and maybe, but she's like blown up a lot lately. So it's like, I, there's times that I've skipped things if I thought that was going to be an issue mm. so she could have the spotlight. I didn't want it. I didn't want to take that off of her. Mm. Interesting. Or I would be like, I would, I'd. I would just wait out in the waiting room. Like, I wouldn't be yeah. in the room or something like that. Hey, listen, cool the boyfriend to just wait out in the, in the waiting room and not make it about him. Right. Even though he could. He could. <laughs> mm -hmm. He could. All right, today is uh, February 26th. Back in the day, 41 years ago, 1983, Michael Jackson's Thriller hits number one, where it would stay for 37 weeks. Damn. 33 years ago, 1991, L. Cool J's Mama Said Knock You Out comes out. 1993, 31 years ago, Falling Down hits theaters. Great movie. That movie's incredible. Uh, 30 years ago, 1994, legendary stand-up comedian Bill Hicks dies at 32. I didn't realize he was only 32. Dang, yeah. yeah. He was young, Just, what about Alex Jones? Yeah. You see Alex <laughs> Jones came out and says, I, saw I am some, Bill Hicks. Yeah, yeah. And he uh, broke it. And then his, what did he go from Hicks into something else? And it was pretty ridiculous. Uh, 27 years ago, 1997, the classic Booty Call was released, starring Jamie Foxx and Tommy Davidson. And eight years ago, out of the Bob Saget thing, he really is with us. 2016 Fuller House, the revival of the series Full House premieres on Netflix. You telling me this yeah, picture? That was eight years ago. This picture is of a man not not yet 32. Yeah. What? Different time, man. <laughs> What? He looks Everybody older than man. Yeah. He also chain smoked his whole yeah. life. Yeah, this, and did a lot of drugs. You tell me, this Stevie Ray Vaughan looking cat right here. Bill yeah. Hicks? He's approaching 32. Yes. You tell me yeah, that 55-year-old is 32. Look at high schoolers in 1980, though, dude. The high schoolers in 1980 looked like they had two kids and worked at the factory. Look up Bill Hicks, Alex Jones. It's the damn, the damn near the same person. Yeah, that, oh. is, that, that is. That conspiracy is one of my favorites. If if Bill Hicks heard you comparing him to Alex I Jones, he's yeah. rolling over in his grave. It would be too wildly, too wildly different viewpoints. Sure, and that's the yin but and the But their connection is they're both from Texas. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's do Crab on Celebrities. All right, time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your Crab on Celebrities. And it's brought to you by Bright House Plumbing. Call the best flush the rest, brighthouseco.com, 636-600-0188. Eminem still uses a BlackBerry, you guys. Uh, back in 22, in January, there was an announcement that old BlackBerry phones will no longer work unless they use Android software. So I guess Eminem has downloaded that software, and uh, there's a photo that was posted on Instagram over the weekend of him hanging out with some other um, some rappers and... He's got his BlackBerry out, and I'm just... Did you guys have Blackberries? No, I yes. never. I never did I either. I did because uh, it was the I only thing that worked... I think a station issued BlackBerry once. It was the only thing that worked overseas. 
the yeah. only, it was What's the, only the fundamental that difference? That, that worked out. I've never had Remember one. The old trackball? Yeah, yeah, the trackball yeah. and just the keyboard. The email. Keyboard. But I mean, what do you think his reasoning for this is? Like, he, the, is it a security issue? Does he just want to have a damn phone and hey, not have privacy. photos on it or whatever? Maybe just that's the phone he's used to and he's Eminem. And Maybe it's because it has black in the title and he so desperately. <laughs> he's like, you know what? I will have That's the cred. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, guitarist Mick Mars says he's open to playing with Motley Crue again. Motley Crue released a statement last year saying that Mars was retiring from the road, but would still be a part of the band. And then, of course, all these lawsuits came forward. Lawsuits, and all of a sudden he's like, ah, ah. it's fine. So uh, now Mars says, if Motley wants me to write songs with them again, of course I would. But right now it's just me solo. I'm writing, and I'm not Motley. It's how I feel. My ideas, my kind of thing, kind of trying to reinvent myself and bring myself up to date. Some people can't separate professional and personal. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because he's doing lawsuits and all this kind of stuff doesn't mean that he's not, he, he doesn't like them. Oh, uh, I mean, they were trashing each other in the press. I understand that, but like, I think that's all business too. Mm. I think that's all business. And, and I think a lot of people have a real difficulty understanding that some people can separate business I and mean, personal. I the, mean, the things that we're saying, like, you know, Motley Crue doesn't really play their instruments. Um, you know, some real like behind maybe, maybe the scenes stuff. Yeah, maybe he's trying to damage the brand. So uh, who knows, ah, man? Just I'm just business. I'm just telling you, like I, that seems pretty damn personal to me. Personal I know it seems that way too. I mean, they were essentially like, you need to retire off the road because your health is I'm becoming just a problem. I'm just saying that you never know. You never know. You You're never right. know. Uh, Mick Mars' solo album, The Other Side of Mars, is out now. Uh, Stoke on Trent City Council in England have approved plans to erect a seven foot statue of the late Motorhead frontman Lemmy Kilmister in a neighborhood called Burslem. Uh, he was born there in 1945. This thing's going to be seven feet tall. There was a GoFundMe that was started, and the metalheads rose up and said, let's do it. And so now it's happening, okay. which is pretty cool. Uh, Tim Comerford of Rage Against the Machine says he doesn't know what the future holds for the band. You know, last month Brad Wilk announced that the band wouldn't be playing live again, and then Comerford Ford says, I don't get involved in it. He goes, I'm just the bass player. I wait for somebody to tell me what to do. Brad said what he said, and he's one step above me. He's got the number three spot. I'm just the low man on the totem pole. But he did say if the band wants to get back together, he'd be out there. Yeah, we talked heartbeat. about this a little on Friday. He did. Um, yeah, he's just hanging. He's riding his bike. Yeah. Nothing wait. says anti-establishment band like a clearly defined pecking order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. Well, yeah, you got the lead singer. Everyone's voice matters. Not yours, though. Yeah. You're yours the bassist. Oh. I'll let you know when we go on tour. Yeah, I'm sure it's, you know, <laughs> Zach, the lead singer, who, who it's his ultimate decision. Right. And then Tom Morello, then, you know, drummer, and then bike riding Brad. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Biker Brad. Hey, Biker Brad, you ready to tour? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so according to some not always reliable British tabloids. Oh, Tim, I'm sorry. Brad's the good yeah, Brad Brad's Will. The oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, ah, I thought I had it. it. I blew it. Sorry. Yeah, so, it. Taylor Swift allegedly has been banning Travis Kelsey from going to strip clubs after seeing him wear a t shirt from the Three Horse or the uh, Crazy Horse Three in Vegas after a game uh, with the Raiders earlier this year. Again, this is from the tabloids. This is probably not true at all, but it's making the headlines. Uh, she also wants him to FaceTime her instead of texting when they're apart because she secretly wants to know where he is and uh -huh. who he is Whip. with. <laughs> But check this out. She also allegedly gave him 500K to step up his wardrobe. She loves that he takes chances with his style choices, but some of his outfits have been a little suspect. Okay. So first of all, how do they know? Right. They don't. How do they know this? They don't. This is all made up. Let's yeah. say this is true. An inside source. Let's say this is true. A close source says. Uh, if you're dealing ta Taylor Swift. Right. And she goes, I don't want you going to a strip club. I go, Okay. Dating Taylor okay? Swift? Yeah, whatever you say, man. Whatever. whatever. Um, there's yeah. also... Oh, go ahead. Keep going. And then, you know, she gives him 500 grand for wardrobe. Yeah. It's not like he's poor. No. Yeah. That's why I don't believe he's got any his of this. own money. None of this is true. And she gave him 500,000 all-in-ones, which seems like a bad idea <laughs> if you don't want to go to the strip club. Exactly. I do have some audio here, though. There was an interview from 2016 that's resurfaced where Travis Kelsey actually played uh, Kiss, Mary Kill, and it was between... Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, and Katy Perry, and this is how that shook out. Okay. Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, Katy Perry. Kill Mary Kiss. Damn, that's <laughs> messed up. I don't want to kill any of them. <laughs> well, you um, know, um, it's just a game. Uh, just a game. Uh, it's going to be harder kill. to find real love, so this you got to play this game right so What is it, kill? Ariana is okay. kill, <laughs> okay. unfortunately. Love you, but you're gone. And then uh, Taylor Swift would be the kiss. Katy Perry Mary. would be the... Yeah. His affect is uh, 
lessened. Where's he from? Ohio. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Cool. All right. Well, <laughs> hey, uh, the Joker 2, which I'm very excited about, is going to be coming out soon. Uh, this is going to be a musical, which I'm not yeah. excited about that part of it, but I want to see how weird it is. Filet ado. Yes, exactly. Two hundred million dollars is how much this is going to cost. Dang. The old or the original Joker back. was sixty million. Oh my gosh, really? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't realize that was that expensive. So sixty million for the original Joker, two hundred million for this. People are saying with Lady Gaga joining the cast, obviously inflated the amount to have her on. I don't know how much she actually got paid, but I, I don't like that lot. it's going to be a musical. Why do we have to do this? Why? Why do we need a musical? I don't think it's going to be a musical in the sense you think it's a musical. What do you mean? It's going to be all uh, It's not going to be like dream. West Side Story. Yeah, it's in his mind. You know, like mm. like the first one was. But remember the first one? He's kind of like he's orchestrating. He's right. doing this kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I it's think be you, all in that. your mind you think a musical like, you know. I think this, like Mean yeah. Girls. The oh, new the one that new just one. came out. Uh, the Greatest Showman. Yeah. I think it's going to be some song. dark, twisted, maybe musical in his mind. Kind of thing. All right. I think it's going to be awesome. That's what I'm imagining. I hope it is. You still got to see Bo is Afraid, man. Yeah, I don't want to. <sighs> Strap in, brother. <laughs> we talk about Bo is Afraid every week on this show. It's interesting, though. It's interesting <laughs> enough. I'm, I'm curious to see what you... It's traumatizing. It is. How you react. You guys watch SNL this weekend with Shane Gillis? I did. I saw the uh, the opening monologue, and I watched a couple sketches. I thought it was good. Right on. Well, here's a, here's part one of his opening monologue. Um, you know, he was famously hired and fired from SNL in 2019, and uh, here's how that sounded on Saturday right. night. Most of you probably have no idea who I am. Uh, I was actually, I was fired from this show uh, a while ago, but if, you know, don't look that up, please. If you don't know who I am, please don't Google that. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. Uh, he then, you know, just moved on, not really addressing much. I have another clip here and of the monologue. Uh, Shane Gillis from Saturday. Every little boy is just their mom's gay best friend. There's literally zero difference. I was gay for my mom. She would pick me up from school. I'd hop in the van. I'd be like, girl, tell me about your day. I thought she was cool. I would listen to her music. I'd be like, bam, 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 bam. Let's go, girls. I would, I would dance for her. Just, she'd be like, look at my little dancer. At one point, Gillis said to the studio, it was so well lit that he could see everyone not enjoying his jokes <laughs> in the audience. Okay. And he did seem a Look, I don't have any material that can be on TV, all right? <laughs> I'm trying my best. Also, this place is extremely well lit. I can see everyone not enjoying it. <laughs> you know, just the most nervous I've ever been. Don't clap now. Shut up. There was one a band member you could see in the back just not She's laughing hilarious. at I know. I know. Yeah, they zoomed in on her. Yeah. On Twitter, <laughs> a lot of people. Yeah. A Did lot you of watch people. it live, Riz? She became the ire of. <laughs> Did I watch it live? Bros. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. So live. it was on because somebody had said that they were what they tuned in, and they were showing like an old SNL, not this one. No, the, I think they show an old SNL before before the news. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. I it sounded like he was doing fine to me when I watched it. So my it sounded thought fine to me. was. Did they pump in laughs? Did they sweeten the laughs? They had to have, after right? the live broadcast. Mm. You know what I mean? Like when because it, it goes live, live on the East Coast, and and uh, there's a drag on, yeah, there's yeah, a drag yeah. on the West Coast. I don't know. It sounded fine to me. Yeah. Sounded yeah. fine to me. I thought it was fine. You know, it was Love good. It. I watched the whole episode in my hotel room. I thought I was telling you guys there was a moment during the sketch called uh, the floor, mm -hmm. where he was paired up with Bo and Yang who was the Asian gay cast member that was cast the same time he was kicked off the show. And they introduced the characters, because it was like a game show sketch with Rob Lowe, and he, Bo and Yang looked down the barrel of the camera and kind of broke character and was like super thrilled to be here right now. And, and then Maybe that was back. his protest. I felt like that was his little like wink and a nod to America, like I'm not happy that I'm in this sketch, mm -hmm. I'm not happy that he's hosting, because mm -hmm. there's been a lot of stuff with him lately, of taking all his SNL posts down and right. stuff like that, so, I don't know, felt very pointed to me. The 30th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards aired Saturday on Netflix, giving out awards to the best individual and cast performances in film and television. We have the complete list, if you missed any of that, on our blog at 1057thepoint.com. Um, 
as I scroll, I need to say rest in peace to Kenneth Mitchell, who sadly passed away after a five-year battle with ALS. He was only 49 years old. This guy was on Star Trek Discovery. Uh, his family confirmed his death on Instagram, rem remembering him not only as a decorated actor, but also a dedicated family man. Uh, Amy Schumer has been diagnosed with Cushing syndrome. You know, this is interesting because she was on TV last week and all of us, well, Rafe and I noticed her face looked so poofy and I love Amy Schumer. Me too. And I, you know, I, I didn't know if something was going on. Um, and then she said having the internet chime in on her appearance lately is how she realized that something was going wrong. She looked like she had what they call moon face. Like when you take uh, it's prednisone, very yeah. So when you take prednisone, yeah, the steroid, steroids, you're swollen. Your face gets swollen, and they call it moon face. Your face gets very swollen. Well, it's very round. So I didn't know what Cushing syndrome was, but according to Mayo Clinic, it happens when the body has too much of the hormone cortisol, the stress hormone, uh, active for a long time. So having a round face, weight gain, weak muscles, uh, over time, that excess cortisol, it causes these symptoms, and it can lead to you know high blood pressure, diabetes, and even bone loss. And so Amy. Right talked pretty candidly about getting diagnosed with this. She said while she was out doing press on camera for her Hulu show, she was also hooked up to MRI machines for hours at a time, having her veins shut down from the amount of blood being drawn and thinking that she may not yeah, she, be around to see her son grow she's up. She's had a whole bunch of health health problems. She really has. She's had endometriosis. I can't even talk. Endometriosis. Um, so I wish her the best. I love Amy yeah. Schumer and don't want her to go anywhere. Uh, Justin says in the feedback, I, and I didn't see the end of SNL. I saw it. That Bowen and Shane Gill's hugged on camera. I didn't see that either. That's great. I mean, I think that's good. I I don't think, you know, ill will's never good. But I mean, it very, it felt like during the episode, it felt very purposeful. A lot of people were sharing the uh, the Norm McDonald return to SNL. Oh, when after yeah. he got fired. And uh, yeah, and so his his monologue. He starts talking. He goes, uh, you know, I was fired a year and a half ago, and they told me that I wasn't funny. Not funny enough to be here. And then now, a year and a half later, they're hiring me to host. So that either means that I'm funny or the show just sucks now. <laughs> he just <rips laughs> he like in goes in and makes fun of the show. Says, it doesn't mean I'm funny. It just means the show's not funny. Uh -huh. uh, that was, and of course, this last episode, the funniest sketch is the one that got cut for time. Like there's a, the Doug Limu Emu police commercial. I haven't seen that one yet. Like, come in and they shoot the guy and the, the, the Lemu shoots the dude. They come through the door and then they're like, put a plan a gun on him and all this stuff. And it was just like this crazy, like Liberty insurance commercial. And it was hysterical. And it's like one that got cut for time. Ah. Mm. I always wonder about that. Like how the funniest things are always the ones that don't subjective. make the broadcast. Right. And it's time for a list. Uh, you're not going to guess here though. I'm just going to throw a movie out at you. So um, see if we agree with this. So, as time has rolled on, certain jokes, plot details, and movies that we once loved don't really age that well. You Soul know? Man. There's tons of them. <laughs> and yeah. so ScreenCrush.com <laughs> has put together a list of what they think in chronological order, and they start off with a Ghostbusters. Soul Man, where C. Thomas Howell's in blackface the entire movie. <laughs> that didn't make the list. Well, it should have. <laughs> Even then, I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> what year did that come out? Never was that, that controversial yeah. back then? I don't know. It should have been. It was in the eighties, <laughs> but my <laughs> God, man, it was pretty egregious. Soul Man? That wasn't the eighties, was it? That was the nineties. Oh 90s. No, no, I think that was the eighties. They the would play on comedy. They Central would have not done it in the nineties. Eighty six. Are you sure? Oh wow, yeah. Holy cow. You said there's a Ghostbuster. Oh, I'm not even thinking about that, man. Uh, yeah. I, I thought I'm thinking of something else. Okay, Soul Man is not on this list. Okay. I think they're going for a different types of uh, cringe. So they say Ghostbusters is on here. They've done this in chronological order. And by the way, Soul Man, where he goes blackface, James Earl Jones is in that movie. I mean, look at that. <laughs> My God. <laughs> My it, God. I'm, you, you the internet be, of that. You don't even need a scene. You only need a still. <laughs> Just a still holy. from this movie. And oh, what, what a great, dude, what a great cast. So it's, it's C. Thomas Howell, <laughs> Ray Don Chong, James Earl Jones, Leslie Nielsen. All right. Well, it's not on this list. Julia Louis-Dreyfus is in it. Yeah, it was a star-studded uh, uh, stinker. Melora Hardin, who was uh, Jan from The Office. Wow. Ah, uh, oh, dude, Max Wright, who was uh, the dad, Willie Tanner on Elf, he was in it. What a great cast. Anyway. Man. Yeah, let's pull this trade okay, back Okay, so you said station. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters? Hmm. Yeah, the reason they said that it's a cringe is because the characters are tough to root for. They reference Bill Murray's, you know, curmudgeon character. Oh, um, God. Huh? 
What? And Bill Sigourney Murray's too Weaver much of a, a curmudgeon. As a ghost possessed eye candy. That's what they think. Uh, a lot of this is leaning for the misogyny in these movies, just oh, to God. let you know. Okay. Oh, boo boo so, on ghost So, go, so we don't out. agree? I don't agree. No, no, I don't, don't agree with that one. I don't no. agree. What about 16 candles? I'll be honest with you. I've never, I've never seen it. I've oh, never really? seen it either. It's, the Asian a, characters. Yes, a little... the racist caricature of yeah. the Asian exchange Long student is pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, also, the fact that there's some like, you know, Jake, the hot guy in the movie that Molly Ringwald's trying to get with, he hands off his intoxicated girlfriend to a minor. Um, as some sort of rite of passage to get her home, and he like has sex with her. So obviously that did not age well. There's either. a lot of that. Like think of Animal House, dude. Half of the movies that we grew oh, up on, yeah. some I mean, of Revenge of the drugged. Nerds is basically oh, sexual assault at the end. Right. So like, yes, there's some stuff in the '80s that is mm. very eyebrow raising. Sure. Forrest Gump is on this list. Oh, uh, why? Because Jenny gave him AIDS? N not because of AIDS. <laughs> it's because you know she's had an ab abusive hands of every man in her life except for Forrest. And, you know, she finally acquiesces to become the vessel of for his child, is how they describe she's it. She's getting with a mentally challenged person. Wait a second. <laughs> so what, 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 what's the... What's, what's the, the cringe what's the I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just relaying That's what part the, of the, the list story is. is that she... Yes, everybody abused her, and then the one person who loved her, you know, obviously she That's ends a good up thing, with. right? Well, yeah, I thought Apparently that was uplifting. not. Oh, that's misogyny. What do we I forgot. Want? Like, just rainbows in every movie? Like, no, that's you can't part feel of the story. Now. You're not allowed to. Well, speaking of rainbows, Tragic. guys, Braveheart is on the list from 1995. Uh, there's a couple of historic elements to this that make it Mel Gibson's movie cringeworthy for the fact that kilts were not existing in the time period of which they are. Okay, so historical yeah, accuracy. Historical accuracy. accuracy. Fine. Um, Take some liberties. The uh, the blue face paint went out of style centuries earlier, so that, again, is something... Okay, so, so they're just saying historic accuracy for that. Right. Okay. Um, and they said it makes <laughs> it makes a historical biopic more like an excuse for a bunch of guys to dress up like uh, ruffians and pretend to stab each other. Hell of a movie, said, though. Wait, that, so they're, they're <laughs> nitpicking... Huh? They're nitpicking the... <laughs> The uh, makeup not being of the time period, right. yeah. as if we're gonna watch it now and go, oh, how cringy oh that these that's that I mean. these Scots no are way. wearing blue. Like, are we not aware we're watching after. a movie? Yeah, and there's no <laughs> way William Wallace would ever do an homage to something from the <laughs> past, you know, and do it so at that point. Silly. Uh, they may take our lives, but they'll never take our cringe. Am I right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> also on this list, American Beauty, obviously, just a total mess. We had uh, is it Kevin, um, just Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey, but also <laughs> it's a movie about Spacey. mean people. Littering, plastic bag in the wind. <gasps> there's oh, littering. Yeah. littering. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, sex with a minor. There's all sorts of stuff that's yeah, just. That's that's disgusting. Up. Yeah, a pl plastic bags, guys. Uh, plastic bags. Plastic the bags. The most beautiful just thing he's ever seen, there. my Boil ass. <laughs> right? um, is that the plastic bag just blown on the way? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's filming it. And he films it. Uh, it's beautiful. Do you want to see the most beautiful thing I've ever seen? Yeah. It's this garbage God. that's plastic in a little bags. tornado on Main Street. I see things that people don't see. <laughs> American Pie made the list. How can that be honest? Which, There's it, no cringe there. No, I mean, the whole thing is a cringe. He's, he's well, doing a pie. That's the well, point. That. I'm the sure they're talking about the, the webcam scene. Yes. Where There's quite a few. He's things. doing, you know, uh, Nadia. Hot Nadia. Naked in the room. And, like, the guys from Blink-182 are watching. Yeah. Everybody's watching in the cameras. No, oh, I don't remember. I, I only remember the pie. You don't remember the scene where he turns on the webcam? I really only saw that once, and that was back then. I remember the pie, and I remember the uh, one time at band camp. Right? That's yeah. that movie, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, hate to tell you this, Boondock Saints made the list. No! <laughs> Get the, the greatest fuck out of movie of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mine away now. It's tiresome, excessively violent. Uh, barely has a plot to support its numerous and bloody action sequences. The movie yes. is, yes. you know, nothing yeah. in it that is worth everything. Wait. Everything you just said is what they wrote on the DVD box. Like, yeah. we, and we it all know that. Watch we it. all yeah. know that yes. going Get in. The nothing out. was sold to us we didn't want to buy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Love Actually has made this oh, list. Oh, yes, I agree. And we agree. That movie sucks. Let's, Which well, what is Love it? Actually. Love Actually. We all agree with that. What is that one about? Um, Blindside made this list, especially with all of the uh, allegations and the lawsuits lately with Michael Orr. Obviously, it's about a white family taking in a, a black young man and made them look like they were in the best light ever and then come to realize things have come out afterwards of the Tui family. So uh, that have is Have they settled worthy. that because... Um, I've... But does that make the movie, like the plot of the movie stuff, is it cringe or is it still? I right? remember I, a good message. Yeah, I don't know. I, 
I liked that movie like when it came out, but then obviously as time goes on, you just start thinking differently. You know? Why? Yeah, yeah that's all art and culture. Yeah. yeah, you just evolve with it, I guess. I don't know that. I, I loved it. I love that Michael Orr was taken in by the Taco Bell family down in wherever the hell they lived. Um, and had opportunity, but then you start realizing from his that that movie was written from the Tui point of view instead of yeah, the but Michael. He signed Orr point off of on view. it. That's mm-hmm. true. This whole lawsuit thing that's going on now, where he says it's not true. It and, does yeah. seem strange. It's a whole strange thing. Yeah. He and said he didn't get paid, and the family was like, "No, you got paid." Guy went on to play in the NFL, right? Yeah. I mean, it was like true. I mean, had a pretty he, storied career. Right. Okay. And it, okay. Anyway, that's your crap on celebrities. There's a full list of more. I'll tell you a movie that should be on here. Soul Man. I knew. We are talking no, about dude, oh, Soul Man. A recent movie <laughs> I watched. I watched it over the weekend, and man, it was Bodies, Bodies, Bodies with Pete Davidson. And it felt like a two hour. I couldn't tell if it was old. Somebody made. It was the entire movie was designed around making fun of Gen Z. Mm-hmm. Or they thought Gen Z would like it, but it was. Every it was so one note. Every joke was just like about Gen Z being soft. You know what I mean? Like it was just like a murder mystery type thing where they're locked in a cab and it's your typical like lights go out, someone's dead, who's the killer? But everything was like oh, that was recent. Yeah, it was recent, and every single thing in it was like oh my god, I'm, I have to take my anxiety medication. Oh my god, I can't. T- I talked to my therapist about this. I have PTSD from being your best friend. It just felt like it was. Uh, Two hours of, like, barely any plot. Like, you figured out what was going on within the first 15 minutes. And it was just, like, I couldn't tell if it was, like, an older person wrote it trying to make fun of Gen Z. Yeah, yeah. Or if Hollywood executives did a word cloud of things Gen Z like and tried to jam it all in one movie. But it was mm. it That's was how I feel awful. the latest Bill Burr movie was. It was just one, this one-dimensional, like, yeah. let's, let's do this old guy curmudge and make fun of... Uh, I've seen that generations. Yet. Oh, dude, it's so boring. Oh yeah, it's on Netflix. In six minutes, you go, okay, I've seen it. <laughs> I, I got. You it. just Thank watch you. the trail and go, I've seen it. Yep. Okay, makes sense. Celebrity celebrating a birthday today: Taylor Dooley, that's Lava Girl and Shark Boy and Lava Girl. She's thirty-one. Nate Roos, is it Roos? R U E S S. Oh, from Fun. From Fun, the singer from Fun and Format. Uh, he's 42. Corinne Bailey Ray, the British singer who uh, does uh, Put Your Records On, is 45. Erica Badu is 53. Mark DeCascos. Oh, uh, DeCascos. He's uh, DeCascos. the chairman from uh, Iron Iron Chef. Iron Chef America. He's 60. And Michael Freegan Bolton. Oh. I am a huge Michael Bolton fan, and he's 71 years old. Michael Bolton, happy birthday, buddy. Yeah. Uh, today's porno birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet, is Krista Lane. And today's birthday girl has been in 192 fine films, including, and I do windows, too. Wow. Uh, at the Pornies, the best little whorehouse in Hong Kong. She was in The Bitches of Westwood, Captain Hooker and Peter Porn, The Devil in Miss Jones 4, Dirty Harriet, Jane Bond meets Thunderballs. <laughs> she was in a movie called Talk Dirty to Me One More Time too. Taste of Tiffany, and who can forget a role in 1986's In Search of the Golden Bone. Crystal Lane is 65 years old. That's your porno birthday. Those are crappy birthdays, and that was your crap on celebrities. All right, we will take a break. We'll come back with your sexy Tom fun facts. And to be discussed... Does size matter? The age-old penis debate finally settled in groundbreaking study. 7.53. Traffic and weather. It's the race show presented by the Fast Lane. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. Left lane blocked due to a stall vehicle 270 southbound near St. Charles Rock Road. Your point forecast, breezy and near record high of 78 today. Right now it's 50 at the point studio. Hey, it's Blue October at Point Fest. Hello, hello. All right. We, Sorry, I had to do that. No, that's all right. You do whatever you need. We're the back. The next 10 minutes are all about you. Hey, Jeff's wife. I just want to say hi, Jeff's wife. Hi, Jeff's daughter. I love y'all. So, okay, first and foremost, um, we were talking to uh, to Will just a second ago. To you Will, were, you my were boy. Inter- introduced me to Will. Yeah. I think one of the things that has become so apparent to me over time in meeting bands and talking to bands is that word, chemistry. 
and yeah. how absolutely positively crucial that that is. And you can probably even like someone personally, but maybe not have that same musical connection. And it's got to be, it's got to be all of that. It's, it's got to be all that. Ever. Yeah, you 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 vibe with somebody. You can vibe with anybody, you know what I'm saying? But when you get musically, like the other night, take for instance, we played a show last night, and just backstage after the show, I was listening to some some cool Miles Davis jazz, right? Mm -hmm. And then I went to Bill Evans jazz, and he sat down with me, and for 30 minutes, we just started discussing how piano and, and jazz and, and- By better health. Now, we all wish we had more time in our day. Just give me another hour. What would you do with that hour? What's important to you? You should be important to you. Now, therapy can help you find what matters to you. So you could do more of it. Maybe just taking care of yourself. You know, somebody who's benefited from therapy, talking to someone can help you find the best version of yourself. And it doesn't matter if you've suffered, you know, something traumatic in your life or you just, you know, just want to chat with a third party. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and on your schedule. And it couldn't be easier, folks. Go to betterhelp.com slash Riz. You fill out a questionnaire. It's really quick. And you get matched with a licensed therapist. If you're not happy with who you're matched with, that's fine. It's not a big deal. You could switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Riz today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash Riz. Give online therapy a try at BetterHelp.com slash Riz and get on your way to being your best self. It is a very, very big day in the land of uh, Red Hot Chili Pepper fans everywhere, and I am so unbelievably honored to be joined today by Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Flea, St. Louis is saying hello to you. I love St. Louis, and I fondly miss the raucous nights, at Mississippi nights that we used to have over there. And um, hello to everybody, love to one and all. Man, it's it's really great to hear your voice, but also, too, it's wonderful to have a new Red Hot Chili Peppers album that is out today, and John Frusciante back in the Chili Peppers. Flea, can you kind of talk to us a little bit about how he got back into the, to the fold with you guys? And I know that you guys had maintained a friendship even when he wasn't in the band. Were, you know, were you guys still jamming and playing together when he, you know, when he wasn't a Chili Pepper? You know, we occasionally jammed, um, and we always were friends, and we'd get together and talk. And, um, you know, it, it was difficult, too, because he left, and, you know, and we got someone else to replace him who was his friend. And it's sort of like, you know, when you break up with a girlfriend, and then you start dating their friend or something. You know, it's like being in a band with someone is a very emotional and, you know, close experience. So um, it, it was you know, our relationship has always been intense. Um, but, I, you know, I remember there was, I think there's a lot of things that led up to him coming back all the way around. But Wheels but need new tires? Who says you have to choose? You don't get your name in the books right now over at r and Tire Express. Everybody needs a little r and and you can get it now. rnrmidwest.com. That is the website. They got four area locations to make it easy, to make sure that you're driving on the tires that you need to keep you safe day in, day out, keep your kids safe on the way to school, all that. Experience the R&R &R service, and you will never buy tires the same way again. You can even pay off early for additional savings. Now, I made the mistake when I was young. I replaced tires. I put them on a, uh, first of all, I waited too long. That was dangerous. Secondly, put them on a credit card. But don't use a credit card. You're still making a payment. The big difference is r, &R is going to service, repair, and even replace a tire at no cost while on payments. So if you run over a nail and the tire needs to be replaced, you think your credit card company is going to show up and do that for you? I think not. Again, experience that r, &R service, and you will never buy tires the same way again. You can pay more than the minimum payment, get it, off paid, uh, get it paid off quicker, and save money. You can pay weekly or bi-weekly. Pay-as-you-go programs that fit your budget. Again, four area locations. Everybody needs a little R&R. &R. Get over to R&R &R Tire Express today or uh, call them, uh, text them, do whatever. Get all the info on the website, rnrmidwest.com. Your chair at least stops. Mine just steadily like moves. So, uh, so I, could, I could not be facing you by the time this interview is over. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, so uh, here we are, uh, Enterprise Center, gigantic sold-out show with 21 pilots tonight. Uh, Josh, it's really great to see you again, man. Yeah, great to see you too. So uh, first things first, so we did this uh, promotion a little bit earlier where uh, a bunch of our winners asked you guys questions. Yeah. And first of all, the questions from the listeners were amazing. Fantastic. I mean, they were really great, really well thought out. But also what I really appreciated, man, is that you and Tyler, like, took the time to really answer the questions. Like it wasn't just like a little like goofball, smart ass answer and then move on. You guys really took the time and you could tell that everybody appreciated. I think it just shows the kind of guys that you guys really are. Mm. You know what I mean? That you genuinely appreciate these fans and it's not just a lip service situation. Yeah, I think, uh, it, well that was really cool, that format by the way. We, I think we've, we've done a few like that but it's, it's uh, a little bit less common to kind of have people in a room, um, people who you know have invested and, and actually have really cool questions to ask. And I think um, over the years of doing interviews, and you know we've talked to you a bunch, and I think it's it becomes easier for us to kind of like be able to pick out the legitimacy of where somebody's coming from with mm -hmm. asking a question, and then you kind of can begin to choose where you put in, uh, you know, how, how deep do I want to go with this sure. answer? Or how, how surface level do I want to go? And I feel like, I mean, even you've been always invested and, and super cool uh, and uh, have questions that, that make sense and, and that I think a lot of people probably want to know. And also being fans of music, when, you know, we'll look up interviews of other artists and sometimes interviews of ourselves <laughs> and think like, hey, is that, was that good? Was that adequate? Did, how do we come off? Um, and you really kind of learn a lot through that. So it was cool. I think, um, yeah, that, that dynamic earlier was really special. Well, and one of the things that we learned a little bit earlier was that this interview situation is, and I'm going to say this nicely, probably less than ideal for you. You don't love being the guy getting interviewed. Is that <laughs> is that true? Is this, you know what I mean? And it's you and I, and I know that yeah. we have interviewed each other a few times, so, you, but I mean, it honestly sometimes, are you uncomfortable with it? Do you not mm. love doing it? It's a good question. Um, here's how I'll answer it is, um, it has nothing to do with, with the actual process of interviewing. I've kind of grown up and been in and out of anxiety and had like... St. Louis City SC News from our friends over at Schnooks. Now, the St. Louis City Player Pal Sweepstakes by Schnooks Rewards is back. Now, it was such a hit last season, Schnooks brought it back for 2024. Player Pals are the kids who walk out onto the pitch with the starting lineups before each game. And your kid, your little Thatcher, has a chance to be one. Your little Thatcher or Thatch, Thatch, Thatcherette. Uh, all you have to do is be a uh, Schnooks Awards member. Just download the app if you haven't yet, and you'll see the sweepstakes right there on the homepage, and you just click to enter. The sweepstakes is open now through March 5th. Now, there'll be 30 winners for three possible matches. Winners will win a player pal spot for their 7- to 11-year-old kid, plus a player pal spot for a friend or sibling who's also 7 to 11. With Schnooks Awards, you'll never walk alone, and neither will St. Louis City SC with the Schnooks Rewards Player Pals. Enter to win the STL City SC Player Pal Sweepstakes today in the Schnooks Rewards app. Come on, City. All right, backstage at uh, our big, gigantic ho ho show with Angels and Airwaves. Mr. Tom DeLong, how are you, man? It's great I to see you. I am good, and I just realized you have a kick ass camera right there. This is like IMAX level shit you're doing. We, we try not to mess around, Tom. You don't fuck around. This is like real interview. This but is like. The bad the bad part is, though, with that fancy camera, it really pinpoints the ugliness. Boogers and like. I mean, anything, man. Like crazy yeah, hairs, anything. anything. It really blows it out you of the You know what's portion. funny about that? I was just walking down the stairs. And Alon, my drummer, goes, wait a second, I had one, I was like, one. It's the Riz Show presented by the Fast Flame. God, I love this kind of art. And I don't have to go to a museum to see it. Um, there is a pilot that toiled for six hours to draw a penis with the word Sia in the sky. Well, that is pretty <laughs> awesome. 
Uh, the art was created by a pilot flying a Diamond DA-42 plane and spotted by Flight Radar 24, which is an online flight tracking service. Mm -hmm. Now, according to Flight Radar 24, the plane took off at 8.47 p.m. on Saturday night and landed at 2.47 a.m. Sunday at the Bell Fountain Regional Airport in Ohio. So if you watch the flight tracker, it is a dong and the, the, the whole thing. Did you see that when it snowed last week or two weeks ago, somebody took a picture from the top of the arch and somebody had walked a big old dong? Oh, really? Yeah. I love that. <laughs> walked a dong? Walked a dong. Walked a dong into the arch grounds. And a couple of them, actually. There was a big old dong and then there were a couple of little baby dongs down. I love you know? that. In the arch grounds. Art is everywhere, guys. It really is. Mm -hmm. Art is everywhere. <laughs> no, this guy drew like a giant shit, like flew a giant shaft and the, and the balls and everything. Right. <laughs> Did you do that as a kid growing up? You'd draw a penis on, like, your best friend's car window? Cause my, of course. Yeah, I mean, that's all we did in high school. Of course. By law, you're supposed to, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, based on the, uh, <laughs> the the public information available on this website, it looks like the plane might belong to Midwest Corporate Air Inc., which is a flight school out of Ohio. Uh, give this man his license. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's earned it already. But he's earned it. Or it was an instructor. I don't Clearly, know. he's ready. Yeah, he's ready. <laughs> All right, let's uh, do sex time fun facts. And it's sponsored by... Well, you're not going to believe it. But it's sponsored by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet. Love you, Patricia's. Um... Man, the numbers here are nuts. Have you seen uh, Have you seen Who the F Did I Marry Yet? Mm -mm. It's it's a series of 50 TikTok videos that's over eight hours long, and people are obsessed with it. Obsessed. Mm. It's called Who the F Did I Marry? Uh, last I checked, it's got almost 200 million combined views. Wow. So it's a woman in Atlanta who goes by Risa Tisa. Uh, she talks about how she met a guy in 2020, fell in love, eventually married him, and found out he's a pathological liar. Nothing he had told her about himself is true. Here's the, here's a little bit from the first episode. A 200 million views. Who the f did I marry? I'm going to create this playlist series, and I'm going to tell the story of how I met dated, married, and divorced, a real pathological liar. This is my introduction slash disclaimer video. First and foremost, I'm gonna be truthful, even if it makes me look bad. I'm gonna be honest, but I'm also not gonna be disrespectful to anyone that was involved. None of this is funny, but in order to get through it, I have to laugh. If I cry, I cry. I'm human, I'm a woman. This was traumatic. Yeah, it's actually worth the watch. It's. I watch a little bit of it. Yeah. And this guy lied about everything, his whole life, to her. That's and, wild. And they got married, and it's her kind of going through everything. They met, so though, who the, the after pan marry? pandemic, right? Like they got 2020. 2020. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, you ever met somebody that you know is a path, or, or that you learn is a pathological? And, and yes, I mean, and yes. I mean pathological. Uh, my wife's uh, best friend was dating a pathological liar. Everything about this dude was... Shady. Yeah, and once wow. you once you find it and you see it, I mean everything, everything that's said, you have to go. Oh man, you got to sit there and decode everything that's done. Also, my best friend was about to marry a pathological liar that uh -huh. completely lied about her entire life. Whew. He wind up dodging a bullet, and they, that's the destination wedding I went to. No way, man. Man, if this destination wedding that you're going to doesn't work out, you're the curse, brother. Mm -hmm. I'm not the curse. If you go to the Dominican and this wedding falls apart. <laughs> it's on you. It's on you. First off, the wedding that fell apart that I was at was in Jamaica, a uh, different place. So, uh, oh, good yeah. point. Good point. Excuse us. Okay. Yep. Okay, man. In this particular situation, well, my best friend, the woman he was about to marry, thank God, did not. Uh, was lying to him about employment. So they lived in Manhattan. Oh, that's right. They lived in Manhattan. Uh, her parents had passed away under mysterious circumstances. Okay. That's true. Um, 
they would go to work together, like as far as like leave at the same time. She and and he would get on a subway train. He would get off and kiss her goodbye, and she bless you. And she uh, was apparently three or four stops down the line. But instead of going to work, she would just get off at the next stop, get back on the subway, going the other way, and go home. Jeez, the old well, round trip. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's a huge lie. But but was she a pathological liar? I mean that's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, but pathological it means like um, everything. No, they just have like this. Yeah, it's it's like this compulsive yeah. need or desire. Almost like it's a, when you see it in action, it almost looks like the person is addicted. It's a lying. So it's kind yeah, of what and, it is. and isn't even thinking it through. They're not. I'm not. I don't remember this person. It's not even. They're not even lies that necessarily benefit the person. They're, They're just, just like lies. the most ridiculous things. Yeah. You go, why? There's no. Why would you lie about this? Lie about no, what they had for breakfast. Yeah, just like little things. Everything. Hey, no it Maybe seemed like every like other like thing that. you had to you had to like decode and decipher like what is real and and was this just another one of your moments? It's like an addiction. Yeah, or that's what it looked like. Yeah, or it's a compulsion or something. Yeah, it is. It and is and for it sure. was and that that's that's pathologically lying. Hmm. And when you run into one of those people, you just go, oh my gosh. You, you gotta. I mean, nothing. Uh, like, I worst. wonder when they get in too deep. You know what I'm saying? Like, where does it start? They don't. I, no, but they do. I feel like that's where the compulsion comes from because they start, oh, right, right. and then they start telling a story, and then to make that story keep adding up, then they keep adding on lies, and then it's like twists and turns, and it's crazy. And they can't keep. There's no way. Right. They have the capacity to keep track of it all. Or how like, exhausting that would be to keep track. Right. It just gets wild, and and the worst thing is you can see them lying to themselves. Mm. You know, like they believe it. They right. they buy into. All I of had it. eggs Benedict for breakfast. Like I saw you eat a bowl of cornflakes. Right. Nah. You really they'll do. argue with it. <laughs> and they'll argue. <laughs> they'll argue with yeah. Nah. It was eggs. It's the I worst. Think it was a bowl of eggs. Oh, I was. I ate cornflakes after the eggs Benedict. Like, yeah, but I was saw, I was with you all of breakfast. I. The, there are people like that. I wonder it's if just, they're also sociopaths then. Sometimes. I don't know. It, but, but I mean, it's a disorder. When, when you, they lie so much, they actually believe their own lies. That's, yeah. that's what I mean, dude. And, that's, and, that's wild. And I know, I know so, I'm, I've, okay, I've, I've had experience with a, a real pathological liar. Like it looked like a disorder. And everyone that came into this person's orbit eventually just goes, oh, okay, I see what's happening here. And then I've seen also and had experience with, with people that. Say big lies and do the thing like your 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 friends gal did, and like they have to buy into it so much so they can sleep at night. And I think that's socio that right. that's a sociopath. That's not a pathological liar. That's somebody that's lying to benefit themselves, and they have to tell themselves that they did it for a good reason mm. or or that they didn't do it so they can sleep at night. Well, Scott goes around saying he's got a twelve inch dong. That was, that's so right. he can sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Wait, and I how do you know him. he's lying? No, I know. I'm I know. Serious. I'm just, I was gonna say, I hope he's because he said he was serious. That's how you know he's not lying. <laughs> you know I'm not I'm lying. serious. And, uh, yeah, I there's ways to hide bulges, and I figured it out. <laughs> wow. Yes. For those of us, for those of us with daughters, um, I, I, I guess <laughs> teaching or tell you know having a talk with your daughter about how to speak to men. Have you ever had a discussion like that with your with your mom? No. I don't know how I put this. Like, okay, think about teens on the phone today versus back in the 1950s. Okay. This right here is from 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 public TV back in 1957. It's a mom talking to her daughter about when boys are going to start to call the house. The this best is, years. This is so old school. Now listen to this again. This is from 1957. Listen to this mom talk to this daughter. I know how it is. Before long, you'll be able to talk like the wind with any boy who calls you up. Now, believe me, you will. Right now, while you're becoming an adult, you know. The thing to do if you're worried about this phone business is to try to think of a way of getting the better of it. Oh, what sort of way? Well, why don't you pretend that uh, whoever calls you is Tom? Have the feeling that you're talking to your brother. I don't think that would work. I just run out of words again. Oh, well, it may not work, but there's no harm in trying, is there? Nobody's going to call me up anyway. Oh, Judy. Aww. Yes, they will. <laughs> she, Come girl. On. Pathological liar. I'm going to run out of words. Something none you of us are saying these words, days. <laughs> no, I never had a conversation like that. I mean, if anything, the conversation Lauren, boys was... boys are going to start calling the house. Yeah. Oh, and they did. I love talking on the phone. Well, now you have to have, you know, the talk with your, your kids about... You know, the apps. Sure. And social media. Yeah. My mom did have that talk with me about, because my friend Megs and I used to get on the chats. 
and this is when the internet was like the true wild west yeah. and it was dial up and you acted like you were 35 when you were 16 and you know you'd go in there and it was like oh AOL yeah well no it was chat rooms like yeah. actual you know niche chat rooms and we would right. go into the dirty ones and we'd be like see what was going on in yeah. there and my mom's like you can't be doing this you can't be on the apps <laughs> talking dirty you with can't be in the adults. chat rooms <laughs> yeah yeah that's a rabbit hole that we didn't have to worry about no not back in the you know I mean, we did we were on the cusp we were yeah. straddling the line did you ever back i want to know if this was just my hometown Girls would call my house and like pretend to be girls from other towns that like what? had a crush um, on me. Did you ever do that? Maybe we used to do pranks like that. This guy, I don't huh? know if that's humble wow. brag. <laughs> humble brag was. Yeah. I feel like they were trying to make fun of me. Impressive. It didn't feel like a. I would be like, I girls would call up and like be like, "This is uh, my name's Victoria. I'm from Pinckneyville," and I'd be like, "Okay, what's up?" And she's like, "Nothing. I think you're cute, and I want to know." I was like, they were. I couldn't tell what was going. on, What the point of it was. They wanted to talk to you, but they didn't want to talk to you as themselves, I bet. They was wanted that to it? Make, Character. Yeah, probably. It was like making up nervous. an alter ego. Oh, I just assumed it was like a slumber party prank, like let's call some boys. And Turns out it was Chad from Taylorville. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, guess what? Chad from What's Taylorville, up, Chad? huh? <laughs> Chad? Taylorville. Uh, Be yourself, Taylorville, Chad. Illinois. <laughs> Is there a Taylorville? I didn't know if that was probably. the thing. Yeah, man. Yeah, Taylorville. Did you, you did that? Uh, I don't know if I did specifically that, but yeah, we would. I would always act like somebody's mom. Okay. I would call and be like, you know, I would act older, try to, and it, we failed miserably at the prank call. Back yeah, I mean, it was clearly a prank call. Like halfway through, I'm like, who is this? What is the point of this? Mm. You know, but oh, it was like, I didn't know if that was just like a thing girls yeah. did. Because it wasn't like, it wasn't too mean spirited. I was a master. Were you? No, I liked, prank, I did like jerky prank, boy, caller, prank dude. calls. Yeah. You could still do a good prank call dude, in your yeah. 40s. Listen, I, uh, I called my friends. <clears throat> Johnny Venus had, uh, his sister had a Barbie phone that had a voice changer on it. And uh, I improved a, uh, a call to a friend. This is a good, this is a dude that we ate lunch with every single day. Love this guy. Called him. I convinced this guy that he won a uh, golden key from a Chevrolet, you know, the Camaros <laughs> over in Crestwood Plaza. You know, you like enter to win a Camaro or something. Okay. I convinced him that he won a, Cam uh, a key. And he had to come down to Sears to listen to a uh, a two hour <laughs> a two, a two, a, a two hour thing, and at the end of that, he would get his golden key. Yeah. And one in five, one of these five keys is going to unlock that Camaro. Now, if he doesn't get the Camaro, he's, he's there's cash prizes or TVs. I mean, I did this whole thing. I had him on the phone for 20 wow. minutes, and I made him answer questions. I was like, "You fit the quota perfectly," because I at the time I was doing like marketing research, you know, so I like kind of knew like the quota spiel. And I was like, "You won." Like, you won one of the golden keys. You got to come on down here Thursday, uh, 4 p.m., Sears. And I gave him directions and everything. Yeah. Well, he went. Ah, poor guy. Uh, <laughs> you won. It's okay. Oh. He smashed pretzels over my head the next day. And we Any Ann's pretzels? Uh, no, he had a, like a, <laughs> we came into class the next morning. And and uh, he was in front of me. And first hour, I still remember this. And I, I leaned over to John. I go, watch this, watch this. <laughs> I go, man. I got a call last night about uh, about going to this thing. I almost won a golden key, but they had already filled the the person sixteen to nineteen quota. Somebody, I guess, won it before. And yeah. and dude, he slowly turns around and goes, "It was me. I won the golden key." I go, "You gotta be kidding me!" <laughs> he goes, "I went down. I couldn't find. I couldn't find where they're doing the seminar. I couldn't find it, man. I missed oh, out." That's and so good. We started cracking up, and mm. then he realized the joke was on him, and the pretzels uh, were on me. Well. Damn. It was awesome. That's beautiful. He actually made the trek. He went. <laughs> actually, went. That oh, is for Camaro. Sorry, he went to God. Did you guys ever I'd make the trek for Camaro? <laughs> Do you talk on the phone a lot to girls, like growing up, like your girlfriends and whatnot? Uh, I remember my first girlfriend, Amanda Rivera, who uh, was thrust upon me at, in sixth grade. Well, everybody was kind of hooking up, sure. like not. I mean, not like, like hooking date, up, like but like going out. Here's your girlfriend. Yeah. You know, Amanda likes you. She wants to be your girlfriend. And everybody else had a girlfriend. I'm like, okay. And then it was. I remember the day it happened. Yeah. I was warned that Amanda was going to call you. Oh, my gosh. You're going Amanda out Amanda was going to call you that night. And I was so nervous. And I didn't know what to, I didn't know what to say. Oh. I hated it. So cute. I hated it. <laughs> you used to fall asleep on the phone, like on a Saturday night. Like, oh, we're going to talk to you like 3 in the morning. And my then you fall asleep. My high school girlfriend was like, don't hang up. I just want to hear you. I know. I, I just want to hear you game. breathing. I what a bunch of freaks. <laughs> I didn't have my own line. Oh, I didn't yeah. have my own line. You know, they were listening. Get off the phone. All right. <laughs> I didn't have any privacy.
Our phone was like on the wall in the living room, which was the room everyone was in because it was a very like. You try to go around the corner into the kitchen and like talk. You know what I mean? Like, like I didn't have a phone in my room either. My friend, my best friend, had a phone in his room, and that was dope. That's when we were like, his parents didn't care. Girls could call at like one in the morning, mm. and they wouldn't like. They they pick up sometimes, but they wouldn't like come in there and tell us to get off the phone or like that would never fly at my house. Yeah, man, can you imagine? Never. Can you imagine being in high school and the phone rings at one a.m. and it's somebody calling for you? Oh, and it's every phone in the house is ringing, not yeah. just like yeah. That's your what cell I mean, phone. like the whole house. Yeah. Like, if my uh, phone rang after nine p.m., my mom would get pissed. Oh yeah. My phone. The phone's. Who was my, calling after nine o'clock? My childhood. I don't know. Yeah, my childhood house was really small, and uh, and the the phones in there were really loud, like louder than a current alarm would be. <clears throat> so it would be like setting off an alarm, a burglar alarm. Right. Anytime the phone. You couldn't deafen it either. You know, it was like that. Those ha those rotary phones only had one level, and it was loud as hell. Yeah, yeah. we had a rotary mm -hmm. one on the downstairs wall, and uh, it was a split level. And then on the upstairs, we had one in the kitchen that was loud, like the di like the, oh, yeah. the like the nineties digital was beep. It was like, bah, 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 bah. There was an actual <laughs> bell inside the phone yeah. that like, and a thing hit it, like inside the phone, and there was you know when a gazillion decibels. The occasion oh, yeah. hear it from next door. The occasional uh, friend calling it like ten oh two. You know, you pick up and go, dude. You can't call this late, man. What's wrong with you? I you actually think trouble. outside the house we could hear the phone ring. Sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. it was made designed that way. Yeah. yeah. But when did you guys get cordless phones? Because those were pretty oh, sweet for privacy. My grandma got the first cordless phone in my life. And, dude, I thought I was living. I don't know dude. what year it was. Was it the gray one? Yeah. Like the, you know, the, with the, it was like the, the mouthpiece had dark gray out? and then yeah. it was white on the back. Yep. You had to pull and the, the metal, antenna and out. The metal antenna. Yeah. yeah. I was walking around. I'm like calling my girlfriend to go, guess where I am right now? I'm in the backyard. I couldn't, I couldn't wait to <laughs> we tell her. We can talk her, about right? whatever we want right hey, now. Hey, the, like the cordless dogs. phone was just for when you're talking. That phone better be back on the cradle. And charging. Right. Oh, yeah. And charging. Oh, my gosh. My back dad on the charger. Why is the phone not on the cradle? I don't know. <laughs> <And> those, <laughs> Where's the phone? That was texting then, too. That's what's crazy is, like, I remember being on the, just being happy to be on the phone with, like, a girl. And it would be okay to have, like, long silences. The same way we text now, the mm -hmm. way we use text is, like, you don't have to respond right away. Or it's, like, that's why we do that instead of talking mm -hmm. on the phone. There wasn't, like, a need to fill the air with conversation mm -hmm. constantly because you were just, ha it was such a cool thing. To it was just, slower. It was much slower. Yeah. And it was okay to be, like, what are you doing? I'm just hanging out watching the show. And then it'd be, like, it'd be quiet for a minute. Right. And then somebody would bring something up. And it was just, like, a you were having a real, you were hanging out. Over the phone. Right. right. And, like, now you cannot do that. You have to get to the point. No one wants to talk to you on the phone anymore like that. Like I do. Text messaging. I, do, I like it, too, and then that makes I me a weirdo. I don't want to talk. My buddy and I, we have, a, like, a once a month we'll have an hour-plus conversation. He lives in Vermont. We'll just catch up, you know? And, and I'll drive. I'm ever on a long on. road trip. I'll call my friends and yeah. just, I know who I can call and who nah, doesn't. Just send me I'd rather get a text message. <laughs> send me a text. Um... Yeah, you're not this person I would call. Nah. If you had a secret you needed to tell somebody, who would you confide in? Other than your animals. Mm. Who knows your biggest number of secrets? My therapist. Legally binding secret keeper. Yep. Who knows your biggest amount of secrets? Is it your mom? No. Is it Tim? He knows a lot. Yeah, he knows <laughs> most of them, I would say. No, but, I you thought know. you said not our significant other. No, no, I said not your animals. Oh, okay. I don't know how you equated animals or significant another, but... <laughs> well, you've seen Tina eat. Uh, <laughs> who knows your biggest number of secrets? Definitely my wife. No secrets. Really? For sure. None? Yeah, my, wife, my wife knows Zero. everything. Zero. Yeah. Hmm. Like, I'm thinking back, like, what does he... What have I not told him... For my past that yeah, needs yeah. to be regurgitated in the year 2024. <laughs> like, some things are better left just dead in the past, right? I mean, uh, what do you dig stuff up from your past and go, okay, I gotta, I gotta make sure I tell this person everything? If it has no uh, impact on no, them at all? No, but I mean, no, but there's zero. It's, to, it's total freedom. Total freedom. Yeah. I guess in the context of the question, you're right. It's see, like secrets you would want to tell. So in a new poll, 32% of people say their spouse or partner knows the largest number of their secrets. Yeah. Well, if she were to ever ask me anything. Sure. Yeah, uh, if she were to ask I, me, I wouldn't, I'm not hold, I wouldn't hold right. anything. Sure, sure. 18% say a friend knows the most secrets. 11% of people claim they don't have any secrets. 
Now, when broken down by gender, men are more likely to confide in a partner or a parent, while women are more likely to share secrets with a friend or a sibling. Yeah. Women are also slightly more likely to confide in a child, one of their children, I'm, mm. I'm assuming. Jackie. That's my sister, <laughs> that's for my sure. Mom. I don't think that's super healthy. Yeah. I, oh, I've, seen, I've seen the fallout from, from parents putting heavy stuff on kids. That's not good. Right. Me and my mom became... Uh, we crossed the friend threshold a little early because I was the oldest, and, you know, like she, she, to her credit, she just didn't have anybody to talk to. And I love her. And it's not on her. But it was like there was some stuff that came across the uh, conference table. Like, Mom, I'm 10. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's like, I'm thinking of divorcing your dad. How do you feel about that? And I'm like, let me put down my Ninja Turtles and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, let's talk about it, Jackie. Let's get into it. He now, is kind of a. A hole. I'll now, tell you, I the, feel the, more freedom. The breakdown was similar when asked, who are you most likely to talk to first when you have a personal problem? And when asked who knows you the best, 41% say their partner was the, was the most popular answer. But again, men more were more likely to say that. 11% of women said it's a kid. Hmm. Only 5% of men said that. A kid? Yeah. Like, knows you the yeah. best? Like 11% of women said it's a, it's a child. So again, one of their children. Hmm. Who knows? Who knows mommy best? Well, then that plays into what you just said about your mom, Rafe. Yeah. I mean, my mom, too, when she was a single mom and I was her only child, and she had to, you know, she had to tell me what was going on. I had to be kind of in the know because that was my, Girl I was on fast. tandem with her, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but secrets? Like, are we talking about secrets? Yeah, there's a whole no. side of your mom you don't know about. The yeah. freaky side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's one thing for, like, information that has to do with you. Oh! <laughs> My I need to tell you something. Gosh. <laughs> well, your situation. You know what I'm saying? But like, but like secrets, like heavy, heavy stuff. Uh, um, no, I, my mom yeah. didn't like lay on the, the secrets thick back then, but she would tell me adult things that were going on in her life that I had no business as yeah. a child needing to know. What, and did there you feel is. like it was emotional weight, emotional baggage? Um, yeah. Because that's, yeah, that's I guess so. heavy. Boy. Yeah, but also it was her survival. Like, I don't think that that was wrong of her. I don't judge her for that. I think, same. you know. Well, Speaking of thick, I have a friend. Now. Do you guys tell? I digress. What? I have like a best. I would say my best friend. I have had the same best friend since I was a kid. Uh, he knows a lot. Like we could probably knows more about you than Tina. I would say so. Probably yeah. we could probably we could bury each other. Yeah, because like, he knows all the childhood secrets. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, stuff, yeah. stuff that wouldn't come up in conversation. There's no need for it yeah. to come up. Right. Where you're just like, hey man, stuff got weird at that one party. But we don't ever have to talk about that, right? right? Yeah. Like, no, no, we ain't ever gonna talk about that. I mean, Moon holds a lot of mine, you know, and oh yeah, but it's the stuff from the past you just don't think about ever. <laughs> he doesn't remember any of them. Yeah, he goes, oh yeah, oh, yeah. and then not uh, Mark that monumental and for me. Video Joey, they know <laughs> me know pretty good. But that's the great thing about telling me secrets is I'm gonna forget them. They're safe with me. All the felonies he committed. Tell them <laughs> right. to me again. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be there to go. Really? I'll be surprised. This <laughs> yeah, man, you were there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I do want to get to this before we, before we move on. Uh, new data has finally put to bed the age-old debate: Does size really matter? And the controversial topic has long caused a divide among men and women. But researchers have just released stats that prove the issue isn't actually about what's in a man's pants, but instead lies in. What women prefer. Okay. So academics at the University of Kent have just released a groundbreaking study that of where? University of Kent. Okay. Kent. Kent. Okay. K-E-N-T. Got it. Debunk some of the biggest myths about sexual pleasure for women. So by analyzing 265 sex toys, the study assessed factors such as size, material, price, and customer reviews to uncover what women really like in bed. And the findings were very revealing, showing circumference trumps length and importance when it comes to women's preferences. Yes. I mean, I have no dog in this fight. <laughs> this dispels the long-held belief that bigger is better hmm. in the context of sexual satisfaction. Okay. In the context of length. Right. With or length. you just said size matters. Because you Size matters in terms of length. Earth. It's all about the girth, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Show me girth. <laughs> Show, me Show me girth. girth. Yeah. yeah. The tuna can boys reign supreme. <laughs> Researchers <laughs> concluded that women do not place considerable emphasis on 
larger penis size. Hmm. In fact, that this this revelation comes after it was found the average penis length has increased over the past 30 years. Oh, mm. good for you guys. Researchers <laughs> published in the World Journal of Men's Health last year discovered that the average penis size has grown 24% over wow. 30 years. What's that due to? Soy milk? What is it? Yes, they actually said, you know, this is not a good thing. Any overall change in development is concerning because our reproductive system is one of the most important pieces of human biology. If we're seeing this fast of a change, it means that something powerful is happening to our bodies. He says erect penile length is getting longer from an average of 4.8 inches to 6 inches over the past 29 years. They're studying to figure out why, you know, what's doing this. Why is, why is dong length getting bigger or getting longer? Yeah, you, you would assume that seeing a decline in length instead of, uh, you know, like an a a increase in length is, is bad, basically. Huh. Uh, could be uh, pesticides, chemical exposure. Um, such chemicals disrupt the endocrine system, which regulates hormones. Uh, so they're not, they're not sure, huh. you know, what's happening. But maybe the microplastics are building up on your dong. On your dong? You know? Could be. They're not sure what's happening, but men don't want it to stop. Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> cool. <laughs> does size matter? <laughs> to men, it does. To men, it does. You know, I don't care what study. Yeah. What study, study size <laughs> otherwise? All right, we got to take a break. We'll come back. We'll wrap her up with the sex toy of the week. Ooh. And this thing is cool. This is a doozy. Well, here. I think it's a nice gift. Yep. We'll see after the break. All right. Sex Toy of the Week is next. Also, uh, 9 o'clock, uh, we'll talk to our buddy Joe Litvag, who is the guy who produces the Evolution Fest, and they will uh, unveil the lineup for the Evolution Fest this morning, give you all the particulars. All right, 831. It is the Riz Show presented on the Fast Lane. Traffic and weather, moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. We got a right hand shoulder block due to a crash 94 eastbound at 364. And uh, delays at 64 eastbound between 40 drive and 170. Your point forecast breezy and a near record high of 78 today. Right now it's 52 at the point studio. Mountaintop Motor Company, mountaintopmotors.com is, uh, is where you should go right now if you're in the market for a vehicle. Now, getting a new vehicle doesn't have to be stressful. It can actually be quite a pleasant, amazing experience. And when you go to Mountaintop Motor Company, you're going to have just that because it's an easy going, no pressure, just wonderful environment. And, uh, and they're not pushy over there. Plus, they're upfront, they're honest. So whenever you close and you get the vehicle you want, you're going to get the price that you want because it's not going to change. They're going to have hidden fees and all these extra things at the end because they're honest. Honest. And they have over a thousand five star reviews for that. And there's uh, a lot of proof because you folks from all over the area keep going back and getting your next vehicle there. And they have a ton of great vehicles right now. If you're looking for vehicles under 15 grand, they have a lot, even some with very low mileage, like the 2010 Subaru Outback, only 54,000 miles. And uh, they even have, uh, let's see here, there's this ton on here. So go to mounttopmotors.com, check out their entire inventory. Um, and it's incredible. I love the guys out there. I'm going to go out there tomorrow, actually, and get to see some more amazing vehicles. So make your trip out there today. Go to mounttopmotors.com. That's mounttopmotors.com. <laughs> it's like blink Yeah. Good to go? 
All right, we are uh, very, very excited about this one tonight. I have to tell you this, Amy Lee. Amy Lee from Evanescence. Hi. Peabody Opera House yes. show tonight. So it was so great when we announced this particular show because it was almost like a firework that went off twice because people were like, oh, Evanescence is coming back, and they'd be excited. And then, oh, it's with an orchestra. Ooh, you know well, what I mean? People yes. were so excited about awesome. this and playing this beautiful Peabody Opera House. It's the, it's the perfect place for it. You've got to play some pretty great venues during this run with the orchestra, right? That's right. It's been uh, a whole new world. Normally, you know, what we gravitate towards and what I want is, like, no seats in the house, like, no built-in seats. We have people standing up. It's rock and roll, you know. Everything about it is this whole different vibe, and this time for the first time and you know, I don't know, over 15 years, it's like, okay, we need like classy, beautiful <laughs> theaters with seats, and we're going to make a program, and I might wear some fancy clothes. It's going to be all different. It's been really beautiful. We played some historical places. One of my favorite theaters um, in, in my hometown in New York is in Brooklyn. It's called the King's Theater, and we just got to actually play there after, you know, I'd only been there seeing... Other things that I'm a big fan of, I saw Bjork there, I saw Erica Badu there, um, and it was such an experience. Really, it's been very fun, and, and fun in a different way, like a, almost like, whoa, like out-of-body experience kind of cool thing to do this. Because it's not, you know, this is not the, and I don't want to use the word typical. No, but no, yeah. This is not the, the normal run. There's a lot yeah. that goes into this, and, and I want to get to that in just a second. But I want to know when the idea for all of this first came about, the, the reimagining of the songs, and then the orchestra and all of that. I want to kind of know the genesis of that. Um, it just sort of happened one piece at a time. I, the thing is, it's not so much like a brand new crazy idea, like if we did like a polka version of all of our songs or something. It's coming from um, a big piece of the core heart of like just the original thought of, of Evanescence in the first place. The, the whole vision I remember from being very young it was always about this um, combining of a heavy rock band and these sort of industrial programming sounds and this cinematic score thing with the, um, with the big strings. Um, so this is you know, we've had all this time to generally be at rock radio, you know, and be serving, like, making a rock album. That's the genre that we're always in. Um, I really wanted to show another side of our music that's always been there and accentuate it in a way that is it, it, actually very metal, <laughs> if you think about it. It's very uncomfortable. Um, it's something that's dangerous and difficult, and all of us are outside our comfort zones and, and challenging. It's, it's challenging in a lot of cool ways. I get to play the piano in a way that I never have um, live before. You know, it's sort of all those things uh, accentuated that are generally in the background. I'll put up in the forefront. I worked it. I, I read that you had to kind of get your sort of piano chops back yeah. a bit yeah. because this was sort of a level that you hadn't played at for a while. Not like, yeah, no. I mean, I took classical piano when I was in school sure. and stuff, but um, this tour kind of what it demands from me personally is to have the kind of focus that normally I only have to have in the studio or like alone in my house. Mm -hmm. It's different than when you're live. You need to keep things fairly safe, you know, generally so that when something comes flying at you or your in your monitor breaks or anything else distracts you, like you've still kind of got it in the pocket, like you have the muscle memory to know what to do. But since this is um, different and like musically like challenging, there's a lot to think about. It just requires more focus and it feels really good. It's like meditative. Well, and I bet you're very rewarding. I mean, I, yeah, I would bet you, you get is. done with a yeah, night. Yeah, when you pull it off, it's just like. <sighs> right, right. <laughs> well, well, and, and that, that kind of leads me back to a, a question you almost kind of answered there in the last time, but it has to be incredibly different for you with different cues and things playing with the band as opposed to now playing with the orchestra. Yeah. How long of a process was that and you kind of getting, you know, getting used to this whole other thing behind you? That's part of what's so cool about the challenge, actually, is that we didn't get a lot of time to prepare. Um, really? Well, every day that we play, we're not touring with this group. We have a different group of musicians in every town. Wow. So tonight on stage, um, when we play our songs, most of them will be doing for the first time all together as a group in front of the audience. So it's definitely like a little bit different and very live in a new way than it ever has been. The, the, the ability of a musician <laughs> to be able to do that. Well, to them me, too. Is, There's is, a lot of very incredible. talented people on stage with us. And they, you know, they're working at 
a very high level. Yeah. Like all these people have been doing a lot more school than I have. Um, <laughs> right. But they're only really looking at the music, most of them, for the first time today. They're practicing right now. So we, we carry our own conductor. And she goes through the whole set. She has about an hour and a half with them. Um, not about exactly an hour and a half with them. They're union um, every day. So they just basically have a chance to do each song once. Um, and then we join for the last half hour and just sort of sound check it and do three or four songs uh, in front of the fans. So we're never really alone, like getting to rest. Text Toy of the Week. And where can you find the latest and greatest when it comes to adult pleasure toys? Patricia's, of course. It's where fun and fantasy meet. Now, Patricia's has your sexy lingerie, your sexy costumes, stiletto heels, all the adult toys you could imagine. Uh, quite possibly, uh, what we're what we're about to talk about. If if they don't have it there, they'll order it for you. They want to make sure you get what you want. They want to make sure you have a pleasurable uh, shopping experience at Patricia's, and don't feel weird about asking a question. First of all, don't feel weird about going there. It's well lit. It's not seedy. Everything's on the up and up. This is not a roadside sex shop where uh, you know the windows are boarded up and it's got one single light bulb swinging back and forth. No. It's not like that at all. And the employees there are amazing. They're never going to judge you. Trust me, they've heard it all. Go there. See what it's all about. Three locations. St. Peter's at the Cave Springs exit on page three miles east of the Westport Plaza. And at the corner of Grand and Gravoy, it's Patricia's. For all your fun and adult toys, it's where fun and fantasy meet and where naughty is nice. What an absolute honor that this is. Uh, first Ho-Ho show of 2017. Headliner tonight, uh, Rise Against Tim McElrath from uh, Rise Against. Absolute pleasure to meet you, man. Good to be here, yeah. So, okay, a couple of things that I wanted to, to ask you about, but I think I'm going to kind of start on the serious side of okay. things, if that's all right Let's with you. Let's do it. Um, it is an unbelievable time in our country politically. Mm -hmm. um, some people would uh, uh, maybe not say that it's a sad time politically, but I mm -hmm. think that it's uh, one of the lowest points that I can ever remember. Yeah. Um, as somebody that is keeping track of what's going on in the world, like I know you guys do. Um, so Red Show Live is happening on uh, Saturday over at the pageant, presented by Yingling and Hat Launch. So we uh, kind of teased before, Scott will be attempting to break a couple records yeah. at Red Show Live. Woo! Been uh, we're trying to get a uh, representative from the Guinness World Records book there. Right. Like, we may have to fly a dude in. Thank Worth you it. Guys. No, I, I really do appreciate it, man. Like, if, he, if he's going to set a record, it's going to be... has to be official. It's got to be yeah. official. Yeah, yeah. And I, I seriously so. am so grateful. Thank you. Uh, you know, there was controversy uh, as far as the world's oldest dog goes. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, the Guinness World Records people have stripped... A late dog's world's oldest dog title due to insufficient evidence uh, around his age. So Bobby was a purebred race of Portuguese guard dog, was declared the oldest back in October after his death at 31 years, 165 days. A 31-year-old dog. Even then, we, I, we're all like, what? Yeah. Hmm. 31 years old. Now, how old's your dog? 16? Yeah, he's getting up there. Got him in April of 08. Ah, it's getting up there. What's that make him? 16. In April, he'll be 17, right? April. Wait, 18. No, 16. Yeah. Maybe it was 07. I'll have to go back and look. So years in dog years. 31. So the first year of a medium dog is equal to 15. Hang on. So 31 years in dog years. It says 86, but that that's... That doesn't seem right. That's right. 31, 31 is, I mean, come on. <laughs> So the deceased dog's title has now been revoked as um, correspondence and investigations by veterinarians questioned. Like, dude, this ain't real. <laughs> Evidence submitted for Bobby's age was well was was all sourced to microchip data from the Portuguese government database. The probe found Bobby's microchip was installed in 2022 when Portugal did not require proof of age for dogs born prior to 08. A 31-year-old dog would be 137 years in yeah, human no. Years. Get the f*** out of here. No. Owner is a liar. And Guinness ain't having it. You're out. <laughs> You're out. This is not... my ass. This is not an award to be taken lightly. No. You know what I mean? Like, come on. It's a big deal. Yeah. So Bobby's owner was notified, but Guinness says... Uh, 
They have to review any evidence, you know, you could supply to prove the age, but as of now, no, nobody's believing you, buddy. Uh-uh. Yeah, what, what is, Guinness, the Guinness World Records, that is the Guinness Beer Company, right? Yeah, let's so see. So what's, what's the origin there? Is it like uh, just, you know, buddies drinking, proving things? It was something, let's see, originally the Guinness Book of Records, ultimate authority on record-breaking achievements, starting out as an idea for a book of facts to solve arguments in pubs. Right, okay, that makes sense. The idea came in the 50s. Let's see. I mean, it's brilliant marketing. Yeah. Is it basically Irish people fighting? Yes. The managing director of the Guinness Brewery attended a <laughs> shooting party in County Wexford. There, he and his host argued about the fastest game bird in Europe and failed to find an answer in any reference book. Right. Recalling they the argument, fighting. Yeah, recording, re recalling the argument, he had an idea for the Gu a Guinness promotion based on the idea of settling pub arguments and invited uh, blah, 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 researchers to compile a book of facts and figures. I will say kudos to Guinness because this is attractive to children. Like, I remember the school essay school fairs. I would go and buy this book every year, see the new records, and I had no clue until, you know, you're like your teenager and adult that you find out that Guinness Beer Company is the one that has this book. Yeah. So they do a good job of not, I don't know, advertising to kids. Not having anything to do with beer. Yeah. Other than the... the other than the name. Yeah. Right. It's pretty neat. Dude, our school, I mean, it was a big it was a big deal in elementary school every year. Oh, did the, the fair? The book fair? Yeah, you were like, our, oh, our, our class better get that. Because yeah. if you had, I mean, if you had free time while everybody else is finishing their math quiz or something, what else are you going to do? You're going to go in the back of the room, you're going to find the, the, the world record book and When find the book silly. fair came to school, the Guinness Book of World Records was always something that was bought. Definitely. Always. It's every ridiculous. Year. <laughs> All right, Rafe. Ready to put a camper on uh, Sex Dumb Fun Facts? Let's do it. Let's brother. do it. All right, Rafe, what do we got this week? What a treat we have this week. Coming off of Valentine's Day and heading into March, let's get back to business with the Fetish Fantasy Double Delight Strap-On. Fetish Fantasy Double Delight Strap-On. Here, you, I don't know if you looked in the packet, but oh. we'll let everybody see that. Wow. Over 40,000 sold. Yeah. 3.5 stars out of 5, 433 reviews, 64.99 on adamandeve.com or other places that sex toys and apparatus must be sold penetration pleasure for both of you description let your fantasies fly free if both of you love deep thrills this double-ended strap-on dildo is sure to please double the curved realistic type phalluses let you each fill up on the best thrusty fun together put on the fantasy mask and check your inhibitions yeah. at the door Mask, I'm assuming, sold separately. No, comes free with... Uh, oh, purchase. comes free with? We'll get oh, what a deal. What a deal, indeed. Wearing this strap-on means you're stuffed with a rubber dildo, one that's aimed right at your spot. At the same time, you'll have a prominent purple wang pointing up at the ceiling. That's got to feel wickedly good. Your double delight strap-on is great for all types of play in a variety of positions, but since these dildos aren't small, you'll want to take it slow at first and use plenty of water-based lube. Hint... There's plenty in Adam and Eve if you need to restock. <laughs> of course there is. Especially with backdoor play. You'll both want to go slow and easy. Try warming up with smaller toys and adjusting positions until you both find one that's mind-melting. Huh. When you're feeling adventurous, you can try this double dildo out in the shower, too. For easier cleanup, slip a condom on both dildos before playing. Don't be afraid to combine the fun of this toy with sex toys like vibrators, handcuffs, or whatever your imagination brings you to. For those totally explosive results. Okay. All right. Pretty good description. Let's get to some reviews. First review titled, Oh My God. When this, <laughs> well, this toy is the, well, you know the next word. My wife and I have used strap ons on the regular, but this one hits the spot on a man like you wouldn't believe. They used it on the regular? I don't even know where the regular yeah. is. How do you find the regular? My wife had me on my off. back, lying on the edge of the bed, using it like a good woman should. I was holding my legs in the air while she stroked me, and I was in heaven, uh, so right. man... I, I should have I should have cut that line out. That last line out. <laughs> that must have been the wow. regular. If you're <laughs> iffy about this... <laughs> you the regular, you guys. Did yeah, you draw? Yeah, don't say that word after the... About. Huh? Did you drop that? Should I, uh... If you're no, iffy about play, this will make you happy. Oh, yeah. 
and she got off to five stars, Kyle Vaness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Happy swinging New Year! That's the next one. Five stars out of five. My wife and I rung in the New Year with her lesbian girlfriend and a couple new to swinging. The girls in the garter stockings and heels loved it on each other and put one hell of a show on for the boys. It was a bit large for our new friend, but I thought it a fine. I thought it fine on all fours and on my back. Bless Gordon you. P., bless you, bless ye. Five stars. But I only had 3.5 out of 5, and I don't want to just... I want to give an unbiased review here, so I'm going to give you a bad review. Real naughty one. Way too wide for my back door. <laughs> Two stars out of five. Verified buyer. Mm -hmm. I bought this for my girlfriend and I. It's far too thick for the naughty hole. <laughs> for the naughty hole. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts like hell. And it never stops being uncomfortable. I recommend a smaller circumference dildo. Ouch! <laughs> K. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that. There you go. That's your fetish fantasy double delight strap on. All, All right. Run out and get you one of the week. Wait, Ray, we had to dump out a little of that. It's amazing that you that you went into that after talking about Guinness, uh, the the world record thing. Yeah. The, the guy. Oh, uh, we dumped. It? The guy who started. I had to it? dump out a little part of that. His name is Sir Hugh Beaver. Really? Hugh Beaver. Hugh Beaver. Hugh Beaver. That's a Hugh Beaver. That's a Hugh Beaver. <laughs> <laughs> How many uh, copies is Guinness sold? Uh, as of this article, it looks like, um, I mean, it was best-selling annual book. Uh, let's see. They have 12 million YouTube subscribers, blah, 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 blah. 153 million books sold to yeah, date globally. I believe it. Nice. I believe it. Hmm. 69 years of record-breaking authority. 66,000 active record titles on the database. Yeah. Plenty, plenty to choose from there. Yeah, yeah. Scott. Got your work cut out for Stand you. And each one of those. All right, listen, we got to take a break. We'll come back, uh, some of your emails, and we'll find out about this Evolution Fest thing. <clears throat> Evolution Fest, big day. The uh, the lineup has been announced or will be announced. It's out. Oh, it's out. Okay, thanks, Learn. Follow me for more tips. Yep. Yeah. 852 Race Show presented on the Fast Lane. Traveling a weather, moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. We got delays 70 westbound between Lambert International Boulevard and St. Charles Rock Road. Your point forecast breezy and a near record high of 78. Right now it's 57 at the point studio. Well, big things happening in the 21 Pilots camp. And you know what? If you are going to talk about 21 Pilots, there are legitimately no better two people in which that you could call to talk about said band than our guys. Gentlemen, it's wonderful to see you again. Hello, and it's been a while. Hello from St. Louis. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it has been We're a while. Man, it's really great to, to see you guys again. And the first thing that we want to talk about is the 21 Pilots Cinema Experience. Now, it's coming out on May the 19th. Uh, there'll be a special encore on May the 22nd. But I want to know, you know, this, you know, this experience came about a year or so ago during the pandemic. And I'm curious, the show was so well done, so well produced. How long did it take you guys to put that whole thing even together in the first place. Let's talk about feeling great, feeling energy up when you wake up, energy up in the afternoon, energy up in the evening, performing, looking, and feeling your very best. That is where Mentality Health comes in. Guys, I'm talking to you. This is a men's specific clinic designed to make sure the men are looking, feeling, and performing our very best, no matter what we're talking about. Maybe we're talking about the bedroom. Maybe we're talking about the job. Maybe we're just talking about... Feeling great. That is the goal. So we're going to focus on the goal and we're going to get there. Three steps. Schedule a consultation. Talk to Mentality Health. Uh, number two, you're going to have that blood draw and uh, find out exactly what your numbers are. And they're going to have a customized treatment program uh, meant for you that's, that's designed for your numbers to get you to 100% so you can feel great. Look, feel, and perform your very best. And step three is the results. The results is what we're after. The goal is what we're after. See it. Feel it. Get it. 
with Mentality Health. Check them out now online, mentalityhealth.com. We are backstage at Point Fest with a St. Louis favorite, and the great part about this today is that they're actually going to get to play. Ladies and gentlemen, highly suspect backstage at hey. Point Fest. What's going on? Welcome right. back. It's wonderful to see you as always, uh, but I would also like to tell you that Natural Born Killer has been one of our favorite songs of the year so far. It is, it sounds great on the air, and it sounds like a great highly suspect song. So let me ask you, where did that come in the recording process? One of the first, one of the last. Where, where, where was that? Smack dab in the middle. Oh, okay. All right. I always wonder if when it comes out as a strong lead single like that, if where it was in the creative process matters. You know what I'm saying? I think once, once we heard that riff, -na -na -na, it was like, okay, this is like the sports anthem style riff. We just kind of knew it would be the one. Yeah, absolutely so. So a new album is out now. All right. Uh, how quickly do you see the audience singing songs back to you? Like it? Yeah. Almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And you are. Luckily. A, and you got to be kind of like amazed and taken aback by that a little bit. Oh my God! It's it's a blessing. It's incredible. Yeah, I can't remember words to songs I love from 20 years ago. I can't remember the words to the songs that we wrote. So <laughs> I struggle. <laughs> you know, here's like kind of a weird one, and I. I very curious about like little things like this. I was at a, um, a show the other night. Pearl Jam was here. They played the Enterprise Center. And you have half of the venue uh, that have phones up and are trying to record the entire show. And then you have the other half that are seemingly annoyed by those that are recording. As a band, do you do you care? Do you, I hate it. You hate it. It's the worst. Like, but but what, let me ask, why you hate it? And I hate it because I'm a short guy. Inevitably, somebody in front of me has got it, and then I'm not seeing anything. I'm as, dancing the entire show. As another short guy, it bugs me too. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's, it's killing the view. Like, I want to see the show. I also wonder who's watching these videos. That's the thing. Is like, you you take a cell phone video, and then what? You listen to it. It sounds terrible. You're never gonna watch it again. It's like, take a picture. Put your phone down. Be present. Right. You know, back in my day, we didn't even have the option to do that. So it's crazy to me when I see people complain about Jack White's uh, phone policy, where he won't let you. You know, you, you got to leave it in a bag. And maybe that's a little bit too much. But I like the general idea of just going to the show and watching the freaking show. Like, right? <laughs> it, it, exactly. That's unheard of. It, it, yeah, it, it completely unheard of. So, uh, touring-wise, we busy the rest of the year, I would, I would assume. We are. Well into 2023. We are. How far do you, they book you dudes out? So, like, if I want to make a 30th anniversary show for The Point for next year, because we're turning 30, how far ahead do I have to, you know, do, do I have to talk to the booking people to get Highly Suspect in? No, you just talked to us. You just said that. We'll be there. You know we'll be there for you. All right. Well, thank you very much. It's a big birthday. I mean, 30 years for an alternative radio station these I can't days. wait until I have mine. <laughs> My next birthday is 50. I'm not prepared for that even in the slightest. But now when my kids say I do old man stuff, I do old man. I mean, I can't even fight them on it anymore. Like what? What's, what's old man stuff for you? Well, let me tell you. I have this particular pair of New Balance tennis shoes, okay? I got them to walk in, and as soon as I took them out of the box, I am not even lying. My two oldest kids started crying, laughing at me and my old man shoes. And then when I tried to point out to them that how much the arch support means to me, oh my God, like they were hyperventilating. So that's just one of the, the things. I have the TV on super loud all the time. My hearing is going, the hair. I mean, dude, it's not a pretty picture. Like my wife is way too cute, truthfully, for what's going on here. You're selling yourself short, Donnie. You're a beautiful man. <laughs> Thank you, man, very much. I've taken this in a very weird direction, but more than anything, I just I, I just wanted to tell you guys thank you. A new house? Well, there is a home buyer workshop coming up Thursday, this Thursday, from 7 to 8.30 at the Lodge in De Pere. Now, if you're thinking about buying a new home in 2024, join local top real estate pros for a free panel discussion on effectively navigating today's unique market. They'll provide helpful tips, essential information on how to become the most successful kind of buyer, which is an informed buyer. Whole Q&A thing they'll talk about, preparing to buy a home, working with a real estate agent, 
home buying roadmap of uh, do's and don'ts, financing and down payment assistance options, applying for mortgage and documentation. If you're a first time home buyer, I, I, I think this is a must. I wish I would have gone to something like this. So that's this Thursday, the Lodge in De Pere from 7, 830. If you need to get in, call my buddy Kevin Putney at the one Three Mortgage Team. 314-862-0123. He'll set you up. That's Kevin Putney, Equal Housing Opportunity. All loans subject to underwriting approval. Restrictions apply. Call for details. Cross Country Mortgage, LLC, NMLS 3029, NMLSConsumerAccess.org, 123Mortgage.com, 314-862-0123. Hey, it's Lux, and I'm backstage at Point Fest with the Glorious Sons. What's up, guys? How you doing? This is your second Point Fest in a row. Yep. Not only were you invited once, but you've been invited back again. How has this uh, day shaped up compared to last year? This is a nice day. Nice it's a day. Crowd. Great yeah. crowd. Great yeah. crowd. Yeah. Good crowd. Great yeah. crowd. I needed yeah. that show today. <laughs> Did you? Yep. Where I were didn't. you guys? <laughs> hey, Scott, keep your uh, your eye out for our guest. Okay. Who should be coming in any second now? We'll get all the uh, all the particulars about the Evolution Fest, which will be happening in September, I believe, end of September. Last year, great success. I know I was there for the first day with the Black Crows and Black Keys. Rafe was there for Ice Cube. Yeah, awesome. But a bigger lineup this year. We'll get all the uh, all the ins and outs on the Evolution Fest in just a couple minutes here. Uh, while we wait, Moon emails. Emails. We have are brought to you by Kloss Furniture. Lowest prices guaranteed. We have something for everybody. Uh, let's see. Moon Man, ask Riz what his go-to order from Cat's Deli. Oh. I'm looking into ordering some stuff. Thanks. Pastrami on rye with mustard. That's it. That's cool. it. That's it. Get the half sour pickles. Uh, get a knish. Uh, if you want a matzo ball soup, I'm, I'm not going to say no to that. Dude, everything's great over there. Get a Reuben. What's a knish? I feel like that's something you fall into. A knish is a wonderful dish. Slightly muddy. <laughs> ah, it's like a, it's potato. It's like uh, it steps right in this knish. It's a potato. Uh, it's a pillowy. Stop doing that with your hands. I'm, I'm trying to describe it. I'm Italian. I talk with my hands. What do you want from me? No, that's not. Uh, you're, that's something. Here's what it is. It's mashed potatoes wrapped in a paper-thin dough and then baked or fried. Knishes can be round or square. They have fillings such as cheese, kasha, sweet potatoes, mushrooms, spinach, broccoli, and cabbage. Yeah, regular knish from, from Katz's. It's uh, square. <sighs> you do this with your hands too many times, it looks like you're, you, you got marshmallow paste stuck on your yeah, fingers and you're trying to get about. <laughs> I was like making like, like, how would you say it? Like, I got things in my hands. <laughs> That's how I think, okay? If he tie, had he shut an Italian guy up, you, you tie his arms behind his back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Anyway, uh, Katz's Deli in New York is one of those tourist traps, but it's one of those tourist traps that it's, it's a reason it's for it. it. Yeah. I mean, I will go and wait, wait, wait in the line there for it. What do you think about the cronut? I feel like I never had one. Oh, the cronut was, had its day. It was a cronut donut. I thought it was going to be legit. Donut. Big time. Me thing. too, and I couldn't wait for it to go Midwest. That you was know? a croissant donut. Yes. It just, I, and people will wait in New York City at this one particular bakery for hours. I know. I, I, that was way after I left. Katz has been around for over 100 years. Worth it. Pastrami on rye, mustard. Next. Let's stay with food. Hey guys, wanted to get some input from you guys. I am currently on a quest to visit every single pizza place in the St. Louis area by the end of the year. I call it the St. Louis Pizza Tour of 2024. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> uh, now this tour only. How'd you come up with that? Name? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a creative. Okay, marketing one. genius or what? <laughs> now this tour only uh, includes standalone pizza places, no chains, no, no chains. bars or Italian restaurants unless they are well known for their pizza. I really want to do this because I feel a lot of small pizza restaurants in the St. Louis area that people may not have heard of, and I hope to shed uh, light on. So like no Dewey's. Do is uh, right. There's a bunch of those. Yeah, I bet I, I would count that in this. Yeah. What's the rules? No chains. No, no. They said no chains, no bars, or Italian restaurants unless they're well known for the pizza. My question for you guys is: What are some small St. Louis pizza places that you don't think a lot of people may have heard of that don't get enough recognition? Thanks, guys. Three out of five uh, pizza slices. Pizza Babble on Instagram. Man, I've hey, been by the way, that Pizza Rally place. By the way, um, you know I, I love emos, and we wanted we wanted some thin crust. My son's like, we've had too much emos. Do, do something else. Let's get some dominoes. 
And I love Domino's typically. I'm always raving about their app and all that. Worst pizza experience I've had. Really? Oh, dude, this last weekend. Thumbs down, huh? It, just, it was the, the <laughs> worst pizza experience I've had in How? 10 years. I got a, a pizza experience. It was so had. bad. Was it doughy? That it changed. How bad I, was it? I thought that there was no bad pizza. Like, I thought even a bad pizza is it's pizza. Right. It's, it's fine. This was not worth finishing. I threw oh. half a pizza away. Was it stuffed crushed? No, no, no. It was, it was thin crust uh, buffalo crushed. chicken, and it was... Everything was wrong. The chicken was bad. It's, it was just... It was not worth eating. And I have not had that. I don't think I've ever had that. I don't, I don't think I've ever had a pizza not worth eating. This guy needs, or is this, I'm assuming this is a man. They need to go to Pizza Head on South Grand. Pizza Head's great. And, uh, and just get yourself a slice at that window, dude. It is so good. I've heard good things about Pie Guy. Oh, Pie Guy? Where's that? Good. Is that down on it's the... It's on uh, the, in the Grove. They the catered Grove. Uh, Flyover Fest. It's very, very good. Pie Guy's good. Mellow Mushroom. It's technically, there's a couple of them. I don't think that would constitute it's a chain. Yeah, that's a chain. It's I eight. thought it was a chain. It I thought there was, thought there was right. a nationwide chain. Oh, yeah, chain. it is. It is a nationwide chain. Scratch it. Scratch it. it Take it off the list. Burn it down. <laughs> You're out, Mellow Mushroom. You're out. Uh, uh, Black Thorn, if you want deep dish, is really, really, it's crazy. But it's like a, your pizza will weigh 27 pounds. It's insane. Yeah, yeah it's a casserole. And Frank and Helen's it's a good New one. City, pretty good. Uh, the only authentic... Uh, like Neapolitan style pizza is at Noto, like actually stamp of approval from a dude in Italy. Uh, huh. I will tell you, Felix's in Dogtown. Oh yeah, pizza by the slice. Breakfast Don't pizza. they got really good pizza there? And it's they what serve other Epic? things, but I pizza is definitely their mainstay. Doesn't Epic have a window? Epic's great. They do have a window. That's Epic's a Soulard, got a window. Right? Is it Soulard? Soulard. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Right around the corner from Mission Taco. I think yeah. it might be the same owner actually. Yeah. Uh. I think they own um, East Coast Pizza, too. You could be right, man. <laughs> Dude, there are a lot of good pizza places. I'm telling you, man. There are a lot of good pizza places. Yeah, I've heard yeah. good things about this Pozzoli and here And here place. he is to talk about the best pizza places in St. Louis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Litvag. <laughs> what's up, dude? Oh. Yo. Yeah, what's... what's oh, so, give them the parameters. Uh, okay, it said no chains, uh, no Italian restaurants or bars unless they are well known for their pizza. This guy is looking for small pizza restaurants throughout the St. Louis area that people may not have heard of. He's on a pizza tour. Yeah, and it's called tour. the St. Louis Pizza Tour of 2024. It's no emos. I mean, my problem is I, I'm not one of those, I love food, but I'm not one of those guys that like goes into the nooks and crannies to try to find incredible restaurants. I'm too lazy. Mm. Uh -huh. So I, I go for sort of surface. So I would say for me, and I'm sure this is no surprise, but it would be Katie's. Oh, Katie's is great. Yeah. yeah. Katie's got, wood yeah, fired. good wood fired pizza there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, so and I they feel got like some... I've disappointed you guys. No, no, no. no, 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 no. 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 In fact, we didn't even mention. Was... I'm disappointed in myself for not saying Katie's. Right. Well, you should be. <laughs> 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 no, and they got a good a good uh, variety of stuff over there, Katie's. Oh, yeah. They do. So, anyway. They do. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, concert producer, promoter extraordinaire, Joel Litvag. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for those three applause. I appreciate it. Um, very excited to have you here. Have to put the old man glasses put on. Put the old man glasses on. Let's get let's get into it. First off, <laughs> Evolution Fest. Evolution Last Fest. Last year, what a blast I had. Did you? Well... Let's talk about last year. So last year, remember, I'm, I'm, hey, remember when it rained? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let's bring it remember, oh, remember, remember when it remember. rained the first, <laughs> the first half of the day? Yes. Uh, it, was, uh, it was an interesting uh, morning and early afternoon, but then it was fine. Then it was great. What a great, that, that first day, that Saturday was such a great, it was a great night. It really was. I mean, uh, you know, when things come together with after so much planning and so much preparation, when things come together the way you're hoping they come together, it really is an amazing feeling. And for me, I think, you know, I, I, people ask me all the time, why'd you get into this business? It's I, you I, like I, torturing yourself. Yes, that <laughs> all this gray hair at the age of 24. Right. <laughs> uh, it. But it, it's the goosebump moments. Yeah, that, you know when when we've all gotten them when we're at a show that we love or whatever, and it's just you know the artist that you love walks out on stage, and it's like you just feel goosebumps all yeah. over your body. That's what I love for. I love it myself. I love creating that feeling for other fan. people, right? And I love doing it for other people. So walking around 
the the crowd, you know, walking through the house while both the Black Crows and the Black Keys mm. were on stage last year on on um, Saturday night, and when Brandy was on stage on Sunday night, it's just like you could feel it. Like there was just this electricity, yeah, that was in the air, and it's you can't manufacture that. Like that's that's the secret sauce that makes festivals sort of stand out in people's minds. Yeah, so. we walked in, uh, had a couple had a couple adult uh, beverages. Just a couple. Just a lot, a lot. My wife drive home, uh, drove home that night. Uh, just a lot, a just lot. Just a lot. <laughs> uh, man, I remember watching Modern English. Oh, yeah. Who is great. And then walking over to the other side and watching Sugar Hill Gang. I know. I mean, uh, uh, Sugar Hill Gang. It, it, it was awesome. It, I mean, it's, it's one, of those, one of those acts that everybody is still talking about. And they deserve so much respect. And, you know... Uh, last year being the 50th anniversary of hip hop, it was just it was an automatic, and it was it was one of the huge hits of the festival that people keep talking about. And Rafe went there on the Sunday and saw Ice Cube. Cube, yeah, he was, was awesome, awesome too. He had a good time. He really did. He enjoyed it. He had a good time, and I had a good time watching parents grab their kids and run <laughs> <laughs> when some of the NWA stuff. Started. How awesome! And That's I was funny. like. That's on YouTube. <laughs> like, yeah, you knew what you, you knew. Ice Cube was playing. They you seen, know what you're they, Yeah, they saw too many Ice Cube's family movies. Yeah, well, that, that's how they know Ice Cube. Probably, yeah, is an actor. Not, not I was watching a Muffet and Run. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "There's plenty of room up front, guys." I just saw 30 strollers heading for the hills. And well, that was honestly, awesome. that's why we don't promote Evolution Festival to kids. But no, you know. it was it was amazing, yeah. and then nobody was mad. It was just funny no, for me to great. watch because I was like. We're going to watch the guy from Are We There Yet? Yeah, are we yeah, there yeah. yet? I know him. Oh, he's like, no. oh, my God. Yeah. He's actually a performer Don on Mecca. stage, too. As soon as he said Don Mecca, I was like, you guys are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the old stuff. Uh, it was it was it was a great two days. Thank you. Uh, Forest Park last year. I, I just remember, I will never forget seeing the sun go down as the Black Crows were, were playing. It's about it's about making those moments, you know, yeah. making those moments for people. And, and, and that's what, you know, that's what we're hoping for is that, you, know, you don't create a great festival in one year or even two years or three years. It's an ongoing process, and it's a, it becomes this living, breathing thing. And the goal is to just have more people experience what you experience to where it becomes an automatic every year. Well, of course we're going to Evolution yeah. Festival. It's, a, it's St. Louis, Missouri. How can the summer be complete without right. Evolution yeah, Festival? I was standing next to Tommy, Tommy, our boss, and I go, damn, there's a lot of people here. And I saw a drone flying overhead. I'm mm -hmm. sure you have the drone pictures. We do, yeah. Uh, which I'd love to see. I would love to see those drone pictures. I'll show them uh, to you. But, yeah, it was drone flying above. Must have been a cool scene from up above. Uh, and I'm sure you as a concert promoter and a producer of this thing, you're putting this thing together and you're thinking, man, nobody's going to show up to this. That's the way I always think about events that we do. Yeah. Who the hell's going to show up to this? Do you feel like Wayne Campbell in Wayne's World 2? Yes. Did you watch that before Evolution Festival last year and you thought, okay, I'm having the same experience as Wayne Campbell? I did not. I blocked it out of my mind, <laughs> actually. I mean, I had to. But yeah. remember, people showed up to his yeah, show. Yeah, they did. That's people true. showed up to your show, Listen, too. Listen, they did. And we can't, we can't thank St. Louis and surrounding areas enough for coming out and supporting us last year and, and hope that everybody had such a great time that they'll come back out and bring five of their friends this time. So that's, you know, for us, it's, it's about improving the experience, making more of those moments for the fans. But, you know, we also have to grow the event from yes. a business perspective. Right. And I'm sure you learned a lot from doing it the first uh, year. I mean, uh, pages and pages and pages of things we, I, I won't say we, we did wrong, but things that we want to improve on for so, you. Give, give an example. Yeah. Uh, one example is, um, you know, I noticed, uh, my partner Steve and I both noticed this, that there was a lot of people uh, attending the festival coming from the south, you know, toward 64 mm -hmm. and walking up north to, to get to Langenberg Field. And we didn't have a general admission entrance on the south side of the festival site. The, the, the general admission entrance was on the north side of the mm -hmm. site by the tennis courts and the visitor center. So people that with general admission tickets were having to walk all the way around the mm. festival site to get to the main entrance. So we said, you know what, we, sh we can make this easier for people. Let's add a general admission entrance on the south That's side great. of the site. So now they have to walk less of a distance to get into the festival. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it, it's, it's not sexy things, but it's... You're streamlining, it's streamlining the process. It's, you just, we have to, we, ha we strive to make it perfect for the people that are spending their, their hard-earned money to come and, and hang with us. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about... Evolution Fest 2024. 2024, that's right. Joe, let's get the particulars. Have you not Have you not mentioned anything yet? I haven't mentioned I wanted you to mention it. Oh, gosh. This is... I, I wanted you to mention it all. All right. Well, let's... I don't want to mow your lawn. 
It's your show. <laughs> Let's. It, well, I I will say. You, I've always wanted my own show. You have what? You have one of my and and Moon saw was playing. Go and he, uh, uh, Riz's favorite band. Here we go. Riz Here we go. Is, oh, we've got Riz your favorite is losing band. his mind. Right, well, we'll see where you stop me and tell me that's your favorite band. All right. Starting at the top, we have the Killers. God, I'm telling you, the Killers. That's right. Uh, Somebody told me the people in St. Louis wanted to see the Killers. Uh, yeah. I get it. All right. I got. I'm going to stop. I get right it. now. Uh, <laughs> it's not the Killers. Enough. Huge. Yeah. That's a good get. That's a great get. That's the right. Killers. The Killers. Beck. Beck's a good nice. get too. Wow. Exactly. I mean, Beck's a legend, and, Beck's and, a legend. and we were we were trying for him last year, and the timing didn't work. So mm -hmm. this year, uh, Jane's Addiction. There it is. There, there it is. is. I had That's a feeling. My band. I had a feeling it was going to be one of those top three. I just wasn't That's sure. That's my one. band. That's right. That's <laughs> well, right. With Perry Farrell being at the Evolution Fest, like, are you going to talk to him about Lollapalooza and like how he has like created a festival? Oh, we're going to pick his brain. Well, just talk talk shop with them. I mean, that's kind of cool that I, he's going to be there. I will talk shop with anybody that wants to talk shop with me because I, you know I've been doing this a long time, over thirty years now, but I am still learning new stuff every day. Yeah. I mean, I really. I don't know everything, and I, I, I have to keep learning. So the more people that I can talk to that have experience in the business, I soak it in like a sponge. That's awesome. Yeah. And so Jane's Addiction, so if Dave Navarro is back with the band... I'm told he the plan is that he will be back with the original band. Original lineup? What? The original, what, Eric Avery has bassist lineup? The, I can't say with 100% certainty. <sighs> About about Eric, but if if everything Thank God goes I'm not well with Dave, pants. Yeah. wow! Because that and would again, be things change. I mean, these, the thing is, these Luke Can Johnson back on the drums. Mm. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> you know, these are people. I know. I you know this. I know. I, I, I get it. And and you know this because you play in bands. I mean, it's it's like stuff happens in people's lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yes, the hope Dave is the hope is, is that the original that's what line of hopefully, that's right. hopefully, we'll see if that sticks together. Uh, moving on, Blondie. Blondie. Amazing. Dang. Blondie. That is huge. Yeah, that is huge. I love Are you Debbie a huge Harry. Debbie Harry fan. Yes. Yeah, so, so um, Fair St. Louis was the last time I saw Debbie Harry. I believe. I don't know if it was Blondie or just Debbie Harry, but that in Forest Park. And so, great spot to see her for the first time if you've never seen Blondie. Yeah. I, exactly. I mean, they're a legendary, a legendary band. She's a legendary performer. She mm -hmm. still looks great and sounds great. So we're super excited. That's awesome. Uh, next up, Nile Rodgers and Sheik. Whoa, Damn. Sheik. So everybody, everybody can get a little of their, their, their funk on. That's right. That's right. I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of Nile, and, and, you know, I, I, he, I have so much respect for him as a, as a producer. Super well producer. Yeah, Nile Rodgers. Exactly. Um, Killer Mike. Killer Mike. Damn. Holy crap. Fresh yeah, off three Grammys. Know. Right. Yeah, and, right. And an arrest. And an arrest at, at, the, uh, at, the, at the, Grammys. the Grammys. I know <laughs> nothing about that. I just know he won three Grammys. <laughs> Sounds like a good party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, El King. El King, fresh off. Fresh you know what? Off the of Dolly, Dolly Parton tribute. Yeah. We, try, we, we try to put those two together on the ad mat so we can just get through the negativity right, right at once. And never again. No negativity no. from no, here. Dude, they bring hey. edge to the festival. That's yeah, all good. That's cool. Yeah. Those are cool points. Hey, listen, Dolly Parton said it was cool. She did. That's right. She it's just cool. got drunk. It's all good. That's, you know, part of, I mean, that not that her, rock one roll, of her big baby. songs is getting drunk? Isn't that LK? Probably. Yeah, yeah I think so. so. It was top 10 hit. Um, Todd Rundgren. Amazing. Little classic 70s uh, thrown in is there. Is that, uh, I don't want to work. That's, yep. that, yes. Bang on the drum. Bang on the drum all day. Yes. That was okay. in the 80s. Hello, It's Me was oh, the big one yes, in the 70s. Right. It really an influential. Dude, that is the. Pull Liv up Tyler's Rundgren. dad at Todd first. Todd Rundgren, uh, Hello, It's Me. Hello. Dude, that's the jam. That's right. It's That's a right. slow jam. It is, but it's, it's very, a, very it's yacht classic, rocky. It's a classic sure. one. But yes. listen, we we invite yacht rock, yacht rockers to come. Ain't nothing wrong with festival. that. I mean, come on, it's for everybody. Um, Pete Yorn. Pete Yorn. Pete Yorn. Sunvolt. Nice. Shellville nice. Zone. I mean, it's always nice to have a little uh, local connection on the yeah. festival. Uh, and then we get into the meat of the lineup: Robert Finley, S.G. Goodman, His Lordship, Lola Kirk, The Mysterines, Trey Burt, Beachwood Sparks. Sunny War, Billy Tibbles, Chaparral, Pearl Charles, 95 Bulls, The Asteroid Number 4, Schizophonics, Nadine, another St. Louis artist, Daddy Long Legs, Sean Thompson's Weird Ears. Right. Now, and you know them? Sprites. No. <laughs> no, I love their band name, though. I'll check Very it out. interesting. Go, go, if you Google uh, on, or go on YouTube and look up Sean Thompson's Weird Ears. I mean, it's pretty, pretty cool stuff. Okay. I'm not getting uh, audio out of your computer for something. You're not getting audio? Or are you no. trying to play it? Trying to play Todd Rundgren. Hmm. Well, I guess maybe not. Moon it can wasn't, sing it. Wasn't meant to be. Mm. Wasn't meant to be today. 
Uh, okay, so you got the bands. Let's get the dates, by the way. Dates are September 28th and 29th. We moved it from late August to late September cool. uh, because we didn't want to deal with 110 degree heat, which it ended right. up being perfect the weekend, uh, the Saturday and the Sunday. It did. After the rain on Saturday. But the week leading up to it, where we were actually out there in Forest Park building the site, it was like 110 yeah. in the shade every Riddle. day. And it was it was a Yeah, brutal. actually the rain that 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 morning kind of cooled things down. It did. It, was, it really it was did. Very nice. So you got the music, uh the cultural experiences? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, lots of lots more in the food area, the 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 beverage area, bourbon. We're adding a a, a, a beer garden as well this year. I mean, St. Louis is a beer mm. town. We're adding more St. Louis restaurants into the mix, uh, more in the marketplace. Everybody loved the sort of local artists and vendors in the marketplace. Yeah. We had Regional Arts Commission out there as well with artists. That so, yeah. giant, uh, it was like a domed tent you guys had in the middle. Yeah. With all the, the, the bars and the, yes. the drink zone. Absolutely. Yeah, it was awesome. That will, that will still be there. Yeah. yeah, that was great. I think there wasn't also like the thing that where you could make turn your cash into a little credit card that was super useful. I saw people using that. Yeah, whatever. it was. It's called a reverse ATM. Yeah, there we there go. We go. Uh. Ah, yeah, that was cool, man. That was a good way to like. We have to let the music speak for itself. Ooh. You know the song, Moon? Uh, oh, I mean, Moon, come on. The vibe sounds familiar, but I don't know if I know this song. 1972. You gotta get to the chorus. See, my panties are gonna melt off when he plays this. <laughs> he may not play it though. I'm mean, after where? Why? Todd Rundgren is one of those guys. He don't play his hits. Well, he plays some, but he doesn't play them all. I was gonna wear my fire retardant Suit? panties that day. You were. <laughs> well, still wear it. We'll have you to send know. him a text to, to make sure. Make sure he plays that it. He, he yeah, plays play that song, or else you ain't got paid. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, we we are definitely uh, cashless this year. Yeah. So we want to continue to remind everybody: uh, don't bring your cash to the festival. Uh, credit cards, debit cards, Apple Pay, mm. Google Pay. You had a good solution for it, though. I thought that was cool. Yeah, for well, people that you. didn't listen and came with cash. There's yeah. always, there's put always it in this a machine. We'll give you a little temporary debit, and you can use it in the festival. Cool. Surprisingly, though, it, it, it was there were there were not. I know you might have seen some people using it. There were not a ton of people that used it. Huh. It was, yeah, most people listened and understood. Good. Most places are, are cashless now right. Right. anyway. Everybody well. uses, yeah, everybody's just doing it. So it's not like it's that far-fetched. All right, Evolution Fest, September 28th, 29th. Uh, the lineup, we're talking The Killers, Beck, James Addiction, Blondie, Nah, Rogers, and Sheik, Killer Mike, L. King, Todd Rundgren, Pete Yorn, Sunvolt, and more. Tickets on sale. Tickets on sale Wednesday at 10 a.m. This Wednesday. Evolutionfestival.com. So two-day passes or single day? So two-day passes Right first? now, two-day passes. Uh, single day. Single days will come later in the campaign like we did last year. But um, we will definitely be offering single days later on. But for now, we're focused on on trying to sell weekend only. Well, congratulations. What a great line. Thank you, Thank you for doing this again. Thank you. For Loved it last attending. year. Please yeah. come back and oh, hope going. all your listeners come. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to be there. Good. Can we be in the Joe Buck tent? Oh, his cabana? <laughs> yeah, we talked to him about we that, actually. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you ask him that. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> now we're buddies. Of course we're going to be like invited. Yeah, All right, right, the great Joe Litvang, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate Evolutionfestival.com. All right, we'll take a break. Uh, Moon's got sports next. It's 922. Race show presented with the fast lane. Traffic and weather. Moon's Traffic coming is at you. brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now. <laughs> at WWTRaceway.com. All things clear, your point forecast breezy and a near-record high of 78. But right now it's 59 in the point studio. All right, so here we are backstage, uh, way back Point Fest, and we are absolutely thrilled. Myself, uh, Mr. Jeff Burton. Thank you. It's thrilling to be here with you. Oh, you're talking about them. <laughs> right, <Sorry>. right, right. <laughs> noodles and peanut. Gentlemen, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming back. You guys get along like me and Noodles get along. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can yeah, see that. Sure. It's yeah. pretty, it's pre I mean, like, we have known each other for a long, long yeah, time. Yeah, like, kind of the there same, are, right? There are, I mean, he was at my bachelor party, for goodness yeah. sake. So, you know what I mean? Oh, well, nice. No stories, okay. no, no backstories. I, I, there's there's oh, okay. a lot. So how much tape you got in the thing? <laughs> 
with the thing and, there. How and it's really similar because me and Noodles should have known each other for a really long we time. We should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like exactly kinder, the same. Kindred spirits. As soon as we get together, we really do just. Yeah, we click like really nice. Well, how long have you guys though, known each other though? Uh, ten years now, right? Yeah, something something like that. Well, that's well, when we did the first tour. Yeah. yeah, but we didn't really start hanging out until we started doing press together sure. on this on this, on this run. That's yeah. when we got to we solidified our bond. Well, we sure. we recognized genius and humor. That's right. Yeah. 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 Like, yes, he's one of me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. yeah. So you guys are hanging out socially then outside of uh, of we're stuff? not. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And, and same same in the band, we're we're burning each other out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't totally. wait to not see those guys for a while. But this. This is yeah. perfect. This is the perfect relationship. We see each other for press. We just had sexy time fun facts, and it reminds me that this is the love month. February is the love month. You know, on Valentine's Day, I'm sure a lot of you got engaged then, or I'm sure a ton of you have gotten engaged since then, and you're planning that big wedding. Well, you know that it's very expensive to book all the rooms. It's expensive to get your, your trip lined up and everything you need for that wedding. Well, here's what's wonderful is First Community is here to help you save a ton of money, and they have an incredible opportunity right now through this month and it's their wedding loan, and you get a special rate of just 7.5% on that loan. So that way you can take what you, you know you're going to have to spend on all those big expenses. You go there, get that loan, and it's covered now. So everything's taken care of, and you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. So when you start your marriage, you're going to start off not in debt. You're going to have this incredible opportunity to, uh, uh, to help yourself out and not you know get tricked later on and with all these extra expenses so know what you're getting yourself into and start your wedding off right go to first community and ask them today about their wedding loan i love first community and you will too so go to firstcommunity.com that's firstcommunity.com backstage uh, at uh, point fest and i'm uh Completely honored to be joined by Ed from Live. This is uh, one of my childhood dreams to always talk to you every time you're in well, town. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. that. I've uh, been following you. I was telling your tour manager, I've been following you guys since. And I'm sorry if nobody out there cares, but I'm going to walk uh, down memory lane with you. Uh, MTV 120 Minute Tour, Springfield, Missouri. Oh, yeah. Shrine Mosque, I think is what it was. I think and, so. Uh, it was our wow. first tour. Ama that was your first tour? Yeah. Because, I mean, you guys were like, talk about just being with the guys you grew up with. You guys were like 12 at the time or something. Yeah, we started the band when we were 13, coming out of eighth grade into high school. And that tour you mentioned, that was 1992. So that was our first road experience with uh, Public Image Limited and... Yep. And Big Audio Dynamite and Blind Melon. Yeah, that was amazing. And uh, that's one of those, that's like obviously the first time I saw you. But even more creepy, uh, I have a public affection CD. Oh, I love that. That's <laughs> awesome. There aren't too many of those around. Is there you know, no restraining order just yet on that? No, no. We Somebody did try to, some, somebody tried to like, they put it up on one of the streaming sites as like, public affection. I'm like, hey, that's our band. Wait you a minute. Hold no, on a wait second. A minute. Wait a minute. You can't do that. You so. got enough of that stuff going all, all the cool. time anyway with so many records out and everything and now uh, new music and you guys are here in St. Louis. Talk about uh, uh, touring again and still and still doing it after what, 25 years of yeah. uh, throwing copper, one of my all time faves. It's still fun for you, right? That's so much fun. We're, uh, yeah, we're just kicking this year off. We've, we've been back now. We took a long break there and break slash break up. Right. And, um, <laughs> And uh, it's been, this is the third year we've been out. You know, the first year we did a bunch of festivals. Last year we did a great tour with um, Counting Crows. Yep, been there. Um, I was buddies. there. And then, uh, yeah, we're kicking off this year right now. Yeah, we had, this is really the first couple shows we've done this year. And then we're out with um, Bush and Our Lady Peace starting June 6th. That's going to be an amazing tour as well. And, and I can't wait to see them. I go where, somewhere and see that. Uh, talk about the difference now as opposed to 20, 25, even 30 years ago uh, uh, touring. Like, what is, what's the same now and what is different now? Well, you know, we're older. Right, so right, right. Yeah. Are we? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we, I, I think the pace is is less crazy, you know, by design, just because we all have kids. I think there's like 13 kids between the four right, of us, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot like, of love there, though. And, and they're all graduating from, a bunch of them are graduating from high school and all this kind of stuff, you know? So <laughs> we're, um, you know, we pace it out. Of course, summer's really busy, but I would say that's the biggest difference. Like we don't, like when we've, in their early 90s, mid 90s, I mean, it was, it was nothing for us to be out nine months of a year. Sure, yeah. You know, and going to Europe from here or there. And, you know, um, so that slowed down a little bit. But, you know, it's funny because when we came back, in 2016 17 the demand for the band was so huge that we were like it felt like we were just right back to playing you know on these big festival stages and i mean 
a lot of these venues we're familiar with. You know, the right, names yeah. have changed, but we're here we are, you know, and, and so that's been amazing to see the fan response and just the response overall to the band and how how um, you know important it still is to so many people. It's awesome. Well, the fact that you guys have been together for so long, was it really easy to pick it right back up? Was it just, I mean, boom, you know? It, it pretty automatic. much was. I mean, you know, we did our first show back. We hadn't played together in six or seven years, and and um, that was a little nerve-wracking, like the first one back. But it was really fun. But we were all kind of out of it. We were all just like, are we right. really doing this? Yeah, like, well. yeah. Um, but it, 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 that didn't last. I mean, within a few shows, we were, like, just riding a bike. You know, right. we, we just... We have such a great chemistry. And Did you know uh, that when you choose Hoppin' Brothers for your home services this month and next month, you're not just improving your home. You are also helping our furry friends at Stray Rescue of St. Louis. That's right. Hoppin' Brothers is partnered with Stray Rescue of St. Louis. And for every home service appointment during February and March, they will contribute to supporting Stray Rescue's mission of rescuing and caring for stray animals in our community, whether it's heating repairs or maintenance or installation, plumbing or electrical services, you could trust Hoppin' Brothers to not only take care of your home, but also make a difference in the lives of animals in need. So make your home service appointment with Hoppin' Brothers today and join them in supporting Stray Rescue of St. Louis. Listen, we're going to have our uh, AC cranked up full-time pretty, uh, pretty soon. So might as well get that AC system checked out and uh, do a good thing for Stray Rescue. Visit them online, hoffmanbros.com slash rescue, hoffmanbros.com slash rescue. Hoffman Brothers is an independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. Is our uh, guest on the phone? Uh, there's some guy named Bert on the phone. Uh, Bert. Hopefully it's that's the guy the right, I'm supposed to be calling, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the machine, Bert Kreischer on the phone. Hey, man. That was well played, gentlemen. That was well played. <laughs> well, we're expecting a call from Burt Cummings, too, so we're not sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, good. You know, it's funny. I told my, my son yesterday, I was like, hey, I have one of my favorite comedians on the show uh, tomorrow. He goes, awesome, you have Kevin Hart on. I go, damn, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> my daughters, my daughters and I, my daughters and I saw Jumanji the first one for the first time, uh, and I was like, I, I got out and I was like, God, Chris, I want. Uh, everybody got the text message from AT and T oh, uh, yeah. this weekend. Apologies. Apologies. You got it, Rafe. I don't have AT and T. Oh, you're not. Oh, you're not an AT and T guy. I no. had no coverage loss. T Mobile. Thank you, T Mobile. Mm. Scott, you an AT&T guy? I used to be an AT&T guy. Then I got married and oh. turned into the family plan on T-Mobile. Well, listen, I'm a, I was AT&T and I had no disruption, but uh, my wife did. Mm -hmm. As did I. So tens of thousands of AT&T customers were affected by this massive outage last week when a botched network update kept people from being able to use their cell phones for up to 12 hours. AT&T is like, it's not a solar flare. It wasn't terrorism, right. cyber terrorism. This was a botched network update. That's what did it. If you want to believe them. I don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah, I read the solar flare rumors. I didn't know that they came out and said that it wasn't. Yeah, they came out and said, nope, not a solar flare. Uh, our bad. Our bad. So uh, e customers were, you know, hey, I'm off the grid for 12 hours. I can't use my phone. You better pay me back. Mm. <laughs> like, you better pay me. Right. Pro-rate. Pro-rate. And AT&T actually will, will do it. Uh, they will credit uh, everybody uh, five bucks. Huh. Each person will get five bucks applied automatically. Wow. I didn't know that. What's yep. that going to pay for with AT&T? <laughs> like, one message? No. Five dollars? You know what? Pessimist. What? Learn. Yeah. I didn't that, even get that text that about may five dollars. Is that per account or per line? Uh, Her family. Uh, yeah. I mean, All they said in my text message was like, hey, sorry about that, Chicky. I got Love me and my wife. AT&T. I got me. Yeah, me too. I didn't get anything that said, said that. $5. I, you know, I'm thinking per line. I'm going to say per line. I could you're, be wrong, gonna but I'm going to say, say per line. That's a big difference in my in my that, account. That's like 400 bucks for you. Dude, I got the kids. I got me. I got my wife. I got my mother. Now, they might, they, they may, that may not seem like much, but AT&T says 5 bucks is the average cost of a full day of service. Plus, they probably didn't have to give everything. Or, I'm sorry, give anything. They didn't have to do it. It's hard to get anything out of uh, companies for service disruptions these days. Like, ah, you know, it's in the terms of service. Not our, not our bad. AT&T said, we recognize the frustration this outage has caused. 
and uh, know we may uh, that we let many of our customers down. Uh, they're also taking steps to quote prevent errors like this from happening again in the future. They did not elaborate. Hmm. Is it per line? I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> Damn it. It's a good question, Boone. You've got my hopes up now. Good question. I wasn't expecting anything, so it's all a bonus to me. Yeah, I saw the message. I was like, okay, all right, <laughs> all, right. all right, all right. How about that, T-Mobile? Mm. Huh? Jealous? <laughs> they gonna switch? <laughs> nah, I was enjoying service. Ah. Uh. Text coming in willy nilly well, all day. Normal day. Normal, <laughs> normal day, huh? Normal day. Huh? No jealousy at all, huh? Mm -mm. Five bucks richer. Come I, my next bill. I did. Ooh. You know how I roll. I got a little nervous, and Riz actually talked me off the ledge because I was like, "Yeah, I'm a little nervous to go home because I had this big old day planned. You know, get ready for the pageant." And you go, and I'm like, "Yeah, what if I have an emergency?" And you're like, "You can, you idiot. You can still call 911 if it's an SOS. If you're in distress, you're yeah. fine." I felt, I, I'm yeah, like, the, right, and cool. I, somebody explained actually how that works. Like, so, so if your phone's on SOS, um, since it's an emergency, it'll use other services. Mm. To put the 911 call through. Yeah, some guy just got saved because, like, his phone had no service, but he was stuck out in the mountains or something like that. And sure enough, he put it on SOS mode, and they were able to find him by a tracker. Yeah, it'll it'll hunt for another service, whatever the strongest service yeah. signal is. That's how they found that guy. That's was awesome. the, the SOS tracker, like, turned on, like, a satellite tracker on his phone. Yeah, Lauren started panicking and go, you got to relax. <clears throat> she started taking her temperature. <laughs> I'm just, I'm very nervous. Okay. <laughs> I like to be, I like to be like, oh my God, I'm off the grid. I mean, my where's my thermometer? I have all the things that I need at all times. Blood pressure cuff could go down. Yeah. Yeah. You never... <laughs> I got 15 packs of batteries in my car. Just waiting. Hey, today is the uh, 12th anniversary on this date. February 26, 2012. Guys, this happened. Strike to claim it. A strike to claim it. Who do you think you are? I am. Damn it, right. From the great Pete Weber, St. Louis' own. That's right. I'm you know what's funny? When we, so I host Monday Night Metal on KC still, Monday nights. And I remember whenever we were resurrecting it back, I think management was thinking of having Pete Weber do it. Uh, we were leaving the office one day. Were you with me? We walked out and Pete Weber was in the in the lobby. He's probably oh, having a I meeting. Know. I don't know if that was me. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember meeting. He was in the lobby and I went, yeah. Oh, what do you oh, think my you are? <laughs> you said that to him? Damn yeah. right. <laughs> What'd he say? Cool. That's awesome. <laughs> he was cool, man. Shook my hand. That's great. I haven't washed it since. Cool. Aww. What a wild It's kid. all gross, moldy. Mm -hmm. Who do you think you are? I am. Yeah. That's great. That happened 12 years ago today. Who do you think you are? I am. I understand him in that way. Not you, me. <laughs> I mean, that's, for a while. that's unbridled excitement. Yeah. Right there. That's your inner monologue getting out is yeah. what that is. Mm -hmm. Yep. St. Louis Zone, Pete Weber. 12 years ago today, February 26, 2012. It's like the guy on the jinx forgetting he was mic'd up. <laughs> oh, Pete, yeah, Robert Durst. Yeah. Being like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, it was me. And I was like, he had that moment in bowling where he just forgot he was mic'd up <laughs> and he just said his inner thoughts. Yep. All right, here's sports. All right, Moon, what do we got? Sports brought to you by DraftKings, a casino queen. Call to book your bracket bash. Watch parties at DraftKings Sportbook now. St. Louis City SC. Fought from a goal down to secure a 1-1 draw against Real Salt Lake in their 2024 MLS opener after a scoreless first half. Oh, cool. 1-1 one, one, draw. Real Salt Lake uh, scored the so game's cool. first goal in the 74th minute, and we all hate Rizzuto no, for his soccer true. takes. What was the win probability, Moon? Was it good? Uh, we should have won the game, and we didn't deserve to. Okay. Sam Dineron saved uh, saved the day again. He equalized five minutes later to split the points. City SC's next match will be against Houston Dynamo. Uh, that's tomorrow's second leg of their CONCACAF Champions Cup matchup. The place look great. It yeah, was. another sellout. Another sellout. Another I'm sure sellout. every game will sell out. Uh, saw the flags. Yeah, they need to put together a couple more passes, though, and not look like they did. Uh, on Saturday. Pay, like free passes to get in the stadium? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about passes on the field. Oh, it was not, it was not, it was not a great showing. Oh. It was not a great showing. Can we see a little bit of chemistry, please? On Saturday, Duke's Kyle Filipowski suffered a knee injury after a Wake Forest fan 
collided with him in a scary fast court storming after Wake Forest beat number seven Blue Devils 83-79. Dude, in the aftermath of the this incident, both coaches discussed courts, uh, co courts storming, and neither are fans of it. Recently happened in Iowa's Caitlin, uh, Caitlin Clark incident. She was knocked down by an Ohio State fan immediately after a January 24, uh, 21st loss. Should court storming be banned? Now, I mean, listen, we've all seen it. It happens at college sports, you know, when fans storm the court or storm the field. And a couple times, players have gotten hurt. In this yeah, particular this situation, a player time. got hurt. Second time in, in recent uh Yeah, there was just games. recently on a, uh, I think it was a, a ladies college game. Yeah, he was. There was a, yeah, yeah, Caitlin yeah, Clark. Yeah, Caitlin Clark. She got knocked She was down. okay, right, though. She was okay, but this dude uh, suffered a knee injury from this Wake Forest incident. Yeah. So if if they ban it, who's responsible? Security, coaches, refs? Like, who who's going to stop 18,000 people? Uh, what they need to start doing is uh, <laughs> sanctioning the schools. Hmm. Um. Maybe a little more security. Maybe. Electrified floors. I'm saying give every, <laughs> give, give every player a weapon. Oh, yeah, that'll of do Of their it. choice. Yeah, yeah, that's of smart. their choice. Let's, yeah, you get to have, you can swing <laughs> whatever you want. Of their choice. I would pick the stick with the chain, the metal spike. I'm going machete, <laughs> but here's that's the, a given. Here's a guy from Duke. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine anybody like... that storms the floor has to start in the next game. That way the <laughs> college will just get blown out. If you storm yeah, the court, be, you're on the team. That would encourage the game. people to. Yeah, but well, what if you get yeah. chopped up and then you can't play? Yeah, I'm thinking the weapons thing would be good. I felt a bunch of hits on my body. I, you know, I just this one was the worst of them. You know, so it's just like I said, it's just really ridiculous of, of, of how you know that situation is handled. I've already heard that there's some videos of, of you know getting punched in the back, and um, so I absolutely feel like it was personal. Yeah. Uh, Cardinals announced their 2024 Hall of Fame Modern Player nominees uh, with uh, voting to start. I guess it started this last weekend. Uh, Cardinals have nominated four former modern players for the honor, and fans can cast their ballots online for who they think should win. The nominees. The nominations include Steve Carlton, George Hendrick, Matt Morris, and Edgar Renteria. To be eligible for a nomination, the player must have played for the Cardinals for at least three seasons and be retired from Major League Baseball for at least three years. Uh, voting started on the 24th. It ends April 26th. Go to cardinals.com slash HOF. The winner will be inducted into the Cardinals Hall of Fame with a ceremony I don't know who on September 7th. I don't know who would make it. Scott, who do you think? Uh, sorry, I was reading Matt that. Morris, Renteria. Matt, Matt Morris, Renteria. Uh, Steve Carlton and George Hendrick. I don't know Ooh. anything about Hendrick. I would Renteria, say Steve Carlton. Maybe. Yeah, Carlton, I think, and maybe Renteria. Uh, learn. I'm a fan of Hendrick's gin, so I'm going to go with Hendrick. No. Okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I'm out of time, and uh, I'm moving that's just sports because that's right. I did it. All right. Who do you think you are? I am. 12 years ago today. That's right. All right. One final break. We'll come I back. did it. Wrap her up. <laughs> Okay, so so wait, and, and Clavis, 
I don't think you have a clue how bad this no, I don't. this gun hurts. Would you like an example? Would you like to try? Would Would you put your butt on the line and? Uh, you guys can shoot me. To, to yeah, yeah. Have Scott. How about you shoot Clonvis first? I'll take. Can one, I take one? one shot in the can tush. I take one of his shots and give him four? Was what? That no. Oh, that's happened. I'd like to. I mean, just as a, as a gesture. I mean, of that's a pretty. Will that's a pretty show. amazing friend right there. In tribute. Like, or I'll take. Or I, I'll take one and I'll still shoot him five times. I had four last week, and I'll tell you, it was. Excruciating. I'm, just, I, I'm, and the I'm interested to see if it's uh, as bad as you guys say or if you're hamming it up. So I'm, I'm willing to take uh, a shot. Well, yeah. Okay. I would I, love for you to take a shot to see if we're hamming it fine. up. Fine. Shoot you me. You know what? He'll take one of your shots. You're amazing. Shoot me. All right, good. Holy He's going to take one of your shots. Wow. <laughs> I'm such a pushover today. Thank All right. you. All right. Let's do it. It's because right. I'm in a good mood. Okay. So do you get to, who's going to shoot me? Scott, Scott will shoot you first. Shoot you. Okay. okay. It's only fair. Out of respect. Am Scott, I going to take my butt out? Yeah. Now put it up against the. Yeah, go up against the wall there. Just your undies. Let's see if he's got a lot of gear. Rosy red marks on him. Clive has got a lot of gear. He's got. <laughs> <laughs> Take off. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> All right. Uh, All right, here we go. Let me uh, see what kind of undies Clive is wearing. Here. All right, what kind of undies? The good probably kind. A belt buckle on his undies. Uh, they're Halloween underwear. Oh, happy Halloween. Halloween underwear, oh, yeah. yes. Oh, those are great. Oh, those are great. Right. They got skeletons on okay. them. Okay, uh, bend, bend down there, down? Scott. Level out, level out, level out. Okay, you want to count down? okay here we go. Okay. Count it down. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, that hurt. He's that laughing. Hurts. What happened? Did you hit it him in the middle? No. I, no I, 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 yeah. <laughs> that hurts, man. It hurts worse than you thought, yeah, right? Yeah, boy, it does. It doesn't sound like it's going to hurt, and then it, it feels like somebody uh, stung me or pinched me or something. <laughs> it gets much worse with three or four. <laughs> Not only that, it doesn't hurt at first, but then it gets it gets. Yeah, it's getting built. worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm nervous because I have to pee so bad. I'm like, oh. I better not go right now. Yeah, I got to pee too. That didn't right. help, man. I appreciate, Thank you for taking I appreciate right. you being honest that's with the, the pain, but the fact that you just laughed at it, like, that's... You can't, because it's such an un... Uh, <laughs> a feeling. It, it sounds like... <laughs> you can't describe it for us. And it, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. Oh, you it, want to try to? It's either laughing or crying. Are you uh, want him to uh, cry? Yeah, you're, you're you're right. Maybe right. maybe laughing is crying for a clown. Perhaps yeah. he's crying. Yeah, I'm all mixed up. In all right, give him four. Give him four. Go over there, Scott. Yeah. Take right your punishment like a man. So this is your line right here. Oh, Don't this line. Now you're gonna alternate cheeks. Yeah. Uh, you want or, or Scott? Do you want? Knee, just to, just to get do you want two on one? No, no, no. Run left, left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right. I'm kind of a bullseye guy. Boy, Scott's got a small tush, by the way. No, because then that's where the... Make sure it's on the cheek. Yeah, hit the hit the cheek. Scott's got a small tush, doesn't he? Yeah, it's cute. Ready? Count it down. Three, two, one. Oh, three, two, one. Oh, same spot. Oh, two, one. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. I love how he goes, I'm kind of a bullseye what that's, a fun game. That's fun, isn't that? <laughs> oh, that stings so bad. You can cry, Scott. It's okay. There you go, My buddy. My stomach feels good now. Well, that's that. Let's put the gun back in the mothballs. Oh, man. Goodness. That's it for the year. I'm wearing jeans fun. next year. That's it. That is fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs>
He is supple. He is magical. He is stainless. He is sensual. He is raw. He is power. He is limber. He is a touch. He is pure. King Scott Extra Virgin Royal Oil. Maintain your peer. This is uh, first Ho Ho Show of 2017. Headliner tonight, uh, Rise Against Tim McElrath from uh, Rise Against. Absolute pleasure to meet you, man. Good to be here, yeah. So, okay, a couple of things that I wanted to, to ask you about, but I think I'm going to kind of start on the serious side of okay. things, if that's all right Let's with you. Let's do it. Um, it is an unbelievable time in our country politically. Mm -hmm. um, some people would uh, uh, maybe not say that it's a sad time politically, but I mm -hmm. think that it's uh, one of the lowest points that I can ever remember. Yeah. Um, as somebody that is keeping track of what's going on in the world, like I know you guys do, um, sometimes myself I get so frustrated with just the daily just punch in the face of it all that I kind of want to back away from it. Do you? How do you consume the news that's out there? And do you ever get that feeling like when you're reading like Twitter or Facebook or something like, God, I feel like I got punched in the face just trying to get through the news of the day? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's so overwhelming and you're like, we live in such a tumultuous time right now, um, especially in American history. Um, and for a band like us who've been plugging away this for like 18 years and, and singing about the ills of society and singing about things where we, where places where we find injustice, we wanna like, you know, put, put water where the fire is, you know, that's kind of what we do. And so to have all these ideas that we thought we'd been made such progress on, like we made such progress on, I feel like racism and sexism and homophobia um, and xenophobia, and I feel like all that stuff kind of has come to rear its ugly head back again. And in this this administration has such a permissive uh, culture around all those ideas, which is sad. Um, it lets you know and reminds you that the monsters of, of racism and sexism. Um, don't ever really go away. Oh. You know, we put them behind bars, but they find their way out. You know, if we don't constantly maintain that uh, visibility on those issues, and so it's interesting as a band that's been trying to rile people up for 18 years. I'm excited. Men's health. Let's talk about it, fellas. Come on. It's 2024, you're not feeling yourself. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Frank. I know you're out there driving over the road and you're like, he ain't talking to me. I am talking to you, man. You know you don't feel 100% and that's okay. You're still a cool dude. Go to Victory Men's Health and get yourself back up to 100 because that's where they got me. And it's easier than ever now because they got a new location in Sunset Hills. Not only do they have the town and country location, the Learning King Scott and I go to in both the O'Fallons, both Illinois and Missouri. They've added a fourth location in Sunset Hills to make it even easier and more convenient for you to go and take back your health in 2024. And they have all kinds of services there. Maybe you need vitamins. Maybe you need... Uh, Maybe you do need TRT treatment. Maybe you need peptides. Whatever you need, they got it there, and they're going to test your blood, get, get you tested down to the micronutrient level to find out what's right for you and you alone. It's customized treatment, and they care as much about your success as you do. You can't go wrong at Victory Men's Health, and if you can't make it to one of their locations, they offer telehealth as well. You can just go on the Victory Men's Health website. You say what services you're interested in, and then you'll have a Zoom call. You'll have everything sent to your house that you need to get your blood drawn, get you on the treatments that you need from home. It's delivered to your door. It couldn't possibly be any easier for you to take your health back in 2024. For more information, go to victorymenshealth.com. That is victorymenshealth.com. Uh, well, big things happening in the 21 Pilots camp. And you know what? If you are going to talk about 21 Pilots, 
there are legitimately no better two people in which that you could call to talk about said band than our guys. Gentlemen, it's wonderful to see you again. Hello, and it's been a while. Hello from St. Louis. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it has been We're a while. Man, it's really great to, to see you guys again. And the first thing that we want to talk about is the 21 Pilots Cinema Experience. Now, it's coming out on May the 19th. Uh, there'll be a special encore on May the 22nd. But I want to know, you know, this, you know, this experience came about a year or so ago during the pandemic. And I'm curious, the show was so well done, so well produced. How long did it take you guys to put that whole thing even together in the first place for it to run? I think it was probably, uh, I guess we were talking about it was probably like seven or eight months um, from, from the very beginning. Um, and it was, you know, I mean, the way that uh, we sort of had to go about doing it, um, we, we just kind of knew that um, because our, our live show is so reliant on people, um that and and once all that stripped away that we couldn't we couldn't just we couldn't just perform the way that we normally do um so we kind of had to just go and reinvent the entire thing and and sort of start from scratch um and once we did that then it kind of just uh you know kind of it, it just we, we knew it was going to take a while to pull off and um so you know it, it yeah it took a good probably eight months to um get all the logistics coordinated and together and um and and make everything happen so then for you guys as far as the day-to-day -day goes during that six seven months time span so you guys are finishing the record or it's already done but then the pandemic's going on so there's a lot of things that are happening while you're putting this together was it something that you were working on every day for those six seven months yeah i mean pretty much there was a lot of video conference calls and you know passing back and forth ideas and um man looking back on it it was i think it's still i would say is the hardest thing we've ever done so you know we released this last year with the with the release of our latest record and it was a one-time thing you know just live that that evening um and we haven't really put it anywhere since it hasn't lived anywhere else and so we've been holding on to it we decided to really go in and dive into the the mix of the audio to make sure that it sounds really good, especially in, in a in a movie theater, make it feel really big and get that movie experience that we were um, familiar with. And yeah, now we're releasing it for a, you know one night only in the theaters. We like that it feels exclusive. We like that it feels like you know you got to come and see this thing, and it's you know it could go away forever after that, and we're not really sure. But it it it. I don't know, it just adds to, it feels like today, everyone, if, if you're gonna, people feel like if you're gonna create something, you wanna try to spread it out as often and as far and as wide as possible. But there's something really powerful about being proud of what you make. I feel, I feel proud of this. I feel um, like this represents who I am. And when, when your security and what it is that you make is is rooted there, then whether or not it gets, you know, scattered all over the world, um, it becomes a secondary thing. Now I get that that's something that as a band, it's been fortunate enough to, to be heard all over the world and for our music to be scattered all over the world. It is really easy for me to say that and I get that. Uh, but it is, um, it is something that we learned in the process that let's just make things that we're proud of. Let's make something that we stamp on and be like, that is, I'm going to look back on that and, and be so proud that, that, that we put in that much work. Um, and that's what this thing is. And, you know, you know, it's a one-time theatrical, you know, release of this thing. And, you know, Josh said this earlier, um, he was talking about how, you know, we, we executed this live stream concert in front of no audience. And when, when we weren't able to have people come together and now for it to all come full circle, and we're releasing it in a movie theater where people can come together to experience it together. It's, it's a, it's a really, it's just a perfect way to close out um, the, the idea. Well, that's good. I, I'd say it, it was just about, I mean, it might, might've been a little longer than this, but Oasis released a live concert foot, uh, film from like 1995, 1996 uh, that was released in theaters for one night only a few months back. And it was the first time that I'd ever went to a theater to experience something like that. Oh my gosh. It was incredible. Liam Gallagher 
or first of all, it was like nine feet tall, which was, but the way that the sound works, being able to hear it and see it all together, it was just amazing. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys have done because that to me was one of the best parts about the live stream was the details, was the actors, was the cutaways, you know, I mean, the performance. You know, the RVing lifestyle, whether it's part-time, full-time, it's freaking sweet. And we are, I mean, so excited. We were talking earlier today about Byerly RV and how excited my family is to uh, use their rental services uh, for the spring break. We are freaking out. And my son and I went down on Saturday to the big RV show to hang out with Byerly. And they had this huge, huge area with so much stuff, so much uh, just, you know, showing their RV sales and their service and their parts and their storage and their rental services. And that isn't even the half of it. You have to see their huge new expansion that they just finished late last year. 16 bay service facility and an 88,000 square foot indoor climate controlled storage building, plus the new outdoor storage lot on the property down at Byerly RV. See what a home dealer should be because Byerly RV is exactly that. They are the center of the RV world and have been for over 75 years. Years. We're talking about locally and family owned, a third generation of the same family owning and running this incredible business right here in our backyard. Byerly RV, again, provides the best RV sales, service, parts, storage, rental services, even a YouTube channel to help you out. Check them out. If you're looking to get into the uh, RV lifestyle, this is your place, your one-stop shop, ByerlyRV.com. Stage at Point Fest, our first interview of the day is a gentleman that the first time that we met was it? All right, that is it for us. Donnie Fandango's next. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, today's wrap up is sponsored by sponsored by Jack in the Box. Jack wraps a little bit of healthy, a little bit of indulgence only at Jack. All right, so what is today's podcast title? This guy flew a giant shaft. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Yeah, we covered it all. Today, yeah, oh, we, we sure did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think Giant Shaft was like the topic of the day. Well, we lost about a quarter of our audience this morning. Uh, <laughs> 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 I had a dumb out of Rave sex toy in yeah. a week with you. Uh, well, <laughs> good morning. My bad. Learned about the Evolution Fest, which yeah, is coming up cool. in uh, yeah. September uh, okay. with the killers and back in Jane's Addiction. Uh, what else? I mean, yeah. Nowhere to go but up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I sneeze like 30 times. It's great. All Things good. are good. Happy Monday, Things guys. Things are good. All right, Moon, what else? Uh, you know, Can You Feel the Punk Tonight tickets coming up May 11th. Uh, other than that, man, I don't know. Oh, I dropped a new, uh, episode about a Silver Burst, a 1981 Silver Burst Les Paul that we used on our second record, uh, on the Story of the Gear channel. Check it out. Other than that, I'm cool. Learn. Yeah, just follow Story of the Gear. It's a really cool channel on YouTube, and, um, yeah, that's all I got. Right. Follow me on Story of the Gear. <laughs> it's a channel on YouTube where I talk about all the cool instruments I play. Yeah. And uh, it's really cool, man. And then you guys know I'm multi talented. Yeah. Your skin flute episode was just oh, over so good. otherworldly, it's right? So good. I know. It's like <laughs> they tried to take that down. It's so I shiny. Can you believe it? I know. <laughs> Used it on every record. <laughs> King Scott. Yeah. No, I started a new YouTube channel where it's the fanboys of Story of the Gear. So follow that one. We're doing a whole, we break down every video that Moon does, and it's very exciting. And it's the fastest growing show on YouTube. Love yeah, it. check it out. And yeah, uh, follow my new YouTube channel where I react to King Scott reacting wow. to yeah. me playing Story of the Gear. All right. Um, too much fun, guys. I know. We got to leave. So much fun. Uh, today's Team Riz Remember the Day is brought to you by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill. St. Louis is home for Blues Hockey. From St. Louis, Jessica Quest is out. Yeah, Jessica! Team Riz Remember the Day. Jessica wants to hear this song. Here it is.